بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لبي بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم our panelists and assalamu alaikum all our viewers who are watching inshallah this is going to be a very very beneficial stream for all of us and of course those who are going to join so first of all i would like to ask our brothers our panel members how are you how have you been over the last week or so hosting alhamdulillah wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah all good alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah. So today's stream, inshallah, is going to be a special stream in which in the line of the discussions that we had so far on the Ahmadi non-Muslim stream uh, discussions we had, we are going to invite the former people who are in the Ahmadi Jamaat and they have, alhamdulillah, reverted back to true Islam. True Islam, Islam of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who are following the Islam that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left us by, in which we don't believe in any imposters, any fake, any charlatans who are claiming to be a prophet of God after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we make no. Um, it's not a disclaimer. We consider anyone, any group, any people, any community that claims prophethood after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in whatever capacity, they are outside the fold of Islam and they're not Muslims. They are, of course their own community. They can call themselves whatever, but they're clearly outside the fold of Islam. But we would like to invite those who actually have been misguided, taking within the broader umbrella of Islam and yet join certain cults and jamaats, whether they believe that Allah became a black man like Louis Farah Khan, whether they be believe in some Baha'i, Baha'i, Wallah, Baha'u'llah, whether they believe in Nation of Islam, whether they believe in many, many other factions and groups that has formed and sprung up over the years. We want to invite all of them back to Islam, which attracted them to in the first place. Islam, which their heart and their mind attracts, is attracted, is something that they know is the truth. Yet, for some reason, they have gone into accepting and following a particular group of people which have been manipulating them, indoctrinating them, thinking that Islam has moved on. And there's all these people that's come in and they have somehow taken Islam forward. You know, they are, you know, in a way, reformers in, of Islam. But no, we would like to invite all of you back. And today, especially, we are inviting the Ahmadi people back who labeled themselves initially as Ahmadi Muslims. Of course, we know they are non-Muslims claiming the name of Islam. And what we will have today, we'll have some guests who were in this former group who have taken the bold step willingly, voluntarily, with their own knowledge and understanding why this is particular a cult, a false group, a false religion that has somehow sprung from Islam. So inshallah, we'll bring them on our stage and we'll have a discussion with them and we'll learn from them why they left the Jamaat, why they considered that this is indeed a false uh, religious ideology of some kind and what they have been doing to navigating their way back to true Islam. And we will ask them, inshallah, a few questions about, you know, what the Jamaat is doing to keep the Muslims who were somehow dragged into this by deception and trickery and all this, you know, rhetoric to follow this particular cult. You know, why are they afraid to leave? So this is an important question we'll be asking us. Why are they afraid to leave? What, how is the Jamaat controlling them? Are they controlling them, their life, their bank accounts, their family, and so forth? And of course, we'll be asking them important advice they want to share with the with the rest of the Ahmadi community, inshallah. So without any further ado, I'm going to go to Brother Ustad Adnan Rashid to, to talk about this extreme a little bit, inshallah, as we bring one by one our guests who have, alhamdulillah, come back to Islam. Tafaddal. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Mansoor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah ma ba'd. A'udhu billahi samiyya lalim min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ma kana muhammadan aba ahadun min rijalikum walakin rasulullah wa khatam al-nabiyyin. Wa qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la nabiyya ba'di. La nabiyya ba'di. La nabiyya ba'di. And this is exactly what the topic of the stream is. La Nabiya Ba'di. There is no prophet after Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, in the last week, a lot has happened. We have been sharing a lot of content on Twitter. Everyone watching, 
I advise you very strongly to go and follow my Twitter um, um, posts. You will see a lot of evidence, a lot of quotes, a lot of scans from the books of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. And you will see why we choose not to take this man seriously. And one of the questions I want to quickly address in the very beginning is our intention in doing this. Why are we doing these streams? Why are we posting this stuff online? Why are we having these dialogues, debates and discussions with the Ahmadi missionaries? Why are we inviting ex-Ahmadis to come and uh, tell us their story? Why? This is our love, our compassion, our sympathy for the Ahmadi community. We have no hate. Wallahi, by Allah, all the panelists and the people who will join us later on from uh, the Ahmadi community or ex-Ahmadis rather, they have no hate. They have nothing but love and sympathy, a feeling of sympathy. You know, they want you to be guided. They want you to be free of the cult you are trapped with. You are simply trapped. A lot of people are trapped and we want to free them. Okay, We want them to see what we see. Clearly the missionaries and the murabbis are standing in the middle trying to, uh, as they say, you know, murky the waters, right? But we're not going to allow that. This is, why we are the, these, we, this is why we are doing these streams so that people can see clear, black and white, where the truth is. Okay, if we can show you fabrications, lies, contradictions, okay, in the writings of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, then this man cannot possibly be a truthful man, let alone a prophet of God. To us, the Muslims, the mainstream, the Ummah from Morocco to Bangladesh, this Muslim civilization, to us, anyone claiming to be a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu is a liar, is a plain liar because we have too much evidence for us to simply ignore um, the Prophet sallallahu and his teachings. We have too much. We can't ignore the reports from the Prophet sallallahu where the Prophet said, there is no prophet after me, categorically. Then the Prophet said, if there was a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. Oh, Ali, you are to me like Harun was to Musa, but there is no prophet after me. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran categorically, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ma kana muhammadun aba ahadim min rijalikum, walakin rasool Allah, wa khatam al he is the last of the prophets. There is no prophet after him. And you know what? We read all of these texts holistically, together, with context. When we put all of these things together, there is a mountain of evidence for us to ignore, to go after a man, an unstable man, okay, who was writing things that he himself denied later on, who was not mentally stable, okay, who was producing, uh, you know, very, very ugly, vulgar, disgusting literature, abusing his opponents, making prophecies that were categorically, mathematically false. All these things. We're not going to leave the, this mountain of evidence for someone like that. The Ahmadis, unfortunately, the Qadianis, have chosen a very, very bad example for them to follow. Okay. If Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had stood up to the colonial power in India, the, 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 the East India Company colonial government, or the subsequent British Empire, or later on known as the British Empire, Okay, if Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had stood up to the to the oppressors and confronted them, then it would be very difficult for us to, you know, it would have been more difficult for us to to refute him. Right? But this man, instead of standing up to the Firaun of his time, he was polishing the boots of the Firaun. He was polishing his his throne for him. He was cementing his throne. He was paying lavish tributes to the colonial establishment and officials and begging them for support, begging them for favors. We have shared every single 
piece of evidence on my Twitter account. Please follow my Twitter account. Go and see the posts, the actual scans from his book. Why was he licking the boots of the Pharaoh in India? Why was he betraying his community? I don't want to go on for too long on this. But I'm, I'm saying all these things that you have chosen a very, very bad candidate. Very, very bad candidate for a number of reasons, as we will discuss in due course. So this is nothing but compassion and love for the Ahmadi community out there. We hate none and we have love for all. Our love is da'wa. Our love is calling humanity to Allah. This is our expression of love. Hate for none, love for all. This is truly love. Giving da'wah to humanity to save them from hellfire. This is exactly what we're doing. We want our Ahmadi brothers and sisters in humanity to be saved from hellfire. We have nothing but sympathy. We don't support hate against you. We don't support violence against you. We don't support any attacks against you. Rather, we condemn them. Please try to understand. We have nothing but sympathy and love. And our love is da'wah. Okay? Having clarified that, I want to quickly address one point that why didn't I join the Ahmadi, the Qadiani stream yesterday and they were having some sort of victory parade. There, there are a number of reasons. Number one, first of all, is five of them sitting there. Each and every single one of them is delivering a long speech and they give very little time to speak to the Sunni, the Muslim speakers or Muslim people who joined the stream, like what happened to me last time, right? If you go and calculate the time when I joined the stream last time, okay, in comparison to the time given to those guys, five speakers, <clears throat> five speakers, my time was very short, very limited. So they are waffling, they are throwing 50 points at you, irrelevant points, and they expect you to respond to every single thing. Number one, this was reason, this is reason number one. Reason number two, I don't want to give you audience. You're calling upon me because you want people to join your stream and you want more people to watch. I don't want to do that. You are spin doctors. I've been saying that for a very long time. You're not sincere people. You don't give straight answers. When a straight And we will show you tonight. I can predict right now and watch my prediction come true because I'm so confident about this, okay, that these Qadiani missionaries will join us later on after the first segment and see them not answer the straight straight questions we will be ask, asking. They don't have any answers. And they will dance around the questions. They will dance around the questions. They'll keep evading questions. So coming to your streams, for what? To listen to your boring speeches? Your waffling? Your dancing, is that dancing around the question? So we don't want to come to your streams. I came to your stream last time. I did this experiment. I wasn't happy with it. You know, fine, you allowed me to speak. It was very polite of you to, speak, to, to allow me to speak, but it cannot be a fair conversation. Here, in our stream, you will see if you are answering our questions, you will speak. We will not interrupt you. If you are answering our questions directly, listen to our questions carefully, answer them directly. Don't dance around them. Don't tell us irrelevant things. We don't want to know your long-winded commentaries. We have read plenty of books to know what we need to know. We don't want you guys to teach us our deen. Just answer the questions when we ask them, right? So we don't want to join your streams for all these reasons because we don't see the point. We don't want to give you audience. We don't. You, you want to be famous at my expense? No, sorry, no charity for you. No charity for Qadiani missionaries. Five of you, five of you pseudo scholars sitting there with hats on. Uh, trying to, to deceive people as if you are scholars. You're not scholars. You don't know anything. Okay, we will show you tonight. Some of you will join us, inshallah. And we will show everyone tonight that you guys are spin doctors. Spin doctors. So we will proceed, inshallah, in that spirit. Brothers and sisters, most welcome to join ex Ahmadis first. The first part of the stream will consist of interviews uh, with ex Ahmadis. Very important for us, our brothers and sisters who have come back to Islam who have realized that this is a cult and they have freed themselves. We want to hear from them why. And we have some questions we will ask, inshallah, in due course. Uh, I, want, me, I, Imtiaz, yeah, yes, I want brother... Yes, please. Go ahead, brother Imtiaz. Over to you. Jazakallah. Khair, Nan Bhai, Hashim Bhai, Mansoor Bhai. May Allah bless and reward all of you, brothers. 
So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Just inshallah, very quickly, in a couple of minutes, just a few things I need to mention in the beginning. As Adnan, uh, Adnan Bhai already mentioned regarding the finality of the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I just want to mention one very quick point. As Adnan Bhai already mentioned that, La Nabiya Ba'di, it closes all doors. Ask any Murabbi that this construction in the Arabic language, can it leave any door open? Ask them this direct question. And last point on this one is, I invite all the Murabbis and I humbly request them, please come on your official channel or any other platform, give us a concise statement on what was the belief of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad on the subject of finality of prophethood. What was his belief on Khatmun Nabuwa? With the best of my knowledge, I have I do not have any stream in which Mirza's belief is mentioned because Mirza Sahib in his writing, he has clearly given what is his own belief. So before you produce any arguments, my request, isn't it a fair request to all of you? Give us what was his belief on this subject. Second point is that as Adnan Bhai mentioned, that, you know, with regard to our love and compassion, somebody may be thinking that what kind of love is it? You know, we are, look, brother, sometime as a doctor, Alhamdulillah, we are in a small capacity, spiritual doctors, in a small capacity, inshallah, because sometime a doctor needs to perform a surgery, okay? If something is very serious that can take the life of a, of a sick person, the doctor has to take some kind of step which may appear may appear to a child, you know, very harsh, but they are good for the patient. So please remember this perspective that things may appear a certain way, but they are not actually with yes, Adnan by said, and I second his point, we have genuine love and compassion for all of you. And next point is that, you know, uh, as they are mentioning in their streams that, you know, we are being invited and they are giving this impression that they are very fair, etc., etc. As Adnan by said, when he went on their stream, how much time, he, there was like five, six people. He was by himself. How much time he gave to him? He will speak like two minutes, then they will go in a circle for next half an hour. And they would make like a lot of points. How much he can respond in two, three minutes? Please, you know, don't, don't create this false narrative in the public. And last point is, in their stream, uh, somebody sent me a clip in their last stream. They called me a shaitan. Okay. And the reason they presented was because I said, you know, that I am the most knowledgeable person about the writings of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And it's a kibber. It's a, it's, a, it's a false proud. Brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya. I, I request all of you. And this is just one example that how they use these streams. Even these are our stream, but how they misquote them. I clearly mentioned that every statement has a context. I said that when <laughs> Ahmadi clerics are coming and they are taunting us, that we have not read the books of Mirza Sahib, we are quoting them out of context, etc. In that context, I said, that please don't, don't, don't say this, okay? We have read his book better than all of you. So this was the context of their statement. If I am a humble or if I'm proud, Allah knows, don't be the judge for me. And shall last point very quickly, as some of you uh, from the ex Ahmadi communities, they approached me or uh, on the subject, that they want me, you know, to create uh, some short videos in terms of responding to the main question and replying to the main questions from the Ahmadiyya clerics because the, 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 the former Ahmadi, they, you, they want to send these videos to those relatives who are still part of this cult. So, inshallah, I have created a, a small platform. Inshallah, uh, Ashim, I will share with you the, the link in, in very soon. It's called The Dialogue with Imtiaz. Inshallah, on this platform, I will be making short videos to, in, to inshallah, intellectually and compassionately responding to the fundamental questions raised by Ahmadi clerics. Jazakumullah khair. And very quickly, thank you so much, uh, Imtiaz Bhai. Thank you so much for that clarification. Very quickly, I want to very quickly highlight the love we have between us. Okay, last stream, uh, people took our frustration, mutual, mutual frustration with some of the... the the, the discussion that took place. Uh, the Ahmadis, uh, the missionaries, I'm not talking about the masses, I'm talking about the missionaries, they are diseased. They have a disease of heart, they have a disease of mind, 
and they are picking on these petty things, irrelevant things. Oh, look how Imtiaz Bhai was behaving. Oh, look how Adnan Rashid was told, uh, told off. Look how he was corrected. We feel proud. I am so proud of my brother Imtiaz that he corrected me. When he saw something wrong, there was a mistake on my part. He corrected me immediately. We don't play games. We are very sincere people. We are upfront. We are straight. Okay, we don't play games, right? So I'm very proud of him. Okay, and the love between us has increased, if anything, you know, alhamdulillah. So, you know, so I want to tell these missionaries, shame on you. Grow up, grow up, okay? And, and, and smell the coffee, as they say, right? And, and finally, okay, if you want to debate me, if you love Adnan Rashid so much, if you want Adnan Rashid to be on your streams, to push your streams out there, I have a very, very um, easy proposal for you. Come and face me at the Speaker's Corner. I'm the one who put out the challenge to the global Qadiani community. Any Qadiani on the planet, scholar, missionary, cleaner, imam, okay, Qadi Saab, whatever you, your status may be, whoever you may be, whoever you may be, anywhere in the world, if you can come to London, if you have the visa, if you have the freedom to come to London, or if you already live in London, or if you live in the UK, come and face me at Speaker's Corner and embarrass me in a debate. Okay? You claim that I am not joining your streams because I'm scared of your arguments. You must be sleeping. You must be, you must be childish. Okay? Because I'm the one who put out a challenge to the whole world. If you were watching carefully, okay, go back a month and watch my YouTube channel, uh, watch the videos and watch other videos on other channels where I put out a challenge. Any Qadiani in the world, come and face me on Mirza. I will use Mirza's writings and you prove to me that Mirza was a truthful man or a decent man for that matter. Okay, challenge is open. It is on. If you cannot come and face me in Speaker's Corner, try not to face me on Twitter because you can't face me on Twitter. I can't even see your faces. A lot of you you have DPs that don't make sense. Okay, at least I have my own face on the DP, right? You can see me, it's Adnan Rashid, right? <laughs> but you guys, you can't even put your faces there. So may Allah guide you guys, okay? And if you think you're brave, if you think you have arguments that we cannot deal with, we cannot face, Speaker's Corner is the place to embarrass me. I'm giving you the falsif falsification test, falsification spot. Come and falsify me. Come and embarrass me, Speaker's Corner. And don't come there when I'm not there because I travel a lot. So come there when I am there. When I announce that I'm in Speaker's Corner, then come and face me and then we'll see what you, you're made of, the, the missionaries. Okay, moving on, brothers. Hashim, over to you. Yeah, yeah. so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi to all the brothers and sisters. Uh, do, do share the stream with your friends, colleagues, uh, acquaintances, especially uh, the Ahmadi um, Jamaat, the, their members and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the brothers, who, the former Ahmadis, and inshallah, once that is uh, completed, I think we'll give them a couple of hours in the beginning, and then we'll move on to the actual Ahmadis. Uh, and inshallah, we'll have a good discussion, as uh, Brother Atnan and Imtiaz both said, this is not to belittle anyone, this is not to uh, show our hatred or dislike or prejudice towards any group. Uh, or any anyone, even if they are non-Muslims, regardless of that. And we have dealt with lots of non-Muslims, not just the Ahmadi. We have dealt with the Hindus, we have dealt with the Christians, we have dealt with even the Hadith rejectors. So this is nothing new for us to invite people who are non-Muslims to have a discussion, to have a dialogue so we understand each other rather than hating each other for no reason, because that just causes more problems, more troubles. So inshallah, without further ado, I'm going to bring in... Uh, Brother Bashir from the Ahmadi Fact Check blog. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brother Bashir, how are you? Wa alaikum salam. Uh, doing amazing. Love to see you, brothers. Everyone looks amazing um, uh, and happy to be here. Alhamdulillah. Where are you joining from, Brother Bashir? From uh, California, state of California, from the Bay Area. That's where I'm from. Uh, pretty much born and raised here. Okay, alhamdulillah. Master Ibaq, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so I'm going to go quickly for Maghrib, uh, Mansour and uh, Brother Mansour and Imtiaz. Maybe you guys got a question for Brother Bashir. Uh, so please proceed. Just going to step out for a bit. Inshallah. 
Okay, brother Imtiaz, uh, sorry, Mansoor or Imtiaz, whoever has the question, go ahead, please. Welcome, our brother. Uh, Imtiaz, bhai, you are muted. Mansoor, inshallah, you go ahead, please. Okay, okay. alhamdulillah. So, uh, brother Bashir, I mean, first and foremost, uh, you, know, you know, alhamdulillah that Allah has opened your hearts to Islam and has you know, shown you and blessed you with the, with the understanding of what true Islam is and how the false groups and ideologies may have lured people into this and, you know, you've come out of it. So, you know, we have to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah. We can never thank Allah enough. So you have to con constantly remind yourself that, you know, this is the blessing of Allah. His ni'ma, his favor on you that he has, you know, removed you from, from, from the path of Jahannam. Someone who invites people to, you know, take another prophet after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So alhamdulillah for that. What I would like to start with asking you is tell us a bit about yourself very briefly because not many people may know you uh, inshallah make it brief and succinct um talk about whether you have uh, a social media platform where people can go and, go and find a lot more about you and your work inshallah but first question i want to ask you is why did you leave the jamaat because you know being a an ahmadi of course it's not easy to leave the jamaat as we understand and as we unfold in our discussion inshallah you know what made you leave the jamaat so after introducing yourself, please focus on, on that question. Jazakallahu um, khairan. Thank you so much for, for that question, brother. That, that, that's an amazing question. And uh, so I currently work as an accounting professor uh, here in California. I, I have a doctorate in education, a, a few master's degrees, and my undergraduate's aeronautical engineering. I used to be in, in the U.S. Air Force. I worked on, on in-flight uh, refueling aircraft 20 years ago. Um, really complicated schematics have to be read, really complicated uh, um, uh, aircraft literature and, you know, uh, um, um, aircraft towers, they, they, they all, it's all in English because all the first manuals are written in English. So uh, I had a lot of experience reading and writing and understanding. So when I was a kid, brother, and we all know uh, everyone's born a Muslim. So uh, when I was a kid, I had some issues with Ahmadiyya when I was 12 years old, me and my other brother, I have, a, I have another brother who's like 11 months older than me. And we saw the corruption. You know, we we grew up in in a, in like a poor area of the Bay of the East Bay, and we can we could see it from far away. So we saw the corruption when 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 we were 12, 13 years old, and the injustice. You know, so but we didn't know what the beliefs were because back then only a few books were in English, right? So I, I can read a little bit of Urdu, but not like I can read English. I can read English, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, very well and very quick. So so. You know, there were some incidents in, in my childhood where me and my other brother got caught opposing Ahmadiyya. And then we were persecuted by our father, you know, uh, and whoever else was with him. So, um, but, you know, it was water under the bridge. They didn't think anything of it. I actually went to Rubwa in 2003. Uh, I was like 24, 25 years old. And I went to Rubwa and I saw it, you know, and I wasn't impressed. And I went to also went to my dad's village uh, in that era for the first time being an, an adult. Um, so I, w I wasn't very impressed. Um, you know, um, when I was there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can, can, can you can you quickly uh, explain what Raboa is so that people know there are people who don't know what Raboa is? Yeah. So so Raboa is mentioned. The word Raboa is mentioned in the Quran. It's chapter 2350. It's actually the place where where uh, Isa al-Islam was born. It was described as a place on a mountain with springs, like a pleasant, a pleasant place. And um, uh, the, the Qadiani Amdis have used it for their town in, in Pakistan, which is a state within a state, totally illegal. It, it, you know, they had to have had government protection to be able to swing such a deal. But um, so I was born there in 1979. I came here when I was like just a few months. My, my, obviously, my parents brought me here. And then I went back in 1989. I went back 03 and 04. And, you know, all everyone asked was asylum. How do I get a visa? This is what everyone asked me everywhere I went. And I could not believe it. And um, they'd ask me, what do I do? And I'm like, I, I work on my hands. I'm normally dirty. It's a hard job. Nobody wants to do it. I worked the mid shift. I've been working since I was seven. You know, uh, so I didn't see any of any of that as I was in Rubwa. You know, it was privileged people. Every house has two or three people in Germany or the UK who send money home. You know, it's the whole asylum business. It, there, there's, there's a whole thing connected with the Panama Papers. So in my youth, it was simply that. But as I grew up and I went to Rubwa, and then, you know, um, um, the information superhighway exploded in 2003, 2004. I was in college, and I, I always wanted to read about the Lahori Amdis. I was like, who are these guys? 
we're supposed to be the best sect, the best of everything, but there's a Lahori sect. So I had no idea what they were. So I started going to their website in 2004 and 2005, and I met a man named Moldy Muhammad Ali, who uh, the famous boxer Cassius Clay might have been named after. Um, and so th th there's a huge connection there. So it, um, I, I read his books on the split. I read his books about the Mirza family, and I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. My my whole world was turned upside down, right? And then I started reading the Gadiani side of the house. Well, what answers did they give? And again, it was the waffling. I couldn't understand the waffling. Why would they just not tell the truth, you know, and et cetera? So, so that really unhinged me. And then I went to the local temple, the local um, um, Gadiani temple, and I asked the Molvi. I said, hey, Molvi Saab, you know, did Mirza Glam Ahmed change his position on prophethood in 1901? Why would he wait so long? This doesn't make any sense to me. You know, he should have known he was a prophet. Why did he not know he was a prophet? And the the Mulvi is dumbfounded. He has no idea what I'm even talking about. Uh, I asked my father. He was also dumbfounded. I started asking all the the bazurg is what we say in our culture. All the elder people, hey, what's going on here? And they were all dumbfounded about all of my questions. And um, the Mulvi Saab immediately said, "You're not an Amdi." In front of like 30 people, he called me out. And he said, you know what, the um, fifth, the um, fourth Talifa died in 2003. You didn't renew your bath. You know, and I was out of the country. I was actually, uh, you know, in the Air Force at the time. <laughs> I had no idea. I had to. So uh, every time a Halifa dies for the new Halifa, everyone has to resign. Right. So uh, it's like a re-up. <laughs> so he said he, 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 he does that. He tries to embarrass me. So I'm like, well, bring the form. I'll sign it. You know, so I sign it. I start asking him additional questions. He doesn't have an answer. And I'm like, oh, wow. So then I asked my, my, my eldest brother the same questions. And same thing, you know, uh, he has no answers. And I'm like, oh, OK, I'm in deep because I was married at the time. Uh, you know, well, what's my next move? And th th this is where they keep people. Where are you going to go? You know, we're going to cut your family off from you. We're going to make sure your mom never speaks to you. Your dad never speaks to you. We're going to cut your family off from you. We're going to boycott you. We're going to persecute you. We're going to do all these things. So I said, go ahead, do whatever you want. At the time, I, I was not even Muslim. I, I converted to Islam in 2017, like I think summer or like in early 2017. So I had a period in there. You know, everyone in the Amnia movement is an atheist. They don't believe in anything. So I was similar to that, you know, uh, is they have a consternation towards Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and towards Isa al-Islam, and they promote Mirza Ghulam So those are those are sort of the issues. Um, and then I came to Islam, and my my other thing was evolution. I disagree with Darwin. Darwin, he, I don't want to say flat out lied, but he thinks just because the beaks of a finch can change based on what the father's beak looks like, he used that and said that humans came from monkeys, which is absolutely ridiculous there's no there's no connection there so uh i always had a problem and as you know um in the amity movement they believe in multiple atoms astaghfirullah even before the adam al Islam, who's in the quran so i couldn't agree with them you know then i read history and i know sir sayyid ahmed khan and i don't know why i called him sir sayyid ahmed khan started all this you know with all with his uh, tafsir wherein he said that isa al Islam's never coming back astaghfirullah no mahdi he denied miracles, angels. He denied all of that. So that's sort of the, the long and short of it. I don't want to take too much time. And yeah, are there any other just questions? A, just a quick question on the last statement you made. Do they not believe in, in the miracles? Like, not, when you say not, that? not at all. In, in, in fact, I was just on their stream. They've surmised that a, a Maryam Astagfirullah is a hermaphrodite, a fish. And I'm like, Mirza Thayer Ahmed, why did he say this? But it comes from Mirza Glam Ahmed. Mirza Glam Ahmed denied the Islamic concept of the miraculous birth of Isa al-Islam. We say, right? We say Allah did it. We don't say maybe she was, I don't even want to say it again, you know? But if you ask them on it, they'll say, no, it's only a possible, you know, again, it's the waffling, you know? So, um, and of course they, they deny the splitting of the moon, mm. the, the snake, the serpent of Musa al-Islam. They believe for Musa al-Islam, it was a low tide and that's how he got across the water. So they just deny it. it, it it's it's Sir Sayyid in a nutshell, in terms of the miracles of it. Okay, interesting. Um, so we 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 will inshallah learn more and more about 
some of those things that may, many people may not know about uh, in terms of their actual belief. And it's possible their belief needs to be linked with their actual belief that there is another prophet who has come and what he has said. So it's like a whole package, you know, the reinterpretation package, the package that is now reformulated as, as a reformed, uh, you know, whole package. Uh, so it's not in an isolated case. So after you left Islam, uh, the Ahmadi Islam, Ahmadi. not the true Islam, because Islam is what you've come back to. So I will, I will use the term, after you left the Ahmadi Qadiani religion, how have you been navigating your way, you know, after leaving the Jamaat? I mean, are you finding still it's being very difficult um, in terms of, you know, being a Muslim, how they've cut off ties with you in terms of family relationships or businesses, whatever it might be, just to, you know, enlighten us a bit more on this, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, for some reason, Allah made everything easy for me. And even though all of this has been cut off in this way or that way, many other doors have opened up. I I've met the local Muslim community. I, I go to the Brentwood Islamic Center. I, I go to other places too, where wherever, you know, we can go anywhere, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I, you know, I've met the community. In fact, I I've taught at the school, at the local school, in terms of business, developing a business to middle, middle school kids and high school kids. So, you know, I'm always a resource. I, I played in the basketball games. Every, every, everyone knows me, you know, I, I play football too. So uh, I'm very involved in teaching brothers, uh, you know, and the sports and, you know, uh, brothers love me. So I've, I've been shown nothing but respect. Everyone in my local area had seen my dad or had met him because my dad is like a big Dawa guy. He has a Dawa stand at the local flea market. So everyone's bumped into him. So every time they see me, they just say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. And they've seen my videos. And, you know, I, I, I just get a lot of love, brother. That, 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 that That's my experience. MashaAllah. So there's a light of, at the end of the tunnel in which it's not everything lost, inshallah. Allah can open up other avenues in which you can live your life without any fear and, 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 and so on. So in terms of in your, your understanding, what was the biggest and what, or what is the biggest fear uh, people have if they're considering leaving the Jamaat? Because a lot of people are willing to leave the Jamaat, this Qadiyani cult, but they are afraid on various grounds. What, what's the biggest fear do you think that they may have? Uh, um, you know, most people love their parents, you know, uh, and they'll do anything. You know, I know a lot of Amdis who are waiting for their parents to die and then they'll quit. You see what I mean? So it's the disconnect from family, you, you know, that, that really scares everyone. It's the financial boycott. You know, they, they announce your name publicly as Murtad. And as you know, in Islam, that word is specific. It's specific for a person who leaves Islam, right? So they use it for us. You see what I mean? And they slander. Um, the slander is out of control. They, they'll, brother, as you know, they'll pray Mabila against you. <laughs> If you if you disagree with them and you leave, they will. My father told me I, I would die a violent death, you know, like to my face, you know. Um, so so it, it's all of these things in a nutshell, brother. Dave, I've seen them in public, tried to say salam to them, which, you know, I, I you know, I went above and beyond what I should be doing. They called cops on me. They've taken me to court. You know, they're willing to take people to court. They from the, the centralized headquarter in the UK, they tell my brother to oppose me. And they give him approval to go on on different channels and oppose me and slander me, you know, and um, make up lies and stories. So, so this is what they do. They've been doing it for years. They they did it to every enemy that's ever quit. So, um, yeah, that's the fear, brother. Allah, may Allah make it easy for all the uh, Ahmadis who wants to come back to Islam, inshallah. So, if if you if you have one advice you want to give to the Ahmadi community, what would that be? You want to share with us, inshallah, share with the Ahmadi community? Yeah, yeah. I'd say um, don't trust the Maulvis. Don't trust the Mirza family. Don't trust the Maulvis. Read all the books. You know, I think over 60% of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's books are in English now. So go read them yourself. That's all they have to do. If you read this, you won't be an Amdi two months longer. That's it, you know. And remember, they, they'll, they'll say it to their blue in the face that they believe that more prophets can come. But they're lying. Really... They see Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the only prophet that was going to come, and he's sitting in that spot. Anyone else who's claimed prophethood, they kick him out. So all of their beliefs are contradictory. They're not going to confess. They're not going to tell the truth. You know, it's these guys and their job. Brother Ruzzi would be out of a job 
you know, he'd be at, at, you know, maybe Allah would bring him to Islam, but he'd be driving a cab or working at McDonald's, which are uh, good professions, you know, but he wouldn't be wrestling with these complicated matters. These are complicated in literature. Like I had to go to literature and find all these things, brother, you know, like with the Imam Malik. We didn't know Imam Malik what he meant by when when he said that um, Isa al Islam died. I we, we we figured out in 2012 he meant the death of sleep. But the Kalyanis aren't telling us this. They're not going to tell you that if, if someone said that Isa al Islam died, they either meant the death of sleep or or they meant that Wa uh, in chapter three verse 55 is out of sequence and the death is going to come after. That's the only way that, that they said he was going to die. So these are the issues, brother. You know, you you brother. SubhanAllah, may Allah bless you. You know, you really inspire me. Um, you know, we, we, we've had it easy. Being born in Muslim families and the parents are upon the same Aqeedah. And SubhanAllah, for you to leave for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the truth, for you to leave behind all that or maybe even possibly potentially hurt your parents in the process, I really, really admire your courage. And, and I'm sure there are so many people out there like you who simply don't find the courage and, and, and the confidence to do it. And this is why we are having these streams so that our brothers and sisters within the Ahmadi community are lost brothers and sisters who are trapped in the cult can listen to you, can hear your story and find the courage and the strength to, to come out. Because this is a path to Jahannam. Wallahi, I have no doubt anyone who believes in a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, okay, is upon a path to Jahannam. Okay, they cannot be following. You know what the problem is? Is is yeah, the problem is the aqidah. But you know the consequence, the consequences of the aqidah. People don't realize what the consequences are. The consequences are now that you are looking at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the entire religion of Islam through a lens of another man. So this man is standing in the middle. He's your mirror you're looking through or he's your, he's your lens. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani is the lens people are looking through to see Islam and to see Muhammad Rasulullah or to, see, to, to even understand Allah. And this man, if he is not a prophet of God, if he's a liar, then you, your lens is completely, um, it's dirty. You're using a dirty lens to look at Allah. You're, you're using a dirty lens to look at Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You're using a dirty lens, okay, uh, to look at Islam, okay. When I say dirty, I mean spiritually. I don't mean personally, okay. I'm not trying to insult Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani and I'm not one of those people. I mean, when I uh, shared this, uh, you know, caricature image. Yesterday, a lot of people were actually attacking me for attacking Mirza Ghulam and Qadiani and behaving like Charlie Hebdo. I wasn't. Wallahi, my intention was not was not to hurt because in that image, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani is simply seen as, as standing with a bow, shooting arrows, random arrows, and the Murabis and the missionaries are drawing bull's eyes around those random arrows. Okay, what is the point I'm making? I'm making a point against the Murabis. That these murabbis, these missionaries are insincere. The point of sharing that picture was not the Mirza, uh, you know, no, was not the Prophet of Mirza, not Mirza himself as a person. Okay, although I have a problem with this person as well, but the point of this picture was to show the insincerity of the murabbis and the missionaries. They will make anything look good. They will go around the world, they will run marathons, they will do all sorts of gymnastics. To make black look white and white look black. And they're not worth it. These people are not worth it. Okay. So I really, I really admire your courage, your confidence, your strength. That you have found the way. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You are very, very important. Allah, Allah loves you. Allah loves you so much that Allah has chosen you to do this work. And you can be the light for your community. You can be the light for those people who are still stuck in that cult. You can, you can be the example. You can be the guiding force. And continue, brother. Wallahi, uh, you know, you, you are on a noble path. You have, you have your blog, Ahmadiyya. 
fact check blog. Uh, a lot of good information there. And may Allah bless you for your work. Okay. We don't have to agree with everything we believe in, right? We we all have different journeys. Myself, yourself, Hashim, Mansoor. We don't have to agree upon every single thing. But we agree upon this, that Islam is in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's Islam. There's nothing else to it. Anyone trying to add to Islam will not be, you know, this, this won't be acceptable. We won't accept it. So, Wallahi, I'm so, so inspired. Listen to your story. It really sends shivers down my spine and it give me, gives, gives me goose, goosebumps. Seriously, listening to you and your courage. May Allah bless you. you will Most Muslims cannot imagine what a person like you or our brothers and sisters out there who are still stuck in that cult go through. Most Muslims cannot appreciate that. You know, they don't know what, what it's like to lose your parents, to lose your aunties, your uncles, your cousins, to lose the entire family. To, to get to have your entire family turn against you, it's not easy. It's very difficult. That's why the Muslim community has to value people like you. We really have to cherish you, celebrate you, and appreciate you because you have done, you know, you've given you, you've given a great sacrifice. May Allah accept from you. Allah, With this, Allah. I'm going to bring in our next uh, guest, inshallah, um, I, Dr. Izhar Khan. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah for giving me the opportunity to come and present myself. Uh, before I do anything, please ask for um, prayers from all my Muslim brothers and sisters, for our Muslim brothers and sisters who are suffering uh, in Libya and in Morocco. Um, all our massages were collecting funds and I would uh, ask all my Muslim brothers and sisters and indeed my Ahmadi brothers and sisters to open their treasures and pour it out in the name of Allah for the sake of our Libyan brothers and sisters and Moroccan brothers and sisters. Uh, Jazakallah for allowing me to say that. Um, I would like to start by um, reciting a kalam of, uh, of Allah, Ta Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because my sole purpose here is to invite my dear Amadi brothers and sisters. Most of my family are Amadi. If I'm given time to give you a bit of my own background, personal background, and my journey to Islam. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah an nahl uh, which is chapter 16, ayat number 125, and please forgive my tajweed. I hope it uh, is as good as the tajweed <laughs> that is acceptable to Amadis. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Udu ila sibile rabbika bil hikmate. Wal mu is at il hasanat. Wajadil hum billati hi ahsanu inna rabbaka. Wa alamu biman zalla an sibilehi. Wa hua alamu bil muhtidin. And I will give you the English translation of this beautiful verse. And this is going to be my guiding light when I go to my sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good instruction and argue with them in a way that is best. Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who has strayed from his way and he is most knowing of who is rightly guided. So with that preamble, I would also like to mention that I was listening to, uh, I'll actually, I do apologize. I'm not afraid of being seen and telling you who I am. Um, yesterday, when I looked at the stream of the Murabbis, and sorry, before that, could I also thank Bashir Shah, who's a good friend. I have now developed an avuncular relationship with Bashir. And I urge my Amadi brothers and sisters, whatever you think of Bashir, please do not... Um, insult him, he has done, to be honest, a great service. His resource, I was told when I was an Ahmadi, is something to be avoided. And my nature is that I love reading. Uh, my whole house, as you can see in the background, is full of books. I've got thousands of books and reading is my passion. And so when someone says, do not read something, is our, I will first, I'll be the first to read it <laughs> to find out why they've been uh, saying this. So Bashir's resource is invaluable, and it's all authentic original sources. There may be some minor errors, and I often correct him on that, and uh, you know, we come to uh, an agreement. And so the preamble was that in last night's stream, I was very, very disappointed. 
um, particularly in one of the Egyptian brothers uh, whose name escapes me. I think Ibrahim um, was his name. And in one uh, impassioned passage during his discourse, and he is an impassioned person, and I think given the reference of the ayat I gave, we must be calm and collected. There's no point. See, those who are already entrenched in their beliefs are not going to move. And those who are not, uh, you know, um, are the observed. So I would ask my Ahmadi brothers and sisters to just listen and make your own mind. Okay? There is no force in, in deen, you see. And so uh, Brother Ibrahim uh, was aware of this uh, live stream tonight. And very carelessly said that tomorrow they are going to invite Murtadin. Now, Murtad is a very powerful and painful word for any Muslim. My journey, as I will describe to you in due course to Islam, has brought me into Islam. And Murtad is a word used for non-Muslims, those who leave Islam. Now, the Ahmadis, on the one hand, say that we non-Ahmadis are Muslims. But on the other hand, they call us murtad. But I can prove to you that Ahmadi ideology actually does regard us as Muslim and Kafir. So with that preamble, a little bit about myself, if you would like to know, or um, do you want me to carry on? Or do you yes, have yes, a... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm a consultant nephrologist, which means I'm a consultant in the NHS, which is the National Health Service in, in Britain. But thankfully, I live in Scotland. I don't live in England. England is a place that is not too dear to me, and I'm hoping that eventually Scotland will gain independence from that colonial power. That's my political message out of the way. So in terms of uh, my... Um, uh, someone will pick the phone up, so I do apologize. Uh, in terms of my profession, I'm a kidney specialist. That's what a nephrologist is, and I look after patients whose kidneys fail. And I am by nature, my, um, Allah Ta'ala has given me the ability to examine evidence which is published. I myself have, alhamdulillah, published more than 50 papers in peer-reviewed journals. I've got an MD from the university. And I don't have any problem in telling my friends and brothers and sisters that I live in Aberdeen, which is the northeast of Scotland. It's a beautiful city. If any of you brothers come and visit us, and I've already invited Bashir, Come and I'll show you some nice mountains and lochs and lakes. And it's, it's a nice place to live. Now, my journey towards... So I was a born Ahmadi. I was born in London, actually, where my father, who was a very good friend of Professor Abdus Salam, they were a family friend. I grew up with Professor Salam's son, Ahmed Salam. We, we used to play together. And my father, at one point, even lived in the Fazal Mosque, which is an architectural gem. I, I often go there because that is the area where I was born, my, and I still have family there. And so we were a very devout Ahmadi uh, family. My nana, uh, which is my maternal grandfather, at the age of 16 converted to Ahmadi. My dada was a born Ahmadi, and as a child, he went to Kadian's school, primary school, and he actually met. He was born in 1901. His guardian once took him to see Mirza Ghulam Ahmed because a teacher had been a bit uh, aggressive with him. So um, he calls himself, uh, you know, Nazarullah a Sahabi. This is what Ahmadis say about anyone who's met with the ulama. So uh, to cut a long story short, when I was five years old, my father uh, took our family back to Pakistan, and I was brought up in that metropolis, Karachi, where um, I had my education. I went to a medical school there, and uh, over there, my dad used to take us, me and my older brother, to uh, the mosque. And I would just add a little bit here, a plea to my non Ahmadi brothers and sisters um, who are Muslim to stop persecuting Ahmadi, stop destroying the buildings, because that will entrench them in their views. And Islam doesn't teach us that. That's my personal view. We need to give dawa to my Ahmadi brothers and sisters and stop their physical persecution. Because what that does, in fact, that persecution comes in very handy for the Jamaat here to make uh, further inroads into uh, the political system in Britain and the United States and in Canada. But that's another part of the story of the Jamaat Ahmadiyya. Um, so I was telling you that I was taken by my dad every Friday, uh, but you know, the Amir Saab used to give a khutbah, which used to be very long. And to be honest, I was a young boy just from school straight to the masjid. 
And all I used to wait for was for the khutbah to end, for us to finish the namaz, and then go to the library, the British Council Library, where my dad used to drop me and my brother off. And that's where I developed an interest in learning. So I grew up in medical school in 1974. My older brother was a medical student as well, and there was a um, riot in Rabwa. We can talk about that if you want to in questions, because that is another very important facet in the history of Ahmadiyya in Pakistan. So um, even I in medical school was beaten up as an Ahmadi. <laughs> and it's a very interesting story that recently, out of the blue, the person who led that attack on me, uh, who, alhamdulillah, is a Sunni Muslim, just out of the blue sent me a message saying, Izar, I'm so sorry that that happened. I, did, I, I was wrong in attacking you because of your beliefs. And I then told him that actually what's happened is I don't have those beliefs anymore. You'd be pleased to know. And so we're very good friends now. So then I came to Britain uh, where I did the usual training and ended up working solely in Scotland where I am now for the last 34 years. I'm 62 years of age. And so um, three years ago, and, and I wasn't, you know, uh, I know that I was in one of your clips before and uh, Raziullah, who I have great respect for, took a portion of that clip and mocked me saying that he calls himself an agnostic and an amity. So for the explanation of that is that there are many Ahmadis I know. In fact, I know many Muslims who are what they call themselves cultural Muslims. They don't really practice the religion very well. But Allah also gives in the Quran um, uh, advice to us that Allah gives hidayat to those whom he wants to. And I cannot explain what happened, but three years ago, I said to my wife this year, and this was for the first time after a long time, I'm going to fast and I'm going to start doing my prayers. And being a good Ahmadi at the time, uh, I said, now I'm a good Ahmadi, I'm going to start praying. But hang on a second, my nature is to study. So I said, because I'm an Ahmadi, I need to know more about Ahmadiyya. And Bashir has already referred to it. And I started reading books um, by Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the ones that I have read in a to Z is uh, uh, the Barahina Ahmadiyya and the Hakikatul Wahi and some other books, Kishti um, um and some of the other books written by his second son. So at that time, I also, you may recall that in 1974, the riots in Rabwa, which to be fair has never had any, uh, the Ahmadi Jamaat have never told their followers, us, who we, we were, what were the causes of that? What actually happened? Why did the Ahmadis in Rabwa station stop the train and beat up the Nishta medical students? Medical students, you know, they say love for all, hatred for none. But Mirza Tahir was involved in that. I know that uh, from people who I know. Uh, but no inquisition has been done, no inquiry. It's very opaque. But that led to the mass movement against the Jamaat in 1974. And in fact, on the 7th of September, the the Parliament of Pakistan uh, gave, um, uh, amended the constitution and removed them out of um, uh, the recognition as a Muslim sect. And then I said, I, because I was researching Ahmadiyya from a very open heart, at this time I hadn't converted to Sunni Islam, I said I should read the parliamentary proceedings. And that was an eye-opener because Mirza Tahir Ahmad in his, one of his khutbahs had said, and claimed he was also a part of the Ahmadi team who were there. Mirza Nasser was the Khalifa at that time. And I had met Mirza Nasser in 1968 or 69 because he stayed in my paternal grandfather's house in Karachi. My paternal grandfather had a very big house in their uh, PCHS society. And in fact, my mother used to make halwa for him, you know, and I had met him. He was leading the um, the response of the Ahmadis in, the, in that parliamentary inquiry. And Yahya Bakhtiar was the prosecutor on, I hope I'm not boring people because this is very, very important. No, no, carry on, carry on, inshallah. Don't interrupt me if you want me to um, change topic. So I said I should read those proceedings. Mirza Tahir had said that if Pakistanis read that uh, transcript, they will, half of Pakistan will become Ahmadis. So I said, this is great, let's read it. I'm already an Ahmadi, I'll be an even stronger Ahmadi. Actually, it opened my eyes because 
the um, way Mirza Nasir Ahmed responded uh, to Yahya Bakhtiar's forensic examination was not very impressive. In fact, the Lahoris were also examined in that at the end, and they gave a better account of themselves. So then I um, uh, looked at, so I've decided, I, I, I my conversion to Sunni Islam has five uh, steps. Number one, doctrinal, very important. And the Ahmadis talk about Akida. So I studied the doctrine of Khatm Nabuat. I studied the doctrine of the death of uh, Jesus and his migration to India. The second step was um, I then looked at the life of the founder. It's very important. And I read a very interesting book actually published by the Lahoris called Mujaddid Azam. It's volume one is a, uh, Bashir knows about that. His volume one is in English. It's called The Great Reformer. And I read Mirza Saab's own uh, life story, the Hakikatul Mahdi, uh, uh, Siratul Mahdi, which is often talked about, which was written by his son, Mirza Siruddin Ahmed, MA, who was uh, given the epithet of um, Kamrul Ambiya, or the moon of prophets. I don't know why. Um, and then um, I looked at his life, his prophecies, because he had clearly indicated that he, if any of his prophecies is proven false, he would um, be proven uh, not a correct claimant. I'm not going to insult anyone. And I, as a doctor, would like it to be made very clear that I am i don't like talking about anybody's how they died. Allah Ta'ala has given us various illnesses. And people who die of cholera or gastrointestinal diseases are also Muslim. Many Muslims die of it. So I think that's besides the point. And to be honest, it doesn't interest me. So those who want to discuss that can do it, but I have not, no truck with that. Uh, then I looked at the prophecies, and they didn't stack up. Take, for example, the prophecy of the, of the, um, uh, the eclipses. That actually is not unprecedented. Number one, I always look at the source, and I found out that this wasn't a hadith. And I have got numerous instances where Khalifas have said that, Ahzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is Kala Rasulullah, but it isn't. It was Imam Baqir of the Shia Imam who actually said this about the Shia Mehdi's advent. But lo and behold, if it all takes a little bit of work with the NASA database. You can find out that, in, I think it was in the 16th century, exactly on the same dates eclipses occurred, when exactly in that year, there was a claimant from India of all places. I've forgotten his name, but I've, I've got all the references. So anyway, that didn't stack up. Then I looked at the prophecy. Okay, so that was number two, and I'll come back to the prophecies. Number three was the split. So I'm a great um, student of history. So if I hadn't done medicine, I would be doing history, to be honest. And my main history specialty interest is the Ottoman Empire. But I looked at um, uh, the history of the Jamaat, and it was fascinating. And I often said, jokingly, I said to Bashir as well, it would make a fantastic Netflix series like The Crown, to be honest. You know, and I'd love to be one of the characters in that. Maybe I'll be Ahmed Beg, uh, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but joking aside, and I don't want to trivialize it, but we do need to be a bit, um, you know, have some gallows humor. Um, and I tell you another thing is that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And most of my Ahmadi brothers and sisters I know are pious people, but they haven't read the books. They haven't done the research. So I would ask them to please do that. Contact me if you want to. I don't bite. I will, if you come to Aberdeen, I'll treat you to dinner and tea. So I read about the split. And Mulvi Muhammad Ali, whose uh, book I always uh, refer to, uh, his biography. You know, Mulvi Muhammad Ali was one of the great intellectuals of the, uh, of the 19th century. So much so that he was the original editor of the Review of Religions at a time when the Review of Religions was really a decent magazine. And the um, uh, people used to think that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has got somebody from Britain, an Angres, who's actually doing this, but his English is immaculate. And um, so he fell out after the death of Malvi Nuruddin with uh, Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmoud Ahmed. And I can tell my Ahmadi brothers and sisters who are interested in history, do read the history of Mirza Bashiruddin because he basically created the Jamaat as it is today. He was a great admirer of Mussolini and Hitler, you'll be um, surprised to know. And he 
made the various, um, uh, you know, cadres, the Atfal, the Khuddam. In fact, in one of his khutbas, he says, and all of this is available online, thanks to the jamaat Ahmadiyya that have, please do not take away these khutbas or these books, because they are a tremendous resource for researchers. Uh, he once in his khutbah said that, I wish I had the power that Mussolini and Hitler had, so I can, can, I can exercise that power on my phone. Okay, forward. sorry to interrupt, um, Dr. Dr. Khan. Um, this seems to look like a very interesting stream um, of, of learning about history, inshallah. We, we, need to, we need to dedicate a separate stream on these historical aspects of, of the Jamaat. Um, if, I, if I may just um, ask you, what is the main, if you want to point out, to the, the Muslims, the non Ahmadis, in terms of that was a decisive point for you that you left the Jamaat so that we can all you know, take note from this example, inshallah. Yes. So one of the things that that's a good point, and I'll keep, try to keep it brief. One of the interesting things is that I was brought up in, uh, well, I, I work in a place where we have a large Muslim community, a fantastic Muslim community. And one of the things that used to annoy me is why can't I read namaz behind a good uh, imam who recites the Holy Quran in such a way that it brings tears to my eyes. And I'm not joking. When I started doing fasting, even though I was an Ahmadi, I said to me and my son, I said, let's go to the masjid. And it's a fantastic masjid. The Aberdeen Masjid is, uh, was uh, designed by an award-winning architect um, whose name escapes me. But anyway, and it's a, it's a very good piece of architecture. And so we used to go there for Fajr after the uh, Sehri, you know, we call it when you eat before you fast. And I loved it. Nobody used to tell me to go from the mosque, to leave the mosque. They knew that I was an MD. They were courteous to me. And so this was a transformative process as well. So then all the questions I had, uh, number four was the Khalifas. And lastly, number five was involvement of the Jamaat in politics, Pakistani politics. So these were the five uh, chapters in my book that I have in mind to write one day. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. So um, I then said to uh, my wife that, look, I, I spoke to my brothers and sisters uh, and in our WhatsApp family group, I posed this question. I had a WhatsApp family group and many of them just left. My cousins who are very high up in the Jamaat and a lot of them left. They couldn't handle the heat, basically, of the questions I was posing. So then I went to the Murabi, who's a nice chap in, uh, in Scotland, and I asked him questions. And he said, look, I can't answer your questions. Some of these are too complicated. And he was honest about it. And the, he advised me. And I said, look, I can't stay in this Jamaat any longer. I was at the verge of leaving the Jamaat. And then he said to me, uh, why don't you write to Huzur? Uh, I, he's the ultimate arbiter. And, and he's right. I mean, he's the chief executive. Uh, you know, he's the chap who they call the king. And I wrote a letter on 15th of uh, March, um, 2022, last year. And I sent it by regular mail. I live in the UK. I sent it by fax, which was advised. And I sent it by uh, registered mail. I'm still waiting for a reply. And it's a very courteously addressed letter. I start by saying, Hazrat Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Masur, Ahmed Khalifa Tal Masih 5. Remember, I was an MD at that time. Now, if I write to him, I will say, dear Mr. Masrur, Mirza Masrur Ahmed Saab, I'll still be polite, of course. I trust this letter finds you in good health, and I pray to Allah for your well-being. And then I give my introduction, and there is 12 questions, very decent questions. I should add that during this period when I was researching Ahmadiyyat, an audio tape was leaked. I was actually, I remember the day, it was Ramzan, I think, or after Ramzan, I can't remember. I was reading the Quran at about two or three in the morning when someone texted me this. And Allah is my witness. When I listened to, even at that time, I said, look, he's the Khalifa. You know, I, when I listened to that 40 minute, two minute tape, I was stunned. Uh, I was shivering and I was almost sweating. I said, firstly, I said, this is a man whose predecessors I used to revere as the Khalifa of the Messiah Ma'ud. Na'udzubillah. Now. And how can a man talk to any woman like that, number one? Number two, how can a man who proclaims to be the Khalifa of all the Muslims of the world speak to a girl who's actually related to him, who was the, who was the granddaughter of two of his, uh, of his predecessor? And the girl, poor girl, 
was saying that I've been, uh, I don't want to use um, uh, words that children might find offensive, but basically she was claiming, alleging that she was subjected to severe sexual abuse uh, since childhood by none other than her father. I mean, that to me was, um, uh, was uh, too much. And I said, look, enough is enough. I had written my letter. I waited for two months. Uh, Alhamdulillah, my, my son, who was also following me in this, uh, one of my three sons, and please pray for the rest of my family, um, he left the Jamaat he, before me. And he said, Baba, why, what are you waiting for, Baba? He used to fight with me, almost argue with me. And I said, well, What was the main thing that uh, made your son leave? Was it the same tape or was it something else? I think it was that, plus also he used to go to the mosque as well, and he was doing similar research, and we used to discuss things. He was convinced. I was convinced, to be honest. Okay. I wanted to so, the... not, so, not to be rude, Dr. Saab, but we, because we have limited time, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you questions, and maybe if you, you know, like a Q&A, which is what this uh, platform is yeah. right now. Or any so other... Yeah. Then we, you can ask. summarize um, in a few words uh, to the questions that we'll be go going to be asking. Uh, so I think Mansu has already asked you the first question with regards to what made you leave. Uh, and I think you did already explain that. Uh, the next question would be, like, what is what is it that, uh, that really worked for you in terms of navigating your way after leaving the Jamaat? Like, how did you, you know... The Quran and... The Quran. Well, they claim it's the Quran and Sunnah they are following. Yeah. So what is it that really led you to believe in right. the real Islam that we, the Sunnis, alhamdulillah, are professing. I, I, I actually, I, I even made a um, PowerPoint presentation that I presented to one of our halakas who's run by a classmate of mine from Dow in right. Boston. He's a fantastic man. And I um, uh, basically said that um, there are three verses of the Quran um, and there are some uh, hadith. The verses that they have been completely distorted, I have to say, by the Jamaat. The one in Surah Juma, uh, the one in Surah Saf, and the one, of course, in Surah in, in Surah Ahzab. So Surah Ahzab 40 um, is well known to everyone. The, but the most interesting was the Surah Juma. Now you see, I'm not an Arab scholar. I don't claim to be. But who did I go for? And my wife used to get fed up in every gathering where there was an Arab, a Syrian brother or a Libyan sister or someone. I used to say, can you please translate this? And what do you understand from this? And all they were saying was that I had three and four. One of the co confusing things is Ahmadis use Bismillah as ayat. So I think it's our ayat three and four, in which Allah Ta'ala says the gist of this topic is that we sent this prophet, Azur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Arabs, basically. And they, he preached the word of God. And there will be a time when others will join them. Those others, the Jamaat keep telling me, the Murabbis keep telling me, uh, were, uh, was Nauzubillah a prophecy for Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. That doesn't stack up. You know, if any child uh, reads that um, uh, surah, which is not many verses, basically they're saying is that others will join. And the context, the Husnay Nazul, do you call it, uh, of that was that uh, they were asking who uh, are these others? And Azu Salam put his hand on Azad Salman Farsi anhu, and said, if uh, Islam goes up to the Pleiades, even then someone from his uh, descendants will um, you know, um, bring it back. And you know, that could be applied to any of the Aulia and scholars. Imam Ghazali, for example, was a proper Iranian. He was born in, um, Tus, uh, in Tus, I think which is in Iran. He was a Persian. Imam Abu Hanifa was more of a Persian. Now, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed wasn't even a Persian. And then I looked at um, the uh, Surah Saf. You see where I think that's where the uh, word Ahmed is used. Ahmed is the name of Azur Sallallahu Alaihi one of the great names of Azur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Mirza uh, 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 Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, the second Khalifa, had written in a book called Kalmatul Fasl quite clearly that this applies to his father, Nauzubillah. So that, and then uh, Surah Ahzab. So when you, when you say they changed the Quran, are you saying in regards to the English or the Urdu translation, or are you talking about the actual Arabic? 
No, both in a sense. It's the interpretation of the oh, verse. Oh, so it's a, it's a translation that they changed. That was a prediction. That's part I'm talking about the Surah Juma. You, said, you mentioned the Surah Juma. Yeah, so no, they, do, they change they the translation. Do, they do put it in practice as well. Okay. Even, even Surah Baqarah 3, 4. Now, recently, Ahmadis are being prosecuted in Pakistan for mistranslating the Quran. Akhira, in the earlier edition, I've got it all. I've done the research. Akhira, in um, uh, Surah Baqarah, I think I had three and four. Akhirat is always about Qiyama in that context. Even Malvi Muhammad Ali's uh, translation and so short uh, tafsir that I have in English, which was sanctioned and approved by Malvi Nuruddin. So the Ahmadis can't say that this is wrong. He specifically says that Akhirat in this sense simply means the Yom Qiyama. Now, in the new edition, after Mirza Tahir Ahmed interfered in it, he changed the word Akhirat and he translated it to Maud Bate, means promised words. Where the, sorry, where did that come from? Yeah. And you can put them side by side. Why change the new tr translation? So, <laughs> may Allah help. That's not new. They have been playing with the words. So that was enough. So I finally. Finally, I've sent a last email to Rafiq Hayat. My MD brothers and sisters from London will very well know who Rafiq Hayat is. He, he's the prime minister in London. He's the Amir Jamaat of the UK. And he, I emailed him, I got all those emails, and he said, I will forward it to the private secretary of the uh, Khalifa Saab. I still haven't got, I often joke with my family because he's got a farm in Surrey. I said, maybe one of his goats ate it. <laughs> Okay. But, uh, now the next question I wanted to ask is um, it's not an insult, it's just light-hearted banter. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. We, that's we fine. understand yeah. being in UK understand the humor, yeah. mashallah. That's fine, inshallah. We will learn from um, um uh, Dr. Sab, inshallah, a bit more. So let's bring in our next uh, guest, inshallah. Yeah. Who's next? Uh, I will bring the Dr. Pious Spirit. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh you need to unmute yourself, sister. I think it's a sister. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it looks, oh yeah, there. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Am I clearly audible? Yes, you are. Yes, loud and clear, alhamdulillah. Okay, thanks. How are you? You okay? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, very fine. Okay. Where are you joining us from, sister? I'm from Multan, Pakistan. <clears throat> okay, okay. Mashallah, welcome. It must be quite late there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for um, sharing the platform with us. So, Alhamdulillah. So uh, we are, what we are doing today is we are trying to understand from the perspective of former Ahmadis and understand you have as well. You, you were a former Ahmadi. So... Tell us a bit about uh, yourself and as to why you left the Jamaat. What was the main catalyst in your uh, experience that uh, made you leave the Jamaat? Uh, you're muted again, sister. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. I didn't know my mic was muted. Well, I was uh, telling that uh, when we were in our early childhood and even in the teenagers, uh, we came to know about the contradictions that Mr. Ghulam Ahmed Kadiani had made in his uh, books. But the one that uh, forced me to think and rethink my belief was uh, he declared one of his books as a sacred book, Aina Kamalat Islam. And at page 551 of that book, he had written that we have assigned the, the name Masih ibn Maryam. And this was the prophecy of Mr. Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, a so-called prophecy. So while explaining his prophecy, he further elaborated that he had not revealed that prophecy to his friends and his foes. Rather, he used the word that he concealed the facts from the general public. So it just confused me that how come a prophet, an imam, 
or someone sent by the god could do this how could he conceal the facts how could he conceal a prophecy that was given to him by the almighty and he has clearly written in his books that neither did he apprise the friends about the prophecy not to the folk so further um i when i got confused then i referred to his book the same book page 531 where he had himself himself says declared that he sought refuge of Allah from the liars those who conceal the facts and he also declared in that book that Allah has not only deprived those people who are liars or who have concealed the facts from the natural luminaries but Allah has also declared them as cursed people so the very question that came into my mind was that meza kula mehmet kadiani who said that he was a prophet who said that he was being prophesized by allah he himself has given this prophecy in the book and then also revealed no did not reveal that to the public he concealed that prophecy then he how could he be a prophet how could be he be a good person a blessed person even when he concealed the facts when he concealed the prophecy he himself had declared those people who conceal the facts as cursed people then how can he be a blessed one so this was the point that uh, that became a turning point point for me and then i started studying his own books the message that i got from that prophecy and that explanation was that mirza ulama mehmet qadiyani was a manipulator he had himself refuted and uh, once he refuted himself then he became a cursed person and a cursed person could never be an imam or a masi or a prophet so this was the point where i started the research and i started with the books of mirza kulam ahmed qadiyani and then i found a lot of things a lot of contradictions a lot of things against quran and sunna there were many concepts and beliefs that were against the basics of islam so gradually i came to believe that he was not the one whom should i follow he was not the one who could be a leader of islam he was a great manipulator he was a liar and then he so concluded his himself own books. so it was his own books and writings which gave the clue to his uh, deception yes exactly this okay. is Anwar. this was all from his books the books written by him himself mm. and then i refer to the books of the caliphs like uh, uh, we used to study the tarjuma of holy quran that was written by bashiruddin mahmud and afterwards i read the tafsir of mirza tahir as well so when i was researching i thought of one thing uh, that one thing was very much clear in my mind that while studying that sect while studying and researching about the sect i should not go to someone from the jamaat like their murabbis or anyone who could preach me about the jamaat or the sect so what i did was i first of all read the books of mirza gulam ahmed qadiani and then I started reading the Holy Quran, studying it from a neutral perspective, and then I referred to many books of Hadith and many interesting things just opened to me, and I came to know that how Mr. Ulam Ahmed Qadiani has not only revealed the basics of Islam from us all, he has even gone against the basics of Islam. He has even given the beliefs against the Holy Prophet. and all these things made me very very clear and then allah almighty then he blessed me with this islam alhamdulillah inshallah uh, in terms of uh, the people who are you know researching like the way you did um you know urdu i'm, I'm pretty sure you know urdu uh, what about the younger generation do you think they have the same way or the same uh, freedom to research like the way you did because they might not understand or do or read or do do you think they have the same kind of resources uh, 
now that we have the internet and many, like uh, Brother Bashir said, 60% of the books have been translated. Do you think they still have the same freedom to research independently and come to the conclusion that uh, this is not the truth, this is not the true Islam, and this is just deception uh, like that of the, the Jals out there who claim to be prophets, and the Prophet ﷺ already prophesied this, that there will be the Jals. Uh, what do you think? Do you think they have the same freedom in terms of the way they researched? Um, as far as uh, freedom is concerned, uh, people are uh, very much aware now. Awareness is there. Like social media has helped them to go through the books. When I was first um, researching it, I just remember that I didn't have, have that internet facility even at home. I was doing my master's and uh, during the, uh, my free hours after the classes, I used to go to the lab and then I researched about the books and the, that website alislam.org was afterwards not uh, being opened in Pakistan. But still, the younger generation today have more opportunities than we had. And they have the freedom. They know each and everything. They can even uh, they uh, come to me. Many of the female uh, students of mine, they come to me. They ask questions easily with full freedom. But as far as the people residing in Chenakagar are concerned, they are, um, they are rather in a well. You know, they are in a baseline. They don't find themselves very easy to uh, contact with anyone to coordinate with someone because they have many social pressures over there. Uh, they're the very first pressure they face is uh, whenever they question something, uh, they feel that they are being disrespected by the Jamaat. And finally, in terms of a crash, they face a lot of disrespect in front of their family members, in front of their friends and foes and everything. So um, they have the freedom, but still, they are socially bound not to do any research. They are socially bound. They are even told by the leaders not to go through the books of ulama and uh, not to even meet any person out of their sect or community. So uh, they, are, uh, they are having more freedom than us, but still they have some boundaries. They have some limitations and restrictions. Okay. So when you say disrespected by the Jamaat, what do you exactly mean? Like, have they been, I don't know, publicly exposed or ostracized in some way? Basically, they are uh, cursed by the family, of uh, the family members, the um, you know, uh, people living family. around, and uh, then their their names are being announced in the speakers of the uh, area. Uh, you know, they their um, bat, the masjid, their mosque is known as bat. And the, there are announcements from the speakers of the bad that that person is uh, not cooperating with the Jamaat and he or she has to be uh, left out from the Jamaat. And you know the term Akhraj, they are very, very afraid of that term because after Akhraj, uh, they face so, a social boycott from the family and all the friends and, uh, you know, okay. people living around. So this is the, the most... Uh, ostracization yeah. of the individual, yes. Uh, I yeah. believe Brother Bashir has uh, probably some knowledge about this. I also heard the, the Jamaat actually has membership cards. So when you're in the masjid, you will be asked, like, it's like an ID. Now, yes. you see... They cancel their any, membership. Yeah, you go to any Sunni masjids, nobody will ask you for your ID. I mean, that that shows that this is not from the Quran and Sunnah. Because they keep on this, you know, this mantra, they keep on repeating... We follow the Quran and Sunnah. We follow the Quran and Sunnah. Can you please show us from any of the Ashabas who had been asked to produce an ID when they went to the masjid? The whole purpose of a masjid is this is a place which is free from any, any sort of pressure. You know, you come there, you do your salah, you do your ibadah, and then you leave. You know, this is a place where you should find safety and security, not uh, some sort of pressure where you we have to show your ID. You know, Alhamdulillah, in the UK, even the government has issued IDs for the public here. <laughs> so we can move around in public places. But in the UK, when you go to their masjid or whatever they call it, they have to ask for your ID. Where's the freedom? Yeah, where's the trust in the people? 
So, you know, Alhamdulillah, uh, this is the, the true Islam. This is not the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu nor the practice of the companions or anywhere, in fact, uh, any, any Sunnis in history as far as I know. So, yeah, so what about when, when you talk about the membership card? It's interesting. So you have a membership scheme. Um, is that a free membership or do they have to pay something like a, a donation every here and there? Or is it a fixed? Is, how, how, what, what's the amount? Because I think people need to know how is, it, is there a financial control by the Jamaat? Yeah. Do they know your bank accounts? Do they know and so on and so forth? I mean, do you want to enlighten us a bit more on this? I think Bashir Bhai might be able to add some light yeah. to this. Yes, sir. So, yeah. So, so, so here's the story. Uh, all members have to pay at least six point two five percent, and they will ask you how much money you make. They will find out. They they call it a budget. They'll say, "Set your budget. Tell us how much you make." And then they don't. It's, this is not gross. This is net. So it's off the top. So that's six point two five off the, off the top. Now, if sorry, six point two five percent of what? Of your income? Of your income monthly. Wow. So that's, that's one. Now, that's as you know, brother, in the masjid, there's none of that. There's the box. If you feel like giving money, give money. If you don't, yeah. don't. No one's pressured. You know, there's where I'm at in California, there's all kind of uh, relief efforts in, in Afghanistan and here and there. Give to those. Do whatever you want. There's no there's no accounting. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, we, 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 we do it for Sadaqa. And we don't do it be, yeah. because we're... we're there's uh, no caution. You know, there's, yeah, that's and, the whole thing about Sadaqa. That they, shouldn't be caution. It should be from your own free will. Right. And, they you know, the zakat is matter. something which is mandatory. But yeah. even then, I mean, I don't think any people go around and become a zakat you got. If you don't, you're you're going to be someone who is who is sinful. If you have the means and you don't pay the zakat, if you're eligible and you don't pay, then you'll be sinful. But to ask for six point two five percent and the zakat is actually two point five percent, so it's not even the zakat. I think this is what they call chanda. Am I right? Chanda, yeah. Yeah. So the chanda yeah, and, is, and it goes further. It, it goes further. If you want to be buried in their heavenly graveyard, it's ten percent. Wow. And then just like the Christian tithe, brother, I I, I keep telling everyone, uh, Akkadianism is Christianity and Islam and Buddhism mashed in together, and Mirza Glamam is like a Christian prophet. That way it all makes sense. You know, even his vulgar language, it all makes sense. So you, but you, you pay 10%, you get ticket to your Jannah. You get ticket to Jannah. And, and then Mirza Ghulam, I mean, look, at the end of it, remember, there's always double speak. He says, no, but I'm not guaranteeing Jannah. He said, nice. but you set up the whole system and said that it's your sounds, go to Jannah. Sounds like Dajjal to me. You know, remember, the Dajjal will show the heaven and he'll show the, um, sorry, the, the paradise and the hell. But his paradise will actually be hell, and his hell will actually be paradise. So yeah, I think he's following the footsteps of the Dajjal. But anyway, right. I think we digress. There's more. Uh, one last point, one last yeah, point. And on. when you die, you have to give 30% of your property to the wow. Jamaat. So my father is going to pass. I, I mean, I, I don't know when, uh, you know, but soon, you know, in the next 20 years at least. And then when he passes, his house is valued, you know, like maybe 500000 So we, not me. But my brother, who's still a Ekadiani, uh, will have to make a payment of 120000 but before he's buried. You know, when someone passes away, they have like two days to make this payment. So it, it's, it's ridiculous that's, and outside of the swamp. That's more than just oppression, you know. It's, it's, it's basically, <clears throat> I think there should be some laws against this in the countries where it's practiced. Yeah, I just uh, want to bring Brother Muhammad Imtiaz, um, uh, if you want to make a quick point here, inshallah. Yeah, go ahead. Fantastic. Uh, mashallah, brother, it's a very uh, insightful uh, conversation from uh, Sister uh, Pai Spirit and the brother before, Dr. Izhar Bhai and uh, other people. Actually, I just want to mention one thing uh, which is very important. In the past couple of days, I've been in contact with the... You, they are former Ahmadis, but they are still on the list of, you can say, they're still in the database as Ahmadis. Now you may be thinking that, why is this the case? And I want listeners to pay attention. It's a very important point. They are very serious social repercussions. As sister pointed out, for example, just imagine that across the country, in the centers of the Jamaat, your names are being pronounced alongside with your father's name and just just think about this that how much shame is being created for these people and on the top of that 
there is going to be very serious social pressure from those relatives. In some cases, your own spouse and your own children. For example, if one of the uh, of the you can say partners or the husband or the wife, if one of them have come to the true Islam, but the other partner is still in the cult and children are still in the cult, you can all imagine that how hard life is going to be. So because of these you know, consequences, despite the fact many people, you can call them if you like, the underground former Ahmadiyya community. Okay, they are they have become Muslims, they are in their heart, they have they have become the true Muslims, but unfortunately, because of this social cost, because of all of these pressures, they are not announcing it publicly, they are not coming on any public platform. Why I mentioned this? Some of the clerics they might use, oh, look, you know, they had this stream, nobody was coming, they only have those few people. People need to understand the reason, okay. Who will, have, who will have the courage to come on the public platform to speak against this mafia? Please understand the problem. We need to have genuine empathy for the Ahmadiyya community. Wallahi, the more I am learning about the hardships this community is going to go through at the hand of this mafia, Wallahi, um, my heart is just bleeding. That How difficult life is for them. That despite knowing the truth, they cannot publicly announce it. They cannot publicly live their life as a true Muslim. And secondly, <clears throat> it's very important. And, and now in this point, I'm addressing those brothers and sisters in the Ahmadiyya community who are now at the crossroads and they want to take a decision. Please listen this brotherly advice very carefully. Unfortunately, what I have came to discover in the past few weeks that People are, those people who are part of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat, they are not exposed to the true teachings of Islam. They have no knowledge of the Islamic history. They are only given a cherry-picked version of Islam. And all of that is even through the lens of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Sahib and the Ahmadiyya clerics. Because of this, brothers, my Muslim brothers, and sister, please understand this, these common Ahmadiyya masses, they do not know anything about Islam. They only know about that cultish beliefs, practices, and system in which they are brought up and they are living a very miserable life. Now, my brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya who are living in this, uh, this situation, please listen your brother Muhammad Imtiaz very carefully. Number one, I know that all of these things are genuine. I'm not trying to belittle your hardships in any way, shape, or form. But I want to give you the right perspective. What is the perspective? This life is temporary. All the benefits, everything that can possibly be stopping you from coming to Islam is temporary. And after life, Jannah or Jahannam, that is an everlasting life. Do not risk your everlasting life because of these obstacles. That is one point. Second point is this. Guess what? Take your decision. I'm not saying you have to announce it straight away. Even look at your situation. If you cannot publicly come announce, no problem. Believe and start practicing and start making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the doors for you to come out of all of these difficulties because initially it is Allah sunnah. You will be tested. Okay? Read life of Sahaba. They were tested. They lost their businesses, their families, their children. But we know what certificate they were given. Allah is pleased with you and be pleased with Allah. So understand the reward, the prize, which is coming as a result of facing all of this hardship. And one very important point, very important point, very important point. Ahmadiyya clerics, when they see those people who are about to leave the cult, they ask them, oh, which sect you will join? There are 72 sects. Which one you are you going to go to? Brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya, listen very carefully, okay? After you leave the cult, it is your life. You don't have to subscribe to any sect, any group. It will be your life according to your situation, 
do your research, go to any of the mainstream masajid, talk to ulama, because unfortunately, they have, they, they, there's a term, there's a term which has been coined by the jamaat, mullah, mullah, you know, through this term, they instill the hatred of mainstream Muslim scholars in the hearts and minds of the Ahmadiyya kids right from their childhood. Brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya, Wallahi, I'm telling you, Alhamdulillah, as a, as, as a member of the mainstream Muslim community across the globe, nobody is going to judge you. It, is, it will be your journey. Nobody is going to check your ID card at the masjid gate. Okay, who you are? It's not going to happen. It only happens in the case of cult. In the mainstream masajid, go to any of the masajid. Pray as you want to pray. Okay, do your research with the best of your ability and whatever comes out to you as a truth, follow that. Nobody is going to come between you and Allah. Nobody will make a judgment on you. And please, there is a true Islam. Look, look at this one. Allah says in the Quran, Allahu waliyun ladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-zulumati ila nur Subhanallah. Allah, Allah is saying, Allah is the wali. Allah is the protecting friend. Allah is the close friend of who? Of the believer. And what does he do for them? He will take them out of darkness to the light of Islam. Wallahi, right now, being part of the cult, you are in the darkness. You cannot see the truth. But inshallah, once you break this shackle, come out of this cult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you see the light of Islam. And in the light of that, you'll be able to live your life and you will be able to experience the true peace, happiness, and contentment. Because at the end of the day, all the Islamic beliefs, all the Islamic practices, their end goal in this dunya, obviously the end goal for the Akhira is to please Allah and to be entered into Allah's Jannah with Allah's mercy. That's the end goal in true sense. But in this dunya, all of these beliefs and practices, they are to give you a happy life, a good life. A life of peace and contentment. I beg you, brother from Ahmadiyya, I beg you. Sister from Ahmadiyya, I beg you. Ask your heart. Being a part of this cult, have you ever experienced true contentment? Please, be genuine with yourself. You don't need to give answer to Muhammad in Piyaz. Answer this question for your own self. Being a part of this cult, when you experience the true contentment, the pleasure of Iman, when did you experience that? But guess what? Take this step. Leave this cult. Break the shackles. Uksim billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you taste the sweetness of Iman. The sweetness, the pleasure of Iman has a sweetness. The halawa. In hadith says, okay? The halawa of the Iman. And you will experience this only if you are in the true Islam. Ahmadiyya is a cult. I request to all the Ahmadiyya community, don't take my words. Do your research that when something is called a cult, what are the features of a cult? I give you some example. For example, you need to marry within that group. You need to only read the literature of that group. Okay? You need to have all your social contact within that group. Isn't it not the description of a cult? Do your research. Ahmadiyya is a cult. Please break the shackles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be your guide. Allah will be, inshallah, guiding you to the truth of Islam. And all the panel of Dawa-wise and your brother, we are always, inshallah, at your service. Not to do you any favor. We have to be at your service. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. We have genuine empathy for you. We feel your pain. Let me tell you this last thing. Up till two weeks ago, yes, I had the knowledge of Mirza Sahib and his book, etc. But I must acknowledge I did not have the knowledge about the pain and suffering Ahmadiyya community is going to go through. Either those who are former Ahmadis or those who are still part of this cult. Wallahi, once I came to know, I'm saying it. I mean it. My heart is bleeding. Please do your research. Take a step. Reach out to us. May Allah bless all of you. Barakallah. Um, very, very important uh, message to the Ahmadi community. And also to understand that the Muslims who are non-Ahmadis to appreciate the sufferings and the trials and tribulations that you know the the Ahmadi Muslims who are trying to come out of uh, this cult 
is going through. So may Allah make their suffering easy and relieve them from the suffering and give them the courage and the means to come out of this cult, inshallah ta'ala. If I want to bring Dr. Izhar Khan very quickly here, if you mind just briefly explain to us, you know, um, having seen all these things, is there a community of ex ahmadis in which you help one another, you have somewhere people can get support, uh, advice, knowledge, um, anything. Is there something like this that is established that they can turn to for help and support, like a, some kind of mentoring scheme? Because I think from, from what I hear now, it's very important that they can turn to somewhere where there's some support. Very important question. Thank you very, very much. Important, Dr. Actually, yeah. uh, I would like to thank uh, Mohammed Imtiaz, Brother Imtiaz's passion, and I would fully endorse his views. It is a cult. I've often said that if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, then it's a duck. And I can tell you why. I've experienced it myself. One of my family members was told by the Jamaat in no uncertain terms that if a particular other family member who has been excommunicated attends your daughter's wedding, you will be punished. In Urdu, I have a little bit of a little If, for example, we had any music on in a wedding, right? Even if it was the family members. Shikayat ho jayegi. Shikayat means, you know, there's a spy system and I've got evidence of that. So it is a cult and people are scared. You can't be a Muslim. You know, when I became a Sunni a Hanafi Muslim, Alhamdulillah, the example I give is it's like a drowning person suddenly comes up for air. That is the kind of feeling and I can't explain. Alhamdulillah, you guys were born Muslim but we are reborn Muslims in a sense. So in answer to your question, there is a lot on social media. And I think it's the 21st century. I tell my Amity brothers and sisters who are not yet courageous enough to question their, uh, you see, it's also appeasement as well as Brother Bashir said, uh, people respect their parents. But I always say to my family, the only uh, being that we are answerable to is Allah. I'm not answerable to my mom and dad, to my brothers, my sisters, my wife. I'm only, to even the Molvi, to even you guys, I'm only answerable to Allah. And look into yourself, question the fact that, you know, this aims, it's called an aims number. And when I left, and this was a very important point, anyone who leaves the Jamaat must confirm that they're off the database because they will then be defying the GDPR rules in, in Britain we have this Data Protection Act. So in answer to your question, I'm not aware of a formal community of ex amadis I don't like the word ex amadi to be honest. I like the word new Muslims who were formerly uh, in the Ahmadi Jamaat. But uh, it, it, there may be a need for that. And uh, again, it's the fear. There are many, I have just, after we started this stream, I have friends and family members saying, how can we get on? And in some of the cases I have explained to them, but it's the fear. Please, Amity brothers and sisters, don't fear Mr. Masroor. You're not going to be answerable to Mr. Masroor. Don't deify him. If you look at the recent Jalsa, they even have poems calling him a king. Maulana Mududi wrote a very good artic, uh, book called Khilafat and Malukiyat. Uh, and you know, this is all Malukiyat. You are revering him. Um, I always give the example when Azur Sallallahu Alaihi uh, had prophesied that, you know, Qasr or Kisra will be within the Muslim domain. When, the, when one of the big prisoners from Iran was brought to uh, Medina, he asked um, his um, cap captors, where is your Khalifa? And someone pointed to a corner in Masjid in Nabwi where a man wearing ordinary clothes was just sitting doing his prayers. And he said, there is our Khalifa. He's not sitting on a throne. He's not driving a Mercedes S-Class or so. I mean, I... Okay, you know, but you see people in Malaysia, they are Ahmadi refugees who are suffering. There are people in uh, other parts of the Far East, they are suffering and they need help and aid. But so, Dr. Ishar Khan, so apart from social media platforms in which you can get together, is there anything, is there really um, a on the ground organization or a community? In which practical I think Bashir, Bashir by knows. Yeah, right. and, and, and I just posted the link. Uh, can, can, you, can you flash it on the screen? The, there's a new thing these young people are doing called Discord. Okay, it's hard to keep new up. Thing. 
It's yeah, I, it, maybe it's been a while around a few years, but Discord That's is true. huge. We, we, we have a Discord called Islam after Amadea. Uh, a bunch of people in there. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. So the link is in the chat. Check it out. Islam after Amelia Discord. And that's it. Sorry to interrupt, brothers. No Guys, this is, this is absolutely crucial for ex Ahmadis to get together from all around the world. You mentioned visas earlier and asylum applications. We know many Ahmadis around the world have uh, traveled to different countries. For example, Ahmadis are spread out. In Europe, they are Germany. spread out. In Canada, they are uh, very um, visible in the US, in Australia as well. And wherever the Ahmadis are, there is there is um, an ex-Ahmadi community. Or there are ex-Ahmadis or new Muslims. New Muslims for that matter, as Brother Izhar put it. But you know, ex-Ahmadis are a special type of new Muslims. Okay, These are new Muslims who have good knowledge of Islam who have come from uh, some appreciation, uh, you know, albeit in a distorted form. They have been introduced to some form of Islam, albeit in a distorted form, right? Uh, so these are not completely blank when it comes to Islam, you know. Uh, there are ex-Muslims from, let's say, the European background. There are ex-Muslims from the African background. There are ex-Muslims. Uh, sorry, not ex-Muslims, new Muslims. Sorry, guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm losing. All. So there are new Muslims from all sorts of backgrounds. Okay, they, they, they could they could be European, they could be Latin American, they could be African. These new Muslims have little knowledge of Islam, but with the ex-Ahmadis, new Muslims, they have some knowledge of Islam. You guys need to get together, and you know, you as as everyone has noticed, Mashallah, Tabarakallah, you are highly educated. Okay, um, our brother, Dr. Izhar, mashallah, tabarakallah, he's, he's an accomplished academic. He's, 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 like, he's, like a, he's like an authority in his field. He has published peer-reviewed journals, right? Mashallah. Okay, and you, mashallah, um, uh, I forgot your name, man. How can I forget your name? Bashir, Bashir. Brother Bashir, brother Bashir, our special Bashir. Okay, brother Bashir, you, you mashallah, you have studied aeronautical sciences. You have worked in the, 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 the Air Force industry. Okay, you are highly educated. People like you can really inspire uh, those Ahmadis who are still on the edge, who are still thinking about it. They are convinced that this is a cult. They are convinced that this is not the truth. They are convinced that this is a joke. Okay, they are convinced that this is not a real caliphate or real khilafa. Okay, it's just... Uh, uh, it's not rocket science it, to live, yeah, Bashir? Ex ex exactly, exactly. There are many people like you out there who are still finding reasons to just make that final decision. Okay, they just don't find the courage and the confidence. People like yourselves, okay, can can do wonders. I I would strongly advise, wallahi, I would strongly advise for you guys to get together, okay, and do a global tour, do a world tour do lectures around universities, institutes, masajid, go to masajid and do a social media campaign as well. The guys, we are doing this world tour, okay? Uh, Ahmadis in all these different countries, please come and listen to us, listen to our stories. Yeah. And you know what? A lot more people will find the courage to come out. Wallahi, Inshallah. Inshallah. And you guys, you guys, perhaps you don't realize the potential you possess. I don't yeah. know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying this. I don't know. Yeah, we we, we maybe, will we will ask a bit further yes. more, inshallah. I want to yeah. go back to uh, Dr. Pius Spirit because it's quite late in Pakistan. Um, to inshallah, give her some concluding um, statements. You know, some words of encouragement. You know, those who are on the verge of leaving Islam. I mean, would you mind sharing some of your thoughts um, uh, before we let you go, inshallah? Because it's quite late for you. Yeah. What advice you have for them, basically? Uh, well, brother, I have the same advice, the same uh, comments that other members of the stream are giving, that all the sisters and brothers in the community must read the books of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, first of all. Because uh, by doing so, many of the wrong beliefs and uh, even the disrespectful language that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani has used in those books will be revealed to them. But one thing they must make sure while doing so is that they must not make any member of the community intervene into their research. 
because they would try to revert them back as the holy quran tells us about the disbelievers that they are never your friends and they will always wish and they will always try to revert you back so uh, first of all read out the books then please also go through the holy quran and the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and always make sure that when you go through the books and then you compare those books and the narratives with the holy quran and sunna then ensure that never accept anything that is against quran and hadith just make one thing in mind that the holy prophet hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has already conveyed us the teachings of the islam he has told us everything in totality and there is nothing left behind that is unrevealed or unexplained so we must not bother ourselves with the self proclaimed explanations and the interpretations of mirza ulama ahmed qadiani we must remember that we will be held responsible for our beliefs we will be held responsible for our own deeds on the day of uh, judgment and neither mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani nor his so called caliphs would come to rescue us and they would never uh, save our skins so we must believe in what the holy prophet has told us and we must believe in quran and sunna there have been many female members of the cult of the community that have been uh, pursuing with me uh, after the nidaul nasir scandal was revealed and they are against the jamaat they have turned hostile towards the caliph owing to the fact that he they believed a lot about jamaat they believed in the justice system of the caliph and they have just come to know about the reality of their so called chosen caliph and now they are trying to revert back they just need our support they just need our social moral support and uh, we are all with them and especially i can contact with the female members of the jamaat of the cult they can freely um, talk to me i have my own facebook page i have a youtube channel they can contact me uh, with the name toy spirit and i will inshallah be there for them to help a lot okay inshallah so <laughs> sister before you leave uh, just wanted to know what kind of doctor are you because you've got a doctor as a prefix uh this is what the kadiani cult is also trying to know okay. i have done <laughs> and they're you trying to, to, to look at <laughs> they're trying to locate me through the university okay so let's uh, leave it leave it out now i would i would leave okay. it out that's fine yeah let's leave okay, it out so uh, sister you're free to go i just wanted to post your facebook so if any sisters uh want to get in touch with uh, dr pai spirit inshallah this is her facebook Uh, it's called pious dot spirit dot five. All right, Jazakallah, Khair, sister. Inshallah, keep us all. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right. So we'll bring in uh, Tisha now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa barakatuh. Uh, Jazakallah, Khair, and first of all to Adnan and the brothers here, all of you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you're doing good work. and and very necessary work actually i'd say so i'm i'll keep it brief i want to just you know there's there's a number of comments that were made by dr azar that i think are very relevant um and i want to give him you know hats off a salute uh for the fact that at, at his age i'm not calling you old uncle but you're older than i am and uh, to make that move is uh, is pretty remarkable and mm-hmm. and you've done it in a way that's uh, it's it's come from a deep level of intelligence and wisdom so uh, mubarak to you uh for saving your akhirah you know m- m- so, most m- most importantly from allah okay this call is made by allah allah is the one who opens the gates of guidance wallahi people can live and die in this cult without realizing so i ask every single ahmadi brother and sister watching please beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely beg him go on the musalla and clear your mind and say oh allah please guide us please guide us if this is truly a cult please free us okay ask allah sincerely and then seek guidance don't just hang in there 
Don't just accept everything you are told in there. Go and look for guidance. Start reading. Just like Dr. Izhar, he, he had a journey. He actually started reading. He did, you know, he did serious research with, with a lot of attention and with, with, with a lot of dedication. Just like our brother Bashir there. You know, these guys, they realized certain things. Certain signs were given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't ignore them. They didn't say, oh, no, 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 no. You know what? I'll carry on. I'll just go on. I'll see what, how it, oh, my dad is there. My mom is there. My family is there. Come on, guys. This is not about that. This is about Allah and his message. This is about your akhirah. This is about your, your end. This is about the eternal life. Okay. So, you know, sorry, bro. I just got a bit pa passionate. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's yeah, hear yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's fine. I'll give a little bit of the background, just like the others have done. Uh, our brother there in the Bay Area. I'm actually in uh, the southern states of America. I don't have a very southern state accent. Clearly, I grew up in London, uh, born and raised as an Ahmadi. I don't think you probably ever had anyone on the call. Maybe uh, I haven't listened to all of them, but from the family of the, the leadership, i.e. the Khulafa, so to speak, uh, in inverted commas. Uh, uncle Izar, uh, Mirza Tahir Ahmed is my dad's uncle. Mirza Masroor is my dad's cousin. His wife is my dad's wow. first cousin. Uh, very, royal very family. close to... Yeah, the so-called royal family. I, I, I've seen it from the inside in a, in a way that very few have. I'll give you a background on that very quickly. Uh, Dr. Abdul Sattar Shah, who uh, Uncle Izhar uh, might know, was uh, my great-great-grandfather. He came from a family of uh, Ahl al-Bayt. I, I don't want to say that in, a, in this kind of setting, but I think it's worth saying it because Mirza Ghulam Ahmed tried to legitimize a lot of his rule by marrying off his uh, family into the Sayyid family. And so that, that way, in some ways, it legitimizes who they are. And so, unfortunately, our families were intertwined. A number of them are also Sunni still. If you go to Qala Sayyidah outside of Rawalpindi, you'll see who they are. And their mm. lineage goes back to Imam Hussein. Uh, yeah. And so, and, and that's been traced. But in any case, uh, Dr. Abu Sattar made a huge blunder, as you know. And a number of his children ended up becoming Qadianis. Uh, the Waqfinaw scheme, in which Dr. Izar was speaking about earlier, these are schemes that were set up over there. I believe this one was by Mirza Tahir Ahmed that they take a number of the, ch the, the young kids and they basically say, these are our children. And then we're going to, you know, indoctrinate them into the, uh, the missionary, uh, you know, the Jamia Ahmadiyas that they have around the world. I was fundamentally the beginning of that movement. And there is a picture of this. I can show you the proof in which Mirza Tahir Ahmed is holding me up as a kid saying, this is, the, uh, this is where we begin the scheme from, right? And uh, I've seen this kid before he was born, so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, to all the, to all the Ahmadis who are listening, you know, I, in some ways I'm a proof as to why, you know, that movement probably needs to be looked into in a deeper way. Because if inshallah, anyone you, had any you, you reason carry on to remain... Speaking, but I'm going to get bring another uh, guest in, inshallah. Carry on speaking. Yeah, for, yeah. so so if there's any reason for, for, for me to remain, I probably would have got a lot of kudos uh, had I have stayed in. I, I actually went to the Jamia Ahmadiyya Canada for a number of years. Uh, two and a half years because I was, you know, fully indoctrinated like everyone else. And if it wasn't for my good friend who's also on the line, he'll probably join shortly uh, and others, I would have remained in that movement. I think to Dr. Izhar's point, it requires you to come out of uh, your bubble. And so while I was in Canada, I went to a number of conferences. You might know Adnan and others here, the RAS being one of them. Uh, we came across a number of shiul from all strands, right? Not just one, one strand, but all strands. Uh, you know, the Yasir Qadis, the Hamza Yusuf, the Imam Zaids, you name it. Uh, and it was extremely eye-opening for me to be told things there at the age of 17, 18 that the Ahmadi community will, will never tell you because they don't have the knowledge. That's fundamentally what, what's happening here, right? It's a movement that will pull the wool over your eyes. And so all of that said, I came after two and a half years with immense disillusionment. But to Adnan's point, I used that time on the side while they were trying to indoctrinate me to understand Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah from its core. Right? And, and that's not just me picking up a translation, but it's trying to read around the whole thing from Islam, Iman, Ihsan, the Hadith of Jibra'il, how it all makes sense. Right? Let's, let's go back to those sources. And so when I came back, I met Mirza Masroor uh, earlier on in his tenure. And I basically met him in his room and, and he uh, turned his back on me and he sort of just said, yeah, get out of the room. And that was the end of it. That was the end of my, <laughs> my stay. This is the first time I'd say publicly where I've, you know, 20 years down the line now, whatever it is. Uh, where I'm saying openly that I have nothing to do with that movement. And uh, Alhamdulillah, my brother and sister are no longer there. A number of my cousins uh, have left, uh, become full Sunnis, Alhamdulillah. And I'd also encourage all of my family who have the opportunity to listen to this, including my mother and uh, her brother and others. You know, give, give it, look what Uncle Izhar has done. He has more knowledge than I have about the text. 
uh, you know, look at what the brothers are saying, overcome your biasness about Mullahism and so on and so forth, and, and give Ahl Sunnah a real try. Come, I, the one fair I'll say, and I'll conclude on this, is that there is a fear that you'll lose your familial connections, your cultural connections, your sohbah, so to speak, your companionship, if you leave the movement. It's a real fear, I understand it, because you're in a cult. But give it a try. The 1.1 billion Muslims, they won't ostracize you. Go, I've traveled all over the world. I, I spent time in Syria, in Jordan, Egypt, you name it, Turkey, wherever. And you go into the masajid, open your heart up, and you'll see the beauty of Islam from its essence. Absolutely. And maybe that will be the opening for you to leave that, that cult. Because it is a cult. Take it from me. I've seen it from the inside. I've, I've had dinners with these people inside and how they look down upon uh, the, the average uh, folks, right? the proletariat, so to speak. So uh, that's my that's my concluding words. Any Wallahi. questions? Fire away. Uh, uh, absolutely. Before, before questions, I would like to before questions, I would like to congratulate you and thank you for finding the the time and the courage to come and speak with us and to speak to the larger Ahmadi community because this 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 show this show goes out to them. This is for them. Okay, uh, you have found the way, but there are many out there who are still stuck. And wallahi, the reason why these stories are absolute gold is because they are coming from different people. Dr. Izhar in, in the UK, we have uh, Bashir in the US, we have you, subhanAllah, who, who, who's been to London and you, you, you're from the US. And, and there are many, many more people out there who are watching and they're still silent about it. Okay. Yeah, this fear of leaving the family and losing the family is a real fear, no doubt, okay? But I want to assure every single thinking Ahmadi out there who is thinking of leaving, please don't have these fears. Firstly, for the sake of Allah, Allah is worth it. Allah is more important than any family. Allah is more important than parents, than children, and all of mankind put together. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه you will not truly believe until I, Muhammad, وسلم, become more beloved to you than your parents, your children, and all of mankind put together. Do it for the love of Allah. Do it for the love of Rasulullah, the true prophet, the real prophet of Allah. Okay, Do it for them. Okay, Don't do it for your family. But if the family issue is a real fear, trust me, you will not lose your family. Your family will look at your example. They will look at your, your, your courage and they will think about it. They, will, they may join you. They may join you. Okay. And also, you are joining a family of 2 billion people. Okay. You can walk into any much. In fact, you become a celebrity overnight. You know why? Because you have found the courage to take the step. You're a new Muslim now. And within the Muslim community, you know, Believe me, when people find out that you came from the Ahmadi background and you took the bold step, you took the courageous step to, to join the family of Islam, Wallahi, people love you. People, pe people will appreciate you. They will cherish you. They will celebrate you. You will become a celebrity. So you're not losing. You're not losing. You're, this is a win-win situation. So, so my advice to every single Ahmadi brother and sister out there who's still thinking about it, please don't hesitate to take the step. Okay, it's worth it. Allah is worth it. Islam is worth it. Okay, not over this man. Not over this man called Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. Don't destroy your akhirah over this man or over, over this jamaat, this little kind of cult. You know, I don't like to use this word, but that's what it is, right? And, and you know what? Mm. Uh, you, people don't realize when they live in a bubble, when they live in a cocoon, they don't realize what's the, how beautiful the world outside is. Please come out of this cult. Meet the Muslim Ummah. Go and travel and you will see how beautiful this Ummah is. The Ummah you, um you have left behind. The Ummah you have ostracized from yourselves. Okay, The Ummah you have excommunicated. This Ummah is longing for you. This Ummah is waiting for you with open arms. This is why we're doing these streams. Don't hesitate. Don't have fears. Okay, Give Allah a chance. Trust in Allah's bounties. Trust in Allah's blessings and you will see them come your way, inshallah. May Allah guide you and give you the courage. Amen. Barakallah yeah. fi. Um, with this, I'm going to um, bring in Sham, Brother Shamsuddin, inshallah. Um, Salaamu alaikum to you. Uh, you're muted, Shamsuddin. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
تمام دوستوں کو میری طرف سے السلام علیکم و موجود ہوں اور میرا بچپن تقریباً آپ کہہ لیں پینتیس سے چالیس سال چناب نگر ربوا جو یعنی جماعت کا مرکز ہے الدین <laughs> And he is an ex-Ahmadi new Muslim. And he said 33 years of his life he spent in uh, this, um, this religion. And uh, he is from Chanab Nagar, which is, uh, I'm assuming, it's a neighborhood in Rabwa. Okay? And that's where he belongs. That's where he comes from. And, and, and really quick, let me add to that. Uh, uh, Chanab Nagar is what they... Ch- the, the government of Pakistan changed the name from Rabwa to Chanab Nagar because it's oh, okay. disrespectful. It's almost okay. like it's disrespectful. And, and bro- Brother Shamsuddin is the Razai Batija of the current Khalifa, which we all know what that means, right? I hope. Okay, so he's a foster nephew of the current Ahmadi Khalifa. So the brother who is speaking right now from Lahore, Shamsuddin, Brother Shamsuddin, also has some connections to the royal family. Okay, so he is a foster nephew of the current Ahmadi Khalifa in London. Please, uh, Shamsuddin, you can talk about it, inshallah. اچھا جی بہت شکریہ جی میں اصل میں ایک مسلمان کو قادیانی کرنے کے لیے کوشش کر رہا تھا اور مجھے اس بات کا یقین تھا کہ یہ بندہ جو ہے بہت جلد احمدیہ کمیونٹی میں آ جائے گا جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں کہ ہر شخص جو قادیانی ہے اس نے تقریباً اپنے دل میں عزم کیا ہوا ہے کہ میں نے اپنی لائف میں کسی نہ کسی ایک مسلمان کو ضرور قادیانی کرنا ہے تو یہی تعلیم مجھے بھی ملی اور میں گھر سے نکلا ایک شخص سے گفتگو ہوئی تو اس نے مجھے بخاری شریف لا کے دی پڑھنے کے لیے آج بھی مجھے یاد ہے کہ بخاری شریف تھا اور اس جو حدیث کا نمبر تھا وہ تھا ٹریپل سکس جب جب میں نے وہ حدیث پڑھنی شروع کی تو حضرت امام الانبیاء حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم فرماتے ہیں قسم ہے اس آواز آ رہی ہے جی آواز آ رہی ہے آپ فرمائیے اچھا بیچ میں آپ نے تھوڑا رکنا ہے بیچ میں تھوڑا سا رکنا ہے آپ نے تاکہ ہم آپ کی آپ کی ٹرانسلیشن کر دیں آپ کا ترجمہ جو ہے نا آپ کے الفاظ کا ترجمہ کر دیں سو آئی آس دا برادر ٹو اسپیک ود ان ٹریول سو دیٹ وی کین ڈو دا ٹرانسلیشن ایز ویل ان شاء اللہ سو سو برادر جو میں نے جی برادر شمس الدین سے دیٹ that he was a missionary for the Jamaat and every single uh, Ahmadi uh, youngster is taught to bring uh, persons to Ahmadiyya by giving them, uh, you know, a- an invitation to Ahmadiyya. And this is what he was doing. He was trying to convince a Muslim to join the Ahmadi Jamaat. And while he was doing that, hoping that this person will soon become Ahmadi, this person brought Sahih al-Bukhari to him and gave him this to read and when he came to read this hadith number triple six is it chase with chasset up getting hadith ka number joe six 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 g g us kitab g acha for my name j g j m n a yeh di se mubarakah khuli yor menes ko padna shuru kiya bukhari shrif ko to mujhe bohat maza aya allah ke fadal se to is me mamul ambiya hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قسم ہے اس ذات کی جس کے ہاتھ میں محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کی جان ہے کہ ضرور بل ضرور تم میں عیسیٰ ابن مریم نازل ہوں گے چونکہ حدیث آگے لمبی ہے پھر وہ خنزیر کو قتل کریں گے سلیب کو توڑ دیں گے جزیہ معکوف کریں گے تو جب میں نے یہ حدیث پڑھی تو میں پریشان ہو گیا 
क्योंकि उस वक्त मेरा तलक यानी कम्युनिटी के साथ था तो मैं इसलिए परेशान हुआ कि उस वक्त मेरा ये कीदा था कि ईसा अलैहिस्सलाम जो है वो तो फोत हो चुके हैं और मिर्जा गुलाम कादियानी ने अपनी किताब रूहानी साइन जिल नंबर तीन पेज नंबर फाइव वन थ्री पर यही बात कसम उठा कर लिखी कि कसम मिर्जा कादियानी की कसम है कि हक की कसम ईसा इब्ने मरियम रसूल अल्लाह फोत हो गए तो मैंने सोचा कि याला जी माजरा है जिनके लिए पूरी कायनात बनाई गई जिनको इमामुल अम्बिया बनाया गया जिनको खातमुल अम्बिया बनाया गया वो कसम खाकर कहते हैं कि ईसा इब्ने मरियम आएंगे मरियम के बेटे आएंगे और मिर्जा गुलाम का दिया जिसको हमने माना है वो कसम खाकर कहता है कि नहीं ईसा इब्ने मरियम नहीं आएंगे बल्कि वो फोत हो चुके हैं और उनकी जगह पर मैं आया हूँ इससे अच्छा, फिर आगे मैं बयान करता हूँ आप बता दीजिए जी मैं बता इम्तियाज भाई आपने तर्जुमा करना है या मैं करूँ नहीं सर आप करें आप करें ओके सो शमसुद्दीन ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन इज सेइंग दैट व्हेन ही रेड सही अल बुखारी ही फाउंड इट टू बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड ही वाज एंजॉयिंग रीडिंग सही अल बुखारी एंड व्हेन ही केम अक्रॉस दिस हदीस विद द प्रोफेट सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम टुक एन ओथ बाय अल्लाह ही सेड बाय अल्लाह ईसा इब्न मरियम विल डिसेंड एंड ही विल किल द खिंजीर ही विल किल द स्वाइन एंड ही विल ब्रेक द क्रॉस and the hadith hadith is long hadith is very long so brother shamsuddin being an ahmadi at the time reading sahih al bukhari this hadith blew him away he basically realized that this is imam al anbiya sayyidur rusul sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is taking an oath by allah that isa ibn maryam will descend to do these things and then he said i had read in the books of mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani in rohani khazain volume 3 page 517 if i'm not mistaken uh, that he wrote by allah isa volume volume 3 page 517 yes rohani khazain volume 3 page 513 mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani writes that by allah taking an oath in the name of allah that isa ibn maryam has died so there was a clear contradiction between the words of muhammad rasulullah sayyidul anbiya and the words of mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani here the prophet muhammad is saying by allah isa ibn maryam will descend from the heavens to do these things while mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani is saying by allah he is dead he has died so this kind of uh you know uh, made made him kind of question uh, as to what's going on shamsuddin bhai aap jari rakhiye bahut shukriya main pareshan thi hua ki ye main aa rahi hai wo kasam hum utha kar rahe hain ki isa maryam ke bete aayenge aur jisko humne nabi mana hai jisko humne rasool mana hai yani mirza ko laga diya yani ye kehta hai nahi हमारा तो ये है मगर इमाम ये फरमा रहे हैं तो हम कहीं गलती पर तो नहीं जो दीन हमारे का चला आ रहा है हम उसी पे चल रहे हैं हमें तहकीक करने से मना किया जाता है हमें दूसरी कुतब पढ़ने से मना किया जाता है और हमारे जेन में बच्चों छोटे छोटे जेनों में डाला गया था मौलवी जो भी बात कहे वो बस झूठ है आपने मौलवी की बात पे एतबार नहीं करना तो यहां से फिर मैंने और मेरी मिसिज ने इस तहकीक का आगाज किया और अलहमदुल्ला फिर मैंने आप इसको बयान कीजिए फिर मैं आगे बताता हूँ So after reading this, uh, our brother realized that uh, Sayyid al-Rusul, I mean, Imam al-Anbiya, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, had written this, and he was talking specifically about Isa ibn Maryam. Isa, the son of Mary, uh, will come back and do these things. So he spoke to his wife, Brother Shamsuddin. He went to his wife, uh, and he spoke to her, and he said to her, uh, 
you know what? It may be possible that we are mistaken. We are following uh, the wrong religion. So why don't we reconsider it? Aage chaliya, inshallah. फिर हमने क्या किया कि मैंने मेरे पास एक मदूदी साहब की छह जिल्दों के अंदर तहफीमुल कुरान नामी किताब आई उसमें उन्होंने सूरल अलहजाब के जमीमे में वो सारी हदीसें इकट्ठी करके लाए तो मैंने जब उसको पढ़ना शुरू किया तो मैंने कुरान मजीद फुरकान हमीद के अंदर जो ईसा इस्लाम के नाम बताए गए जिनमें ईसा इबन मरियम मसीह इबन मरियम कहीं खाली इबन मरियम कहा गया कहीं कलमतुल्ला कहा गया कहीं रूला कहा गया ये पांच नाम जो मैंने देखे तो मैंने हदीसों के अंदर इन्हीं पांच नामों के साथ ईसा इस्लाम के नजूल की खबरें सुनी अल्लाह अकबर सो सो ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन इज सेइंग दैट ही एक्वायर्ड अ कॉपी ऑफ तफहीमुल कुरान द तफसीर तफसीर ऑफ अल्लामा मौदूदी अबुल आला मौदूदी रहमुल्लाह who was a scholar uh, who had written a tafsir of the quran a commentary on the quran in the urdu language which is called tafhim al quran so when it came to these verses in surah al ahzab he looked at the tafsir of those verses and uh, molana muduri had brought all those relevant uh, reports from the prophet a hadith that mentioned ibn maryam isa ibn maryam ruhullah with different names the names allah has given to isa ibn maryam in the quran because allah has given um, many many names to isa alayhi salam in the quran for example al masih uh, isa ibn maryam ibn maryam and uh, the list goes on so he realized that allah allah's messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is referring to isa alayhi salam with all these different titles and names and the reports uh, tell uh, the story of him coming back he is coming back in person isa alay salam himself is coming back so this is what he read and realized ji jari rakhiye to alhamdulillah phir humne is pe mazid tehqeeq ki magar chuke mere father jo the wo army mein the aur bahut sakht qisam ke insaan the इन्होंने मिर्जा मसरूर साहब की वालदा बीबी नासरा का दूध पिया हुआ है मेरे वाले साहब ने तो डर था डर था कि मैं घर में ये बात करूंगा तो एक नया जो है वो एटमोसफेयर बन जाएगा झगड़े शुरू हो जाएंगे सियासी तौर पे मुझे ए, वो क्या कहते बाइक आउट किया जाएगा सारा कुछ किया जाएगा तो इस दौरान कम अज कम आप यूं समझ लीजिए कि तीन चार साल का अरसा गुजर गया मैंने कादियानियत को अपने दिल में छोड़ दिया मगर ओके अच्छा तो द ब्रदर इज सेइंग ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन इज सेइंग दैट हिज फादर वाज इन द मिलिट्री एंड ही वाज अ वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट मैन ही डिडंट वांट टू मेंशन दिस टू हिज फादर व्हेन ही स्टार्टेड टू डू मोर रिसर्च एंड ही रियलाइज्ड इन हिज हार्ट दैट दिस इज जस्ट नॉट द ट्रूथ qadianism or ahmadi religion is not true okay but he didn't want to bring it out because his father had a very close relationship with mirza masrur because he he was breastfed by his mother mirza masrur who is the current khalifa of the ahmadi jamaat his mother had breastfed the father of brother shamsuddin who is speaking right now so he didn't want to mention this in the family because it could cause major problems जी आप जारी रखिए बात को मगर मैं इनके पीछे मैंने मैंने छोड़ दी इनको जो मैं चंदा देता था वो चंदा दे रहा मैंने छोड़ दिया फिर मैंने ऐसा ऐसा अपने बड़े भाई जिसका नाम बशीरुद्दीन महमूद है और मेरे वाले साहब ने उसका नाम दूसरे कैलिफ जो हैं बशीरुद्दीन महमूद उनके नाम पे रखा उसको मैंने बताना शुरू किया कि जमात गलत है ये है वो है वो फौरी तौर पर जाके अम्मी को बताता था अम्मी मुझे डांटती थी मगर ये वक्त चलता गया और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह 26 फरवरी 2013 हजार तेरह अल्लाह के फजल से मैंने सबसे बात करने के बाद मैंने अपने घर वालों से पूछा मैंने कहा जी आपने इतनी अरसा अरसा मेरे साथ रिसर्च की है तो क्या अगर मैं ऐलान करूं कि मैं कादियानी जमात छोड़ रहा हूं तो आपकी क्या राय है उन्होंने कहा बिल्कुल हमने देख लिया किताबों में पढ़ लिया इतनी देर रिसर्च कर ली कि कादियानियत एक झूठ का पलंदा है तो लिहाजा आप ऐलान करें हम आपके साथ खड़े हैं 
अलहमदिल्ला फिर मैंने 26 फरवरी 2013 को लाहौर में मौलाना मंजूर अहमद जोटी रहमुल्ला की याद में फतेह मुबाल कॉन्फ्रेंस थी उसमें मैंने अपना ऐलान किया कि आज के बाद मेरा कादियानी जमात के साथ कोई तल्लक नहीं है और मैंने मिर्जा गुलाम अहमद कादियानी की गुलामी को छोड़कर अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह सुम्मा अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह मैंने रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वाले वसल्लम की गुलामी अपना ली है मगर यहां मैं एक बात करता चलूं बहुत जरूरी है आप आप अभी मुझे तर्जुमा कर लेने दीजिए ताकि आगे आपकी बात सो ब्रदर ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन इज अबाउट टू मेंशन समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट बिफोर ही डज दैट आई वांट टू ट्रांसलेट हिज वर्ड्स सो बेसिकली ही सेड दैट यू नो ही हैड रियलाइज्ड एंड ही मेंशन दिस टू हिज ब्रदर हुज नेम इज बशीरुद्दीन महमूद ही वाज नेम्ड आफ्टर द द सेकंड कैलिफ ऑफ द अहमदी जमात बशीरुद्दीन महमूद बाय हिज फादर सो ही ही वुड टेल हिम दैट दिस जमात इज जस्ट सिंपली नॉट ट्रू यू नो दे आर नॉट अपॉन द ट्रूथ सो ही वुड गो एंड टेल हिज मदर दैट दिस इज व्हाट शमसुद्दीन इज सेइंग एंड शी वुड टेल हिम ऑफ बट हैविंग डिस्कस्ड विद हिज फैमिली and having convinced them on the 26th of february 2013 he uh, you know having taken the advice of his family uh, his family basically backed him they said okay you know what we have all done research we have all realized that this is a lie go ahead announce it that you are no longer part of this qadiani ahmadi jamaat and we are with you so on the 26th of february 2013 our beloved brother shamsuddin made this announcement in lahore in memory of molana manzoor chinioti who was basically an activist uh, against the the ahmadi uh, thought okay who, who had written many books on uh, the ahmadi religion refuting the religion and its claims so in his memory he announced his uh, distance or his basically leaving of the the qadiani jamaat or ahmadi jamaat and he became a muslim publicly declaring himself to be uh, orthodox muslim alhamdulillah in a public ceremony and uh, he is about to say something very important now and he wants to say it aap koi aham baat karna chahte the ji imtiaz bhai aap kuch kehna cha rahe hain anand bhai before shashamus bhai inshallah mentions something important i just want to uh, request shamus bhai shamus bhai if you can just inshallah wrap it up maybe in the next two minutes so because we need to move on to the next part of the stream as well so inshallah shamas bhai we we'll give you inshallah last 2 minutes to inshallah wrap up what you want to say jazakallah khair brother acha ji ji shamsu ji shamsuddin bhai aap jari rakhiye apni baat ko aur wo imtiyaz bhai keh rahe hain ke 2 3 minute mein isko summarize kar dein taki agla segment hamara wo shuru ho jaye inshallah bahut shukriya ji main koshish karta hu ji acha ji jo main aham baat karna ye cha raha tha ke jab main qadiyani tha और चनाब नगर रवा में मैं पढ़ता था वही मैंने अपनी तलीम मुकम्मल की तो मेरी शुरू से ही आदत थी मैं बहुत दूर पाक पढ़ता था मुझे आज भी याद है कि शायद मेरी शाह की नमाज जो थी वो तकरीबन डेढ़ से पौने दो घंटे की होती थी क्योंकि जब भी मैं सजदे में जाता था मैं दरुदे पाक पढ़ने शुरू कर देता था और वही दरुदे पाक नमाज वाली और पूरी पढ़ता था मैं और वालदा मेरी हैरान परेशान थी वो जो पूछती थी बेटा खैर है इतने लंबे लंबे सजदे करते हो क्या मानते हो अल्लाह से तो मुझे नहीं पता था कि अल्लाह मुझे क्या देना चाहता मैं उस वक्त भी दूधे पाक पढ़ता रहा और मैं आज बासूब जराये से आपके चैनल पे पूरी दुनिया को लाइव ही कहना चाहूँ कि अल्लाह ने इस दरुदे पाक में इतनी ताकत रखी है इतनी ताकत रखी है कि ये दरुदे पाक बेशक में कुफर में रह मगर अल्लाह ने मुझे बरकत से उस कुफर से निकाल कर इस्लाम में ला के खड़ा कर दिया और खाली इस्लाम में नहीं लेके आया अल्लाह ताला मुझे अल्लाह अल्लाह ताला ने मुझसे दीन के काम के लिए भी चुना और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह आज मैं आपके सामने बैठा हूं मैंने अपनी पूरी लाइफ खत्म नबूत के लिए वकफ की है और आप लोगों की दुआओं से अल्लाह के फजल से इस वक्त तक 500 के करीब कादियानी जो है जिनसे मैंने लाइव गुफ्तु की और कुछ पे मैंने व्हाट्सएप के जरिए टेलीफोनिक गुफ्तु की और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह ये लोग मुसलमान हो चुके हैं और इन शह से यही दुआ है कि अल्लाह 
आगे भी हमसे ऐसा काम लेता रहे अल्लाह अकबर अल्लाह अकबर माय बिलवेड ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन माशाल्लाह माशाल्लाह वेरी अकबर ही हैज मेंशन समथिंग वेरी पावरफुल ही सेड यू नो इवन ड्यूरिंग हिज डेज ऑफ अहमदिया व्हेन ही वाज एन अहमदी और कादियानी ही यूज्ड टू रीड दुरूद विद अबंडेंस यू नो ही ही यूज्ड टू रीड दुरूद आफ्टर इशा सलाह and he used to do long sujood you know qadianis pray just like the muslims pray right their salah is exactly the same right okay when you look at it it looks the same okay so he said when he would be in sajda he would be reading durood non stop and he would be doing it for sometimes 2 to 3 hours and his mother asked him once that what is it you're asking for you know you do you do such long prostrations such long sajdas what are you asking allah for and he said you know what i had no idea that my durood will lead me to islam that even though i believed in kufr at the time i was a disbeliever okay because because of believing in mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani as a prophet i was still reading my salah and reading durood it was the blessing of this durood it was the baraka of this durood that brought me to islam and allah opened my heart to this guidance okay and since then allah has blessed our brother shamsuddin with the ability of dawa that he has brought almost 500 qadianis to islam through online chats online online live uh, conversations and whatsapp conversations and talks so he has been talking to a lot of qadianis and ahmadis and he has been inviting them to islam and to date about 500 people have accepted islam with him and this is the baraka of durood allahu akbar may allah accept from our beloved and brother shamsuddin anan anan bhai shamsud bhai has his own a uh, platform as well if we can inshallah ask him to promote his platform inshallah so shamsuddin sahab aap apna jo platform hai aapka jo website hai ya koi aapka channel hai jo jo bhi aapka nizam hai jo system hai platform hai uske bare mein bataiye inshallah हमारा चैनल है उस पर हम इसी तरह आके सोलो जो शमसुद्दीन आर बी शमसुद्दीन उसका लिंक मुझे प्राइवेट में भेज दे मैं उसका लिंक भेज दीजिएगा चैट में आप हाशिम भाई को तो हम इसको पोस्ट कर देंगे इनशाला एंड उर्दू स्पीकिंग अहमदीज उर्दू स्पीकिंग अहमदीज प्लीज गेट इन टच विद ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन ही स्पीक्स उर्दू फ्लुएंटली एंड यू नो वॉट ही इज फ्रॉम फ्रॉम विद इन ही इज फ्रॉम 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 द खल्ट इट सेल्फ ही केम फ्रॉम देयर he knows what we cannot know myself hashim imtiaz bhai we cannot know dr izhar shamsuddin uh, bashir brother bashir our sister who came earlier you know what these guys they are from there they have seen it they can explain things to you that we cannot so urdu speaking people please get in touch with Sham- brother shamsuddin via his platform and talk to him if you have questions talk to him okay you may not want to talk to us but at least talk to one of your own who was there once upon a time right so we will post the link uh it is shamsuddin uh rb uh, i think is there we can see it right now yes okay yeah, so yeah. yeah so is platform se inshallah aap rabta kijiye shamsuddin bhai ke sath aur inse inke tajrubat ke bare mein inki zindagi ka jo safar hai uske bare mein puche taaki aapko bhi inspiration mile inshallah anan bhai i just want inshallah one minute i want to take one minute just to wrap up uh, from my side this uh, part inshallah you can maybe wrap up to that as well so inshallah brother very quickly i just have a uh, three points from my side with regard to this, this first part of the stream so point number 1 is as i mentioned this underground ahmadiyya community and they have left ahmadiyya cult but they have all of these concerns issues that's why they are still on the database of the jamaat now listen very carefully people have sent me statutory declarations okay they are part of our record so whatever i have mentioned the challenges the problem people have to face i have two statutory declarations from the people which are as you can say it's a legal document 
they have sent to us that we are not lying these are the realities if you have if you are going to leave the cult this is something very important second point is i already mentioned from my side as your brother as an advice that if you are on the cross road if you are at the verge of leaving the cult here is my final piece of advice please pay attention number 1 make a lot of dua to allah subhanahu wa taala as shams by mentioned he used to make long sujood long prostrations to make dua please this is the first step make sincere dua ask <coughs> allah to open up the ways for you and to give you the strength and courage to take the practical step to leave the cult and after that whatever step you take we will advise you take it wisely okay hikma is very important but last thing on this point is after this stream is finished open up the quran surah tauba ayah number 24 please give it a read in this surah allah subhanahu wa taala in surah if you can display on the screen please this uh, surah tauba ayah 24 please so if people can look that one because in this verse of surah tauba allah has mentioned that if any allah has counted all the things of this dunya our parents our kids our biz everything allah says if these things are more beloved to you than allah and his messenger and then from struggling in his path then wait for my decision so i am uh, uh, because in islam we have both things glad tidings and warnings in the initially i gave you there are glad tidings for you once you come to the islam but at the same time if we are not taking the having the courage to take the step then allah has warnings for us as well and i must be sincere in this conversation i should mention this as well surah tauba ayah number 24 please give it a read and then inshallah uh, as i mentioned already that this particular platform we have created which is called the dialogue with intiaz it is not for any debate anything no all the discussion back and forth with the murabbis will be on this channel dawa wise okay we're not going anywhere on their stream this particular platform the dialogue with imtiyaz is created for one purpose and the purpose is our ahmadiyya community they can send us their question which they which we need to address inshallah we'll make short videos to address their questions and their doubt which clerics are giving to them and last point i mentioned it already and brother imtiaz i I have yeah. linked your channel uh, in the description of this stream. So if anybody wants Just to like a look at you, like a look at you, please do subscribe to uh, Brother Imtiaz's channel, uh, especially like those people who are who want to know about Ahmadiyat. And uh, inshallah, he'll be his videos will be quite beneficial to you. Inshallah. Last point, brother and sisters, because one brother has sent me a private message from the ex Ahmad uh, from the former Ahmadiyya. He said that where I clarified that point in the last stream about when I said that I know the books of Mirza Sahib. So please note the at the timestamps in stream number four, three hour, fifty five minutes and twenty five seconds. For one minute, I clarified that point that when I made that statement that I know the books of Mirza Sahib better than anybody else. Ah, uh, please watch this one minute. It will give you the idea. that how the ahmadiyya clerics are so frustrated and how now they are using all of these small things to distract people so my advice is don't be distracted with the propaganda stay focused may allah bless you may allah reward all of you amen so i just wanted to bring uh, saab in next who will be the last uh, former ahmadi guest um uh, inshallah i mean if you have time at the end as we invite the muslims at the end i mean inshallah you guys can come in there but we want to go uh, we want to go with the discussion with the ahmadis next after saab so saab please uh, go ahead tell us uh, about yourself where you're from did brother shamsuddin wanted to say something beforehand bismillah just one second sir i can't hear you shamsuddin Anand, I want to tell him to. Ji, Shamsuddin, boy, you talk. Ji, 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 Farmaiye. Should I speak or not? Sab, just not one moment, please. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Please, uh, let Brother Shamsuddin. Main maazrat chahta hoon. Ji. Main aapki channel ke liye bahut bada channel lagta hai. Isko kaam dam rakhe aapko in time. We can't hear properly. 
वीडियो ऑफ कर अच्छा मैं ये कहना चाह रहा था कि इस वक्त जो मौजूदा जमात अहमदिया के लोग हैं मेरी उनसे ये रिक्वेस्ट है कि वो बिल्कुल इख, ये जो बिल्कुल आ रहे मैं ऐसे लोगों भी जानता हूं जिन्होंने खुद का दियानिया छोड़ी है मगर जब भी वो सामने आए हैं तो इन्होंने पीछे से उसका अखराज कर दिया बिल्कुल अखराज से ना डरे किसी किस्म को कोई मसला नहीं है मुझे मेरे वालिद साहब ने ऐसे कुछ कर करके धक्के दे के अपने खासी निकाला और यकीन कीजिए मैं चनाब नगर से मेरे बच्चे गाड़ी में बैठे हम रोते हुए निकले वहां से और इन्होंने कहा कि फुटपाथ पे आओ जमात ही तुम्हें आसरा देगी तो अल्लाह के फजल अल्लाह के फजलों का भी साथ आज मैं बिल्कुल ठीक हूं हमें खांसी भी आ जाए तो कादिया नहीं कहते देखा मैं कादिया मसीह की जमात छोड़ी है ना तो ये खांसी आई है बीमारियां सारियां तकलीफें जितनी भी हैं ये अल्लाह की तरफ से आती हैं अगर अगर इतना ही मसला होता तो मिर्जा कादिया नहीं खुद बीमार कभी ना होता जबकि उसकी बीमारियां आप सब जाते हैं मेरी मौजूदा जो अहमदिया कम्युनिटी है उसे बस ये रिक्वेस्ट है कि कादियानियत को पढ़ें और ये जो आप पे जिम्मा लगा दिया गया ना कि आपने मौलवी की किताब नहीं पढ़नी आपने मौलवी का चैनल नहीं देखना आपने मौलवी की बात पे एतबार नहीं करना तो खुदारा जब तक आप अपने इस कुएं से बाहर नहीं निकलेंगे आपको दुनिया नजर ही नहीं आएगी रिसर्च कीजिए उसके बाद फैसला कीजिए कि अहमदिया कम्युनिटी क्या कहती है और मुसलमान क्या कहते हैं इन शाह ये खराब सिर्फ इस दुनिया में थोड़ा सा आपको ड्रावा दिया गया ये आखरत में बिल्कुल इन आप देखिएगा कि आपको सुकून होगा बल्कि इस दुनिया में भी होगा तो तमाम अहमदी हजरात से मेरी यही रिक्वेस्ट है चूंकि मैं भी जनाब नगर रबा और रबुआ में रहा मेरे सारे रो दोस्त रिश्तेदार कई कादियानी हैं तो मैंने कहा मैं आखिरी पैगाम आपके यूट्यूब चैनल के जरिए तक पहुंचाऊँ बहुत शुक्रिया जी अल्लाह आपको खुश रखे शमसुद्दीन भाई अल्लाह आपके जो काम है उनको कबूल फरमाएं और आपके काम में बरकत पैदा फरमाएं आपको जन्नतफरदोस में जगाता फरमाएं आपको आपकी आल औलाद को आपके घर वालों को हिदायत पे कायम रखें और आपके जरिए आपके खानदान के लोगों को और उनके जो करीब के लोग हैं उनको भी हिदायत अता फरमाएं शमसुद्दीन ब्रदर शमसुद्दीन वज सेंग दैट ही वॉन्ट्स टू रीच आउट टू दादियानी अहमदी कम्यूनिटी एंड टेल दैम दैट डोंट है लिविंग जमात okay this is just a fake fear this is not a real fear uh, you know because once you trust in allah allah will take care of you he said his father kicked him out he pushed him out of his house okay from rabwa and he was completely thrown on the street and he said he was crying when he left uh, his uh, parental house with his children and uh, and and you know what his father told him you're going to be living on the road you you're going to be on the street and only the jamaat will take care of you but he said i'm perfectly fine now i'm doing well alhamdulillah and i'm i'm still continuing doing dawa and he's inviting every qadiani and ahmadi to go and read about qadianiyat go and read the books of mirza gulam ahmad qadiani do some research and speak to the sunnis speak to muslims okay and ask them questions and don't listen to your murabbis and your missionaries when they tell you that don't listen to the molvi don't listen to the molvi this they do to keep you blind and to keep you away from the truth okay so this propaganda you have to ignore it and do research don't just sit on um doubts you may have about the the falsehood of this particular cult or this organization called qadianiyat or ahmadiyya right so do some research and allah will guide you trust in allah and if you are convinced that you are uh, you know upon falsehood then leave this falsehood and come to the haq come to the truth and allah will take care of you and don't have these fears of being ostracized or being thrown out by the community okay because here we have an example from the us from the uk from pakistan and other places you know what we don't have time to put everyone on there are so many other ex ahmadis new muslims who want to join but we don't have the time to put, to put all of them on so we're going to have to move on shamsuddin allah aapko khush rakhe allah aapke kaam ko qubool kare aur allah aapke liye jannat ke darwaze khol de aur aapka rasta jannat ki taraf aasan kar de ameen may allah accept from you jazakallah khairan bahut shukriya aapne aaj hame join kiya hum hum delhi delhi door pe aapke mamnoon hai aur एम्तियाज भाई आपका भी शुक्रिया 
और स्पेशली इदरान भाई आपका भी शुक्रिया बस मैं अभी सोने के लिए चाहूँ अदरान भाई जब मेरे वाले साहब ने मुझे ऐसे पुश करके घर से निकाला ना तो एक अल्फाज आज तक मेरी ट्रेन के अंदर मौजूद हैं उनके उन्होंने मुझे कहा था कि तुम इतने बदकिस्मत शख्स हो इसको जरा एक्सप्लेन कर दीजिए ताकि लोगों को पता चल जाए उन्होंने कहा कि तुम इतने बदकिस्मत शख्स हो कि अल्लाह ने तुम्हारा तलक नबूत के खानदान से जोड़ा दूध के जरिए जो मैंने बीबी नासरा का दूध पिया मिर्जा मसरूर की वादा का कि अल्लाह ने हमारा तलक उस मुकदस खानदान से जोड़ दिया और तुम इतने बदकिस्मत हो कि उस खानदान को ठुकरा कर ठोकर मार के छोड़ के तुम मौलियों के पीछे जा रहे हो तो मैंने कहा था तुम्हें ये मौलवी करेंगे मैंने मैंने जिस हदीस के और जिस द्रूद पाक की बरकत से मैंने कादियानियत को छोड़ा है इन अल्लाह मुझे जलील नहीं करेगा अल्लाह इन आपको इसी दुनिया में दिखाएगा कि मेरे खानदान छुपने से आप भाई का अलग कितने लोगों मेरा भाई बनाएगा कितने लोगों को मुझसे दुआओं का सबब बनाएगा तो बहुत शुक्रिया आपका अल्लाह तमाम सबको कबूल फरमाए मेरे ये मेरे वालद के अल्फाज के जो नबूत के खानदान वाला इधर अच्छी तरह डिफाइन कर दीजिएगा Brother Shamsuddin, he just said that I want everyone to know this last thing: that when my father was pushing me out, literally pushing me out physically from his house, he said, "You are so unfortunate." He said to me, his father said to Shamsuddin, that you are so unfortunate that you are leaving the family of a nabi through foster relationship because his father was breastfed by. the mother of the current khalifa of the ahmadis so by that connection he was telling him that you are so unfortunate that for that for the molvis for the molvis you are leaving the family of the prophet you are leaving the family of the prophet referring to mirza gulam ahmad qadiani so brother shamsuddin told his father that inshallah in your life <coughs> allah will show you that allah will take care of me because i am not leaving ahmadiyya because of molvis i am leaving it because of the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the blessings of durud durud pak you know the blessings of durud sharif this is why allah is going to take care of me this was uh, indeed a very very powerful message and you know what brother shamsuddin story has really really inspired me and i'm sure there are people out there who can do the same wallahi follow these brother's of- examples अल्लाह ब्लेस यू शमसुद्दीन अल्लाह आपको खुश रखे मैंने आपकी बात का तर्जुमा कर दिया है और इन शकीन उम्मीद है कि आपसे मुलाकात भी होगी पाकिस्तान में जब लाहौर आएंगे तो आपसे मुलाकात करेंगे इन शह तब तक के लिए हमें दो में याद रखिएगा असल you know lady asia uh may allah have mercy on her if she also left you know the path that pharaoh and his false uh what about bath and religion he followed yeah okay right. let's bring uh, you the right. uh, I think why because he mentioned Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. I just yeah. want to share share that Urdu uh poetry it's okay. very beautiful it says the, the poet says that tum mein huron ka koi chahne wala hi nahi जलवाए तूर तो मौजूद है मूसा ही नहीं इनशाईन Uh, I'm going to keep it brief uh, if I can. Um my background is very similar to Mr. Shah's background. Uh, we both hail from very famous ancestors in uh, the annals of Ahmadiyya history. Um and you know when I was a teenager I was beginning to look deeply into the literature of the Ahmadis. but i think the decisive difference uh, in in my case was that um unlike other ahmadi families and i think what uh, 
the situation that uh, Muhammad Imtiaz has described of the difficulty and the persecution that happens, this is a real phenomenon. But in my case, my family was very open-minded. And this is also, the, for me, this is the what we call the Mawdah Shahid, the main point that I want to uh, make to um, Ahmadi listeners, is that we were allowed to spend time with normal Muslims. We were allowed to listen to what Sunni Muslim scholars had to say. We were allowed to go and listen to their lectures. This was a very exceptional case. This is not the norm. This is not was the norm. Was this in the UK? Where was this? This is in the UK. Okay. You know, what you have to understand um, that in the UK especially, but elsewhere, there is the Ahmadiyya, they operate a suffocating prosecutorial bureaucracy. I mean, it really is prosecution and persecution if you decide to move away from their mainstream. Okay, so it's a very, very difficult situation. Part of the problem also is that, and, and here I, I really need to emphasize this, because in all the amazing debates I've seen, this is something that I've not seen brought up. You know, for in Islam, the Sharia is the standard. The Sharia is the standard. Now, in the Sharia, if your relative, your son, your mother, your father, if they decide to leave, not just a sect, if they decide to leave the religion, you owe the same, under the Sharia, you owe the same level of love, obligation, and duty to them. This is, this is what Islamic law teaches us. Now, the, the Ahmadi belief and the official policy is that you cannot, if, if a member of your family decides to leave, uh, decides to marry somebody who's not an Ahmadi, you cannot speak to them, you can't attend their weddings. And what I'm trying to say here is that the fundamentals of the Ahmadiyya, not only do they fly in the face of Sunni mainstream doctrine of Khatmi Nabuat and, 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 and other doctrines, but they also fly in the face of what the Sharia makes obligatory upon us. I mean, where does it say in Islamic law that you have to uh, be, you know, completely ostracized from somebody, you know, separate yourself from your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, uh, on the basis of a, a marriage choice? Now, so what I advise uh, other Muslims, and, and one of the most problematic things when I was growing up was that among the missionaries and the general community, there was a deep level of hatred for Muslims. Okay, we were taught that, you know, these are nasty people, they're aggressive, um, they have very, very poor akhlaq, very poor character. Stay away from them, don't talk to them, don't become their friend. This kind of scaremongering was very, very prominent. Um, and so what I encourage any Ahmadi listeners to do is spend time with normal Muslims, learn from Muslim scholars. You don't have to agree with them in the beginning. See what's out there. You know, w when, we were, when we were young and we started reading the books of Imam Ghazali and Imam Nawawi and some of the other ulama, the Ahmadis were horrified. How can you be reading these books? They weren't Ahmadis. Of course they weren't Ahmadis. This is before the 19th, 19th century. But, but this kind of closing of the mind, right? This is what allows ignorance um, to, to persist. Okay. Um, the other point that I would like to say is, uh, I'd like to mention, is that I'm very, um, you know, we, there was a lot of indoctrination when we were young, okay? The missionaries, a lot of indoctrination. But I will say something. I will say something. What we are seeing now from the new generation of missionaries, this is astonishing. Because they are now making interpretations and distortions that even an earlier generation of missionaries never made. This is an important point here, okay? And, and here I would let them have their talks because they are now beginning to say things that if you look closely at the writings of Mirza Ghulam Sahab, they end up contradicting what he says. 
as well. So they are, because they haven't read the writings, Muhammad Imtiaz is correct. These are Arab um, uh, speakers who come, they are not scholars. Okay, they are people who are Arabs who joined um, uh, this movement and they are catapulted into positions uh, because, uh, because they know Arabic. They are not ulama. They do not know uh, tafsir. They do not know ilm al-hadith. They do not know uh, these, these sciences. Okay? Would, you so say they are that, uh, would you say money is a motivation for them? No, I, I don't think money is a motivation for them. I think to echo what other people have said, it's important for Sunnis to understand this. The Ahmadis are sincere people, sincere people, okay, but they have been indoctrinated. They are encouraged not to read. For example, for example, up and down the country in the United Kingdom, if you want to study tafsir, if you want to study hadith, if you want to study fiqh, you can do it within a few minutes. You can sit with somebody and they will read and help you understand a text. All the money that the Ahmadiyya community has, all the resources that they have, they will not have open sessions in which they actually read the books of Mirza Saab with you. Why don't they want? Why don't they want you to read their own literature? They want you to remain ignorant. Okay, and you have to. This this is my only point. And so, so uh, Mr. Hashim, what I would say is that I would not impute. Uh, these kind of motives of, of money or fame and this and that, because uh, uh, I don't think that. I think many of them are, most of them are very sincere, and you should befriend them, you should speak to them. I am really, I have so much respect for uh, all of you, but Muhammad Imtiaz in particular, who I've, I knew of some of you before, but but um, uh, Ustaz Muhammad Imtiaz, the way and the manner and the um, the kind of painstaking research with which you present and debate these ideas, this is unprecedented. This has not happened in the English language. It happened in Urdu, okay, where great ulama wrote in Urdu, but this has not happened in English. So, um, so, um, so back to the point I was making, this new generation, these arguments that they are making are astonishing and outlandish even within the Ahmadiyya community. I want to give you one example. Okay, um, There was a debate the other day on that, uh, on one of these streams where they were saying, well, there's, you know, there is no, there is no ijma. Ijma, you know, you have to get everyone to write something on a piece of paper. Okay. A few minutes later, they were telling us that there is an ijma among the Sahaba. Right. What is this? We are not your audience is not stupid, okay? These kind of distortions, and, and th this is uh, another Sabai, point. Sabai, Sabai, just inshallah, very quick, my, my 10 cent. Actually, yeah. we have evidence from the writings of Mirza Sahib, and that evidence is that if something is stated publicly and there is silent on that, it is called Ijma Sukuti, okay? And Mirza Sahib accept this Ijma. Inshallah, I'll bring the evidence. Yeah, ijma sukuti is a principle within the, the Hanafi the Hanafi usul as well, and so um, you know. That's and, and the other right? thing I want to say, can I say one more one more point, yeah, one sure, more yeah. example, one more example I want to give because this is important, and I I've had to do this with people with missionaries in particular. They have been telling lies against the awliya and the ulama saying, and they've produced pamphlets saying that this wali and this scholar um, said that new prophets can, or, or, or prophets of some kind can come. I have sat there, I have been through the sources in Arabic, in Urdu, in Farsi, and you read the entire page before and after, and you find out that this is a complete distortion and lie against the awliya and the ulama. Okay, and it's very interesting. The other day they were using the text of Ikmal al Kamal of Al Mizzi, one of the most famous hadith scholars. So, so Al Mizzi, well, firstly, is, is commentating on a hadith. Okay, but you can't use Mizzi when you feel like it and then kind of tell Mizzi to get lost when he tells you that uh, prophets can't come 
or that uh, Isa uh, uh, salam, is going to uh, uh, return. And so, I, you know, these distortions and this twisting of the material is going to continue. It's not going to disappear. And, and I will also say, you know, in a number of verses in the Quran, you know, it's very interesting to me that, that um, you know, when, you, when you're raised within the Ahmadiyya, you know, what, what are you really kind of left with? You're left with debate, disputation, ta'wilat, far-fetched interpretations, okay? No extensive study of ilm al-Qur'an, ilm al-Hadith, ilm al-Tafsir, ilm al-Fiqh, and Hadith, and so on and so forth, okay? Which means that you have built your religious community on such tangential uh, issues, okay? And you've made those tangential issues actually into into heretical points right and this is what the quran warns against when it says do not engross yourself in 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 dhan, you know this kind of speculation and interpretation because this is uh, a sign that there is some um a murad, there's like a disease in the heart right islam is very simple islam is very simple to believe, uh, to testify that there is no God but Allah, and to believe that um, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is the Prophet, and to believe that any, uh, the, the verse of the Qur'an and any mutawatir hadith that says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last Prophet. I mean, to say that la nabiya ba'di, that the, 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 the phrase here, ba'di, means against me, this is the 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 one of the gravest i mean really you are th- you are you must think your audience is stupid if you think that they're going to agree that la nabi ba'di means that there is going to be there there is going to be no prophet after me who is going to contradict me where did you get this from where did you add this we we know what ba'di means and we also we also know that um this kind of argument has not been made by any of the ulama. Okay. Uh, uh, Sahab, sorry, sorry to interrupt you before. I, I don't want to forget this. This is something very important. By, uh, I would request uh, the brother who joined earlier, brother T. Shah. And uh, Saab, by you as well, please, uh, if you uh, don't mind, please uh, drop your uh, detail in the private chat with the, with the channel. Because, inshallah, we really want to be in contact with you especially the point you have raised they are going to be very beneficial very helpful for the future inshallah when we're gonna discuss and address the ahmadiyya community so please inshallah drop your details. thank you love i want to make i will i want to make one last point please um my my plea my plea to uh viewers is and and people in the chat stop insulting ahmadis stop persecuting them okay and uh, have the kind of adab and etiquette, um, or, you know, that, that we've seen here, especially, you know, um, the way that uh, Muhammad Imtiaz, the way that you've brought out these arguments and discussed uh, them with them in the spirit that you've done them. This is important. There is no space whatsoever for any violence or verbal uh, 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 um, insults. I mean, and, and, uh, and, and this offends... Uh, me and it offends uh, the, the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because um, you know uh, this is uh, this is this is foul and um, and we don't want this. Everybody should be should be open minded and befriend Ahmadis and treat them well, speak to them, and um, and who knows? Maybe you know Allah as Allah is going to open up the hearts. Allah is going to open Inshallah. up the hearts. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. So um, I don't. Yeah, and uh, the, the last thing I want to say, sorry, uh, this will be the last time. I'm a teacher, so I'd like to go on. Um, <laughs> the, la- the, the last thing I will say is that um, Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah is a large, large, large tent. Yes. Large tent, okay? Yes. This idea, the Sufis pray behind the Wahhabis. The Wahhabis pray behind the Sufis. The Salafis pray next to the, the, the Wahhabi and the Sufis. So this idea... Okay, that um, 
well, the Muslims are disunited, you know, and, and uh, if you want to play that game, we can talk about disunity, the split between the Lahoris and the Ahmadis, but there's no need to play that game. There's no need to play that game. Let's just try to understand. ahl sunnah is a wide, wide, wide tent. Everyone is welcome, even if you're not sure about your ideas. You don't know where you are. You're on the fence. Just walk in to the mosque, walk into a, 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 a lesson or a class, no one's going to chase you out with a bat, okay? <laughs> they're going to they're serve you tea, and they're going to try to uh, educate educate you. So this Inshallah. is a false this is a false um, uh, uh, sketch that is uh, that is made, okay? And um, really, thank you, and I'm sorry to have um, gone on uh, for so long. No, that's fine. Thank you, and uh, appreciate your patience because you've been waiting for a while in the back chat. Uh, is that everybody wants to speak. we got lots of uh, former Ahmadis who would love to join and speak as well as Ustad Atnan mentioned earlier. But uh, yeah, appreciate your time. I think Dr. Izhar has got all your contacts. So maybe you can just email me on dawais at gmail.com and we can get in touch with uh, 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 Brother Intiaz, inshallah. Can I quickly uh, just compliment what uh, our beloved brother has said rightly? Uh, Wallahi, thank you so much um, for reminding us to keep good good akhlaq and good adab with the Ahmadis. Wallahi, this is how we started and this is how we want to keep things, okay? Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, sometimes we get carried away. We are human beings. We have made mistakes, no doubt. We have made, made mistakes. We get angry. We get passionate. We get... You know, some of these Ahmadi missionaries, I'm not talking about the masses, I'm not talking about the people. That's why we keep repeating again and again that there is a distinction between the missionaries and the people. We are reaching out to the people. We're not necessarily concerned about the missionaries because they have money involved. They have their name to make. They have to impress someone. They have to go back to the Jamaat and show some some results, you know, they want to show them that we're doing something, right? Uh, but these missionaries are so disgusting. Some of them are so evil that when, I mean, go and look at my Twitter exchanges, the kind of language they're using against us. Uh, you know, some of them are using very bad abuses, calling you a coward, calling you a hypocrite, calling you all sorts of names, right? And that gets to us sometimes. You know, we get passionate, we get angry and we lash out. We, re we respond in kind which we shouldn't. We should know better. We should control our emotions and keep, uh, you know, keep it, keep it cool, as, as they say. You know, we need to maintain our akhlaq and adab and, uh, you know, keep it academic. I like to keep things academic, okay? And I'm a human being. Sometimes we can lose track and start to lash out and start to react, uh, which is very human to do. But again, wallahi, brothers and sisters, our Ahmadi, Qadiani, brothers and sisters in humanity, those of you who are listening, please forgive us if we have hurt your feelings in any way. I'm talking to the masses. I'm talking to the people. If, you, if we have hurt your feelings in any way, please forgive us. Because it's not because of us you should reject Islam or true Islam, as we say, right? Please ignore our passion, ignore our reactions, okay? And think of the arguments Think of the information we, we are conveying, okay? Look at the arguments. Don't look at sometimes the way we present the argument. Please, I know it's difficult to overlook that, but please forgive us for our reaction. Sometimes when we react to missionaries, don't take it as if we are reacting to the Ahmadis or the Qadiani masses. No, there is a distinction between the two entities. The missionaries are a different breed. They have different agenda. They don't care about the truth. They, they are there to spin things. We're talking to the people, to the masses. Please study. Please research. Thank you so much, Brother Saab, for your uh, reminder. And it, 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 it comes timely. It comes at time. You know, we, we are about to enter another segment of the stream, uh, which is where we're going to need this advice. Thank you so much for giving us timely advice. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Yeah. Right. So we're going to bring in the Ahmadis now. Uh, the Muslims, please do not join. This is especially now, from now onwards, it's going to be for the Ahmadis. Inshallah, at the end, if we have time, we'll let the Muslims in for the Q&A. So I would advise you 
to not join when we invite the Ahmadis in, inshallah. Um, Dr. Izhar, uh, Tisha, and Saab, Jazakallah khairan for your contribution and valuable insights. We really appreciated them. And may Allah give us uh, the tawfiq to act upon them and to learn more from you guys, from your, because you, have, like we said, you know, you guys were in there. You, you know, you, you know, from the inside what exactly it is like. And you have left that cult and you have now become Muslims. And we want that to be an inspiration for those people who are on the edge of leaving or they are still in the Jamaat. So Jazakallah khairun, khairun, and inshallah, we'll, we hope to see you again in the future streams. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys go um, until next time. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaikum. Thank you. a lot of respect for you. Jazakallah khair. And Bashir bhai for you as well. And Thank you so much Shah everyone. Bashir bhai is staying because he's, he's part of the panel today. Bashir bhai is going to stay inshallah. So yeah, I'm good, just going to put the link. Uh, just make sure the Muslims do not join. We don't want to keep telling you all the time. Just Hashim Bhai, uh, just one quick question. Uh, so yeah. I just want to. So inshallah, uh, how long we're gonna go in this first part with regard to having the the former Ahmadi brothers and sisters? How oh, long we're gonna go in it's, this? It's done. The former Ahmadis. Now we're going to bring the Ahmadis in. Okay. 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 So I'm just going to put the link in. If you guys want to mention something in the meantime, please go ahead. So Adnan Bhai, are we going to move to our next segment? Is that right? Yes, we're going to move on. So do you, uh, Adnan Bhai, would you like to begin with the discussion we left off regarding Hudaybiyah or you want? To... Yes, uh, Bismillah. We will start with the Hudaybiyah question, inshallah. I think uh, in the meantime, Adnan Bhai comes back. Maybe he's a uh, signal problem or something. I just want to mention very quickly because in yesterday's stream on the official channel of the Jamaat from UK, we all know the name of the channel. We don't need to mention that. So they have actually addressed uh, our previous stream on the subject of the event of Hudaybiyah. And uh, they pretty much dedicated, I guess, something around one hour. And uh, inshallah, in order to respond to that in an academic way, there will be a different platform, okay? Inshallah, Adnan Bhai uh, is going to address this point in his own, mashallah, in his, in his own way. So inshallah, he will, uh, when, inshallah, when he comes back, he will address this point. But inshallah, I just want to give you this assurance that every single thing they have mentioned in their response, which was one hour long, Inshallah, that will be academically refuted on the channel we have created, uh, the dialogue with Imtiaz. But now, Inshallah, Adnan Bhai will come back and address in his own, Mashallah, in a very, you know, succinct way, Inshallah. We have pinned the link for the Ahmadis to join. Uh, when you join, please switch on your camera in the, in the studio, in the back studio. Uh, only I can see it and Mansoor. So this is a requirement for everyone, inshallah. Uh, once you come on on the panel uh, for the live, you before that, you can switch it off. It's just for verification. So Ahmed, the engineer, you want to switch on your camera quickly so we can bring you on. Uh, Hashim, why if uh, Nan Bai is having any uh, problem in joining for the moment, can I mention then a couple of things in the meantime? Is it okay? Uh, we got uh, guests already. Do you want to keep them waiting? How long is it going to take? No, actually, uh, we need to tell them that on what they are going to respond because we need to tell them the subject matter because the subject matter will be now the false attribution to profit, to the companions, to Mufassirun, etc. So this yeah. will be the topic. So we want to pose them a direct question. And we let people see, are they going to answer it directly or not? Inshallah, Dan Bhai has come back. He will ask them particular question regarding Hudaybiyah. And we request them to address the question directly. Right. Ahmad, the engineer, I can't see you. It's too dark. You need to... The whole idea of verification... Dan so please, please come and ask the question which you want the Ahmadiyya clerics to answer. 
regarding Hudaybiyah. So, A.K. Okay. Sheikh, I'm, I'm going to bring to you in. Uh, okay, guys. Yeah, go Rahman Rahim. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Sorry, my phone died, so just uh, got the bet. Uh, in case uh, some, of the, some of the missionaries thinking that I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just like to think. They just like to imagine me running. Uh, and I want that imagination more. I need to lose weight, guys. Seriously, you know, I need to kill some calories because I'm gaining weight. So uh, please do continue <laughs> to imagine so that I start running eventually after all. Uh, so, okay, let's see who runs now. Okay, are you, the question are you planning, is, is... Is it a me metaphoric losing weight, Adnan? No, no, uh, this is actually actual. This is actual real losing of weight, not okay. metaphorical. Okay. Just, uh, 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 just so, a point here, though. We would expect any Ahmadis who are joining to directly engage with the question. Yes. If you do not, yeah. we do not want you to be here waffling and you will not be given the opportunity to waffle. I mean, we, you've had experience in the last four or five streams, four streams or even more. Um, if you need, If you need to engage engage with us directly so if it's not there i mean it's not possible for you to understand that you cannot say that yes he was wrong that he lied yes that makes him a false prophet because your belief will be crumbled but exactly but if you are going to defend something we don't want you to waffle around it we want you to directly engage with the direct response if you don't then you're not a worthy defender you need to send someone else who can. So if you come here in our stream and you you, you cannot answer and defend Mirza Saab, for example, in being a charlatan, being a false prophet, then what you have to do is simply say, okay, fine, I don't know. I will go and send some someone. We have lots of elders, people who have knowledge, and we have our scholars. So bring them on because this is your opportunity, opportunity to defend your prophet because he's your prophet. We consider him to be a liar, a false an, an imposter who has totally misled and corrupted the religion within the people's minds. So if you really want to defend against these allegations, because we don't need to go and defend our Prophet Islam being the last prophet, this is well established. You have came with a new claim. So if you can't, our request is just admit we can't. We will get someone else who can. Yeah. And until you do so, the the you know, the story is this. So far, we have established without a shadow of doubt. There are many examples we have given, which establishes that he was a false prophet. So if you are willing to defend, you're more than welcome. This stream is for you. Okay, so no waffling and no metaphoric answers. We want real answers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, if anyone is trying to change the topic or give uh, irrelevant information, Please, we're not interested in that. We're not going to allow that. Don't be offended if you're thrown out uh, for repeatedly ignoring our questions. We're going to ask targeted questions, and we want targeted, specific answers, okay? Yeah. Uh, and once we get specific answers, then we can move on with the conversation, okay? Uh, so I'm going to open up the first question, okay? So again, we request from Qadiani missionaries, the Murabis joining, okay? Please ensure that you don't waste people's time. Don't frustrate people. Answer the questions directly, okay? Because we're not going to allow waffling or dancing around the question, okay? No offense. Please don't take offense from it. We're being very serious, okay? Uh, so the first question I want to pose is, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, in uh, one of his writings, and I want to very quickly quote, and I don't want to misquote because I like to quote exact words. Okay. In one of his writings, uh, he stated that uh, there were people at Hudaybiyah who apostatized. Okay. And he references Ibn Kathir. So this reference is actually taken directly Allah from. Right. Yeah. Not to, 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 to be very specific. So the anchor yeah. points are number one, okay, many people, number one. The second anchor point is Sache Munafikun. Allah says them, they are liars. So don't quote anything about the Munafikun. Sache okay. The third anchor point is 
Ibn Kasir. The fourth anchor point is in the Hudaybiyah event. So please, you need to hook your answer to four anchors. Okay. Number one, Kai, many. Number two, Sache Lo, not Munafikun. Number three, Ibn Kasir must mention this. Number four, it has to be in the event of Hudaybiyah. Go ahead. Jazakallah Khairan. And the reference is Maktubate Ahmad. Maktubate Ahmad. Page, uh, sorry, volume two. Maktubate Ahmad, volume two, page 205. And to write, uh, to read exactly what Mirza Sab wrote. Aapko malum nahi ke Hazrat Masih alayhi salam ne apne badisha honne ka joh wada kiya aur woh in ki zindagi mein pura na hua to sattar admi murtad ho gaye. Hudaybiyah ke kissa mein Tafsir Ibn Kasir mein likha hai ke kai sache admi murtad ho gaye. Kai sache admi murtad ho gaye. Okay, so we want to now ask the Qadiani missionaries to respond to these four anchor points. First question I want to ask is, did Ibn Kathir in his tafsir ever write that many truthful people apostatized at Hudaybiyah? Very specific question. But Brother Bashir, do you understand the question? Brother Imtiaz, do you understand the question? Brother Mansoor, do you understand the question? Yes. Hashim, do you understand the question? The question is very specific. Did Ibn Kathir ever write in his tafsir that many truthful people apostatized at the incident of Hudaybiyah? Okay. Now open the floor to these missionaries. Just, just was one, one question, Adnan Bai. Did, it, did the yeah. quote say Ibn Kathir's tafsir or any writings of Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir's tafsir. The quote says specifically tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. The quote says specifically, the page scan is on my Twitter if anyone wants to see it. And if you want to see it here, then it's here. This is what it says. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. One second. Here. You can see. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Can you see that? Exactly. Yes, we can. So Tafsir now it's very clear. It's, we, we are very specific what, what we're saying because... You know, the ramification is very obvious and, 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 and it's quite damaging that this individual, if did this quote didn't exist, he's making things up. He's forging. He's just making things up. So if this is not the case, that he's actually stating the fact, then you should be able to find a reference in Tafsir ibn Kathir with all these points that we just want exactly. you to bring. Exactly. Right. Right, so we got uh, A.K. Sheikh here, who's the first Ahmadi, I'm assuming. Welcome to our stream. You Actually, uh, Hashim Bhai, uh, uh, A.K. Sheikh Sahib. Uh, welcome you need to, to unmute team. yourself. He's not, uh, uh, Hashim Bhai, he's not from the um, Ahmadi. He is, oh, is he not? former Ahmadi. I'm not okay. representing the Ahmadi. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, yeah. and we'll have to let you go. Assalamu okay. kicking. I'm just kicking. <laughs> no, that's... That's fine. Before, While they're before joining, let, uh, yeah, before we let him go, thank you so much. May Allah bless you, Sheikh. And I can see uh, you, you know, you you are, mashallah, tabarakallah, an elder, and you know, you inspire us. And thank you so much for joining us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Thanks. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, sh share your thoughts within a minute so that we can let in some of the murabis or missionaries uh, to answer our questions. Please go ahead very quickly now that you have joined us. May Allah bless you. Go thank ahead, Sheikh. Thank Any you. words thank of inspiration? So I appreciate yeah. I, I won't take your time. Better you entertain them. And let's be put myself for some other time. And I'll be happily share my thoughts with you guys. Okay. Well, go ahead. While they're joining, you, you're more than welcome to... Yeah, thoughts. just any any words of encouragement, Sheikh. Any words of encouragement, inshallah. Uh, first of all, this uh, Ahmadiyya Jamaat is not a Jamaat, it's a cult. Yes. It's a cult. And they have <laughs> officially in Canada complained against me to the government that I'm calling the Ahmadiyya as a cult. And I've been in interrogated by the hate crime police twice. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they verified this thing 
that this is a cult and they know why I say cult. And recently, two days before, the person who is really running the real cult, she complained against me and served me a legal notice. Meaning, who is running the this cult is the wife of Mirza Masroor, who calls himself the Khalifa of Ahmadiyya. Actually, he's not running the Ahmadiyya Khilafat. His wife is running the Ahmadiyya Khilafat. <clears throat> this, the whole cult, they Allah. are so That's... much up, upset <laughs> with my thoughts and with me that they have hacked my website. They have hacked my YouTube channel. More than 1,000 my videos, they have hacked and destroyed those. I mean, if they are true, if they have any truth or uh, iota of uh, truth, then they should have a negotiation or conversation or dialogue with me. No, they don't. They cannot face me. This is the order from their Khalifa that you can talk to any Malvi, any opponent of the Ahmadiyya, <clears throat> but you cannot talk to a Sheikh. I would like to know what I have. I know only about this cult. If you would ask me any kind of like um, question which is related to Deen, maybe I may not know exactly what you guys know or what they know, but I know what is this cult, how it runs, how it works. I know because I was a part of that. I think I can say this because you guys have to run your show. You have to invite your uh, guest and all that. I don't want to take your time. Some uh, other go time ahead. you... Go ahead, Sheikh. We, we want to hear your story. What brought you to Islam? What, what made you leave that cult? What was the, I don't know, the catalyst? Uh, first of all, my story is a little bit different than others. Different than others is like this way, that uh, nobody approached me, meaning is from the Muslims, nobody approached me or they invited me to have a dialogue that MD is wrong, why I'm believing this. Same time, there was no doubt in my mind that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed or the Ahmadiyya community is wrong. I had uh, like uh, the thing uh, within the community, within the Jamaat, I will use the word Jamaat means in the past and the present is a cult. So wherever is a Jamaat, I'm talking about the past. I had a sum, like you can say administrative level, some differences. And with that one, like 26 years before, I had the argument with the Canadian National Amir, who is passed away now. His name was Mr. Nassim Mahdi. So we had an argument and I walked away. When I walked away, then they asked me to apologize for that one because doesn't matter, he's younger than me, but he was with the status, he was much above to me. So I should ask him for the apology and even I should write a letter of apology to the Mr. Khalifa at that time. At that time, okay. Mirza Tahar was Khalifa. Bahi I refused. Ji. I said no. Go ahead. I said no because the Amir was wrong and I'm right. Give me the reasons. And if I will be wrong, I will apologize for that one. They said, no, it's unconditional. You have to simply <clears throat> apologize. I said, no. And they said, if you will not, then you know the consequences. You will be expelled. I said, if you will expel me before that, I say, bye. And I don't want to be part of this. This is the reason I walked away. After that, I studied four years 
the Mirza Ghulam Ahmed books. And I think in the Jamaat, I'm the only person who have read his books four times. He demanded three times, and I read four times his books. And I did the comparison study and all these things. Finally, I launched a website 20 years before, nakedmd.com. There was no YouTube at that time, nothing. <clears throat> I launched the website, and they complained against me to the hate crime at that time, and they hacked my website. And still, the, this thing is keep on going. Still, this thing is going on. And recently, they have they hacked my YouTube channel, where from 1,100 videos, they have uh, uh, washed away. So this is the case. This is the things going on. <clears throat> At one point, you can say that uh, I interviewed the son of first Khalifa, Hakim Nurdin's youngest daughter, uh, son, Mia Abdul Manan, who was like uh, from the Lahori Jamaat. He quit from the Qadiani group and moved to the Lahori. <clears throat> I interviewed him. And in his interview, he mentioned that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed used to sniff Mohamdi Begum's shalwar, like you can say that the lady's uh, pajama that calls the shalwar. <clears throat> he used to sniff. The first time he said in my interview, and I said that uh, how you know, and he told that this was written in the first edition of Siratul Mahdi, and his son, Bashir Ahmed M. A., mentioned that. He said, when I read that one, I went to him. This is what Mia Manan is saying, that I went to Mia Bashir, Mirza Bashir Ahmed and asked how you can dare to write about your father like this. And he was the promised Messiah. He was Imam Mahdi. And you are writing that your father was used to sniff Muhammadi Begum's shalwar. They said that they have taken back all the books back <clears throat> and they made a change. This was when I, I published. I, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, we, I, you know, yeah, just to just to keep this, uh, just to keep this, the stream uh, um, a, a bit more, a bit more censored. A bit more censored. We we wouldn't like to mention uh, private things like this, especially about uh, a woman who has passed away. Rahmatullah alayha. May Allah have mercy on her. So, I, uh, as important as this may be to you, but inshallah, hopefully, we can do a disclaimer that we okay. Generally, okay. generally don't like to. No, yeah, but I just, mean, just, 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 yeah. just out of respect for Muhammad no, Begum, agreed, you know. Agreed, yeah. agreed, yeah. agreed, yeah. agreed. Because it was uh, published in my uh, interview on my website, uh, but uh, yeah. that's enough. Whatever I have mentioned, mentioned. Okay. That's okay. Careful. With with all due respect, that's fine. I mean, we can have another discussion, perhaps another time on this. Um, we're gonna get some uh, someone else's joint. So, AK Sheikh, um, thanks for join coming and, and joining. Um, perhaps thank another you. time, inshallah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. May Allah okay, bless so you. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much for for your efforts and and you know you are an inspiration, Sheikh. You know, uh, and uh, I really really uh, admire the fact that. Such an elderly person is still active uh, because he feels so strongly about this. Uh, we may not agree with all his views and everything uh, he has stated, but you know what? Uh, at the same time, we respect his passion and uh, his dedication to this cause. He obviously feels very strongly about this, and may Allah bless him for his good work. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use him to bring many more people to Islam, inshallah. Amin, ya Rabb. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Allah bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, admiration for your work. Right. So it seems like the Ahmadis uh, are not joining today for some reason. Now maybe they run out of arguments. Yeah. Or they yeah. they given up already. Maybe. <laughs> so maybe Adnan Bhai, shall we invite 
the uh, Ahmadis, sorry, the former Ahmadis in? What do you think? Until they come or until they have the courage to come? That's fine. Who's, do you know, um, check who's we, just recently joined, whether this person is an Ahmadi or not? Um, Vito? Yeah, I think I've seen him here before. He's, he's not an um, Ahmadi. So, Vito, you yeah, need I, to... I just, uh, I just want to... Guys, uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. drop out. I'm gonna drop out and come from a different device. Please let me in, inshallah. Yeah, sure. So I just want to uh, give one suggestion, brothers. Uh, if we want to uh, have more of the former Ahmadis, for example, uh, uh, in the future, for, for now in the stream, my request is to limit the time. Number one. Number two, and uh, let's inshallah, you know, be uh, directly on the main questions, you know, which we really want people to address so they can be beneficial. For example, what exactly was that one main thing that led them to leave this cult, for example, and what would be that one advice they want to give to those who are at the verge of leaving the Jamaat? Okay, let me bring A.K. Sheikh and answer that second question of yours. I think he answered the first one. So, A.K. Sheikh, do you have some advice for the people who are on the verge of leaving Ahmadiyat? My simple advice will be, which I normally advise on my channel, <clears throat> that they should read and they should research about this one to whom they are believing, whether his claims are supported by the Quran. If Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's all claim are supported by the Quran, then obviously they have no choice and they have to accept. But if Quran does not support his claims, then they shouldn't hesitate to leave that one. But to leaving, uh, I know, that the social pressure and their family ties and relations for the person, it is very hard for them, rather make it impossible for them to make a decision. I can give you my example <clears throat> that uh, when I quit, when I said I'm not a part of this one, can you imagine since last 20 years I'm living alone, my wife, my children, my brother, sister, nephew, everyone. They said, you are no more our family member unless and until you repent, you come back, you apologize, you ask for forgiveness. Then otherwise, they said there is no relation. I that know easy for you. Yeah. I know that uh, after 30 years, I, <clears throat> I went to Pakistan. And I knocked my sister's door. She didn't open the door. She said, I want to see your face because you are not anymore among us. You are hell bound. You left the real Jamaat. You left the real Islam. She refused to see. So these kind of things the Ahmadis are facing when they make a decision to leave. The young people, okay, I can understand, but whoever is married or who have a brother and sister and the parents particularly, they have this kind of a fear in their mind that they will lose their families. And now showing that if I can survive, according to the this cult, that anybody who will leave this community, who will leave this Jamaat, his life will be like a hell. But I'm telling them, look at this one. Now I have made <laughs> their Khalifa and his Mirza family's life well. I'm still laughing. I'm still enjoying the life. I'm still enjoying where I came from. A, you can say a small pond to the big ocean. Um, I'm having a pond. I have all happiness all smile on my face. There is nothing that ever I complained. Rather, they are complaining against me everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this is natural. This is natural because obviously they feel threatened by people like you. Uh, you are threatening uh, the the livelihood of the Khalifa and his close associates, mm -hmm. right? By exposing the, the teachings. 
and the flaws. Uh, I have a question, Sheikh, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like Shamsuddin joined us earlier and Bashir Bai and Dr. Izhar, you know, they all have their personal stories. Uh, and for Shamsuddin, for example, it was that hadith about Isa ibn Maryam descending near the end times himself personally to do certain things. That was the factor that kind of opened the door in his mind to start questioning. What was your, uh, you know, changing uh, moment? What was the moment that made you think? How old were you? When did this happen? And how long did it take you to finally leave uh, Ahmadiyya? Uh, Brother Adnan, I think I mentioned before that one that nobody approached to me or I never had any kind of a doubt. And there was administrative matter where we have differences and I walked away. After that, when I studied, while I was studying, then before launching the my website, nakedmd.com, I made a comparison study and I found that Quran is not supporting any claim of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. And I was like completely under, uh, surprised when I read this one that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has the claim that he is the second advent of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That he is the second advent of Prophet Muhammad. And that was for me a really surprising that how it is possible that uh, neither Quran has mentioned this one. There is nothing anywhere. Number one, this was the most uh, something. And the other thing was this, that uh, he, co he has written this one that among my all prophecies, if one goes wrong, then I am a false. Yes, and and you know what we have we have discussed a lot of these uh, in in the previous uh, streams. Uh, we're gonna have to move on, Sheikh, to the next topic. And Wallahi, Jazakallah Khairan. Uh, we not we may not agree on everything, but we we agree on one thing that. You know, you have found Mirza to be a false prophet. You have found him to be a false prophet. He was lying. He was deceiving people. And his Jamaat uh, is deliberately, uh, you know, misguiding people. This is one thing you are already suffering for. I mean, you've been questioned a few times. Uh, may Allah protect you. May Allah continue to guide you. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining the stream. And we're going to have to move on to the next sure. topic as we intended earlier. Allah bless you. Thank you so Thank much. Allah guide you. you. Allah guide us. Ameen. Thanks, Yara. sir. Thanks, Allah. Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Adnan bhai, uh, Adnan bhai uh, how about inshallah, uh, as people have already seen, we have posed a direct question on the subject of Hudaybiyah. And the question I just want to remind last time, inshallah, then we move on to the next topic. The question was, Mirza Sahib said in his book, and in his quotation, he mentioned the following things. He said that it is in Ibn Kathir. And what is it? That many truthful people. Number three, what happened to them? They became apostate. When it happened at the event of Hudaybiyah. Okay. All of these are the anchor points. So any attempt in order to answer our objection. If any of these things is ignored, so let people decide, are you really answering the question or are you just name dropping? Now, what I mean by name dropping, I invite people, if you have seen already, Alhamdulillah, if you haven't, you don't even need to see what they did on their official channel. Let me give you the gist of that, okay? On their official True Islam UK channel, they dedicated almost, almost one hour to address this objection. And guess what? The, the gist of their objection was that it was some munafiq, etc. Et this is not our question. We, 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 we are, don't need to get to that. Let them yeah, come no, 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 let, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Adnan, so this was not our question. So any attempt from their side in which our question is not answered with these anchor points in the quotation of Mirza Sahib, there will be red hearing. Absolutely. 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 I like so I think 
So I think what's happened what, now what, what is they've realized Adnan Bai and MTS Bai. I think what's happened now is uh, they realize that they are not going to be able to no, defend no. Let's, their profit. Let's, let's that is why they are not willing to come. Let, no the reasons we don't, need, we don't need them. You know, yeah. we don't need them. You know why we don't need them? Because everyone knows. Everyone watching knows these people have no answers. You know why they're not coming? Because they know they have no answer. Ibn Kathir never wrote in his tafsir that many truthful companions of the Prophet apostatized from Islam. Never. There is no reference to that. So Mirza simply made it up. These guys, they did gymnastics for hours upon hours on their channels and on Twitter. Gymnastics, gymnastics, you know, somersaults, flips, and coming up down, you know, like, I don't know, there are different types of gymnastics. If you watch Olympics, they did everything and anything to somehow uh, take Mirza off the hook. But Mirza has left them in such a quagmire that they will never come out of it until the Day of Judgment. Because Mirza has left behind some serious blunders. You know, when I posted that picture on Twitter with Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani shooting random arrows, and these guys, the Murabis and the missionaries going and, you know, drawing bullseye around the arrow, trying to, trying to, trying to suggest that Mirza got the bullseye. Mirza got the bullseye, right? So, <laughs> come on, guys. Adnan Bhai, I want to point, okay, inshallah, if you okay. want to finish this uh, picture, then I can go after it, inshallah. Okay, look, look, when I posted this on Twitter, these guys were very offended. They started uh, reminding me of my own teachings that we don't insult other people's religions, which is absolutely right. They are absolutely right about that. This is my view. I don't insult anyone's religion or religious figure. There is no insult here for Mirza. If you look at, you know, Mirza's picture the Qadianis themselves are publishing his pictures so we didn't deform his face we didn't do anything to his picture or his body we're simply trying to convey a message it's like Ibrahim alayhi salam you know placing the 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 axe on the largest idol okay was he mocking the idol was he mocking the religion he was trying to explain something to them that you know what this big idol broke all the small ones. And the people said, you know what? You're trying to be funny. This is not true. This cannot happen. He said, exactly my point. Exactly my point. So what, what we're trying to do here is trying to show the Qadianis, the missionaries and the masses, okay, that Mirza has been shooting, okay, randomly, okay, hitting all sorts of different things. And what do these missionaries do? Just like this guy, they go and draw a bullseye around it, trying to claim that Mirza hit the the bullseye, which is which is absurd. Come on, guys. Where did Ibn Kathir write? Where did Ibn Kathir write? Bring back the picture. Bring back the picture. Okay. Bring back the picture, please. I want I want I want to explain. Okay. Let's see. One of those arrows in the bullseye is Ibn Kathir writing in his tafsir that many truthful companions apostatized. The one, the one you see that guy drawing around. There is an arrow, and he's trying to complete the bullseye. Look at that one, the the bottom right hand corner of the picture. Right. Let's say that's Mirza's arrow claiming Ibn Kathir wrote in his tafsir that many truthful companions of the Prophet apostatized from Islam at Hudaybiyah. Not, so what I'm what these missionaries do? Let me finish. What these missionaries yeah. do? They come. And they work for hours upon hours drawing bullseye against uh, or around that arrow. And it's not bullseye. It's deception. It's yeah. complete deception and lies. So now we can go back. This is what the Adnan point of yeah, yeah, Adnan Bhai, I want to mention, if, if you can shall remove the picture, I can just want to mention one thing, Mansoor and Adnan Okay, brothers, my dear Ahmadiyya community, what I'm going to say now, please pay attention. There is a technique which the Murabbis and the clerics, they use. The technique is, is called name dropping. So when they, when they come on the stream to answer any question, they will drop the books, the, the names of many Arabic tafasir, the names of many scholars, this, 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 this. 
all of that is please pay attention all of that is for two reasons primarily number one they want to give you the impression that they are knowledgeable people they are consulting these big books and big names and number two they want to make it difficult for a common ahmadi to verify all of that listen very carefully because in the in, in yesterday's team when they quoted 7 8 9 10 and guess what most of them was red herring why they quoted all of that on the one hand they gave you an impression that we have responded number one okay number two on the other hand the way they responded my brothers and sisters in ahmadiyya please understand my point would you be able to go and access these books the answer is no if they have this sound intellectual answer here is invitation from dawa wise panel that please is there any murabbi is there any ahmadiyya cleric alive right now on this planet who can come and face us it is very they, easy they have all died very, they have it, all it died it is very easy it's very easy to sit in your own homes and to give this all of these impression to your people if you are man enough if you are man enough if your response was very sound intellectual comprising of many tafasir bring it on we are ready to respond bismillah they, look, look they they know they know they know they know from the last streams experience when they couldn't give straight answers and they were waffling all around the question dancing around the question they know they don't have answers so it is a very safe option for them to stay away and not come and join the streams you know why okay you know why because they know they will not be able to defend mirza there is no such quote ibn kathir never wrote in his tafsir that many truthful companions of the prophet apostatized at hudaybiyah where are they going to bring it where wh- wh- where are they going to produce it from it doesn't <laughs> exist and you know what that does that shows mirza was a liar mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani made this information up to cover up cover up for what when his own companions apostatized after the debate with abdullah atam when he lost the debate to abdullah atam his own companions his own associates apostatized became christians can you believe it they became christian right from islam so not only that mirza caused them to leave islam by claiming to be masih mawud and all those things himself he claimed them he, he caused them he caused them to leave his own cult to christianity so when they went to <laughs> christianity what does he say oh you know what 70 companions of isa alay salam apostatized ibn kathir wrote in his tafsir that many truthful companions of the prophet of islam apostatized from islam my dear my dear ahmadiyya Not- community this thing adnan bhai just mentioned something about mirza sahib saying before this court of hudaybiya he said that 70 companion of the hawariyun the disciples of isa alay salam they apostatized as well listen ahmadiyya community very carefully i'm going to tell you something very important now when mirza sahib is insulting sayyiduna isa alay salam in his books then their response is oh he is not talking about isa alay salam he is talking about the jesus of christianity okay and when mirza sahib wants to prove his point then all on a sudden this jesus of christianity becomes isa ibn maryam so understand these games okay now yes in, in the stream they were quoting mufassirun i'm going to say something on the public platform and i am sitting here to face and to answer them listen very carefully my brothers sisters you know there is not a single prominent mufassir in the history of islam which they can choose and they can tell us okay this mufassir is is okay for us if you take his tafsir we will accept guess what they have a principle of convenience cherry picking okay when something is suitable take from this mufassir if something is not suitable throw him under the bus this is called the principle of convenience and this is called the cherry picking this is not called academics okay if you believe 
that mufassirun are because this is the impression you giving to your people that mufassirun and the muhaddisun they are on your side guess what name one person in your next stream please name one prominent mufassir and what you need to tell us that this mufassir whatever tafsir he will give from the ayat of the quran we will accept it give us that name from now onward we will quote that mufassir likewise when it comes to ahadith please listen very carefully i inshallah we are going to give you references very soon there is no such thing as principles for ahmadiyya cult it's very unfortunate okay they can take a zaif hadith if it suits them they can reject bukhari hadith if it doesn't suit them is it called the academic approach that is called inconsistency that's called the principle of convenience that's called cherry picking and one of their clerics who comes on our streams regularly and he is saying repeatedly one thing he says that oh this is the principle from day one till today and guess what they are not following any principle they do not have any principle when it comes to tafsir when it comes to taking the ahadith when it comes to explaining the ahadith if you think that i am just making all of these statements without having any meanings let me tell you simple thing to verify the truthfulness of what i'm saying ask them that give us three principles of tafsir give us three principles of taking or rejecting the hadith and lastly give us three principles of interpreting the hadith and let's see let's see in the future if they live up to those principles they have no principles jazakallah khairan muhammad imtiaz bhai just want to make a quick point um i don't think the murabbis are allowing um the ahmadi missionaries to come and and join because they will be totally a failure in defending so in in this case what we proposed perhaps we should go with your presentation and demonstrating with examples how there is a definitive case against mirza gulam ahmed that he is a liar he's a, an imposter he's a fake uh, prophet and if we can demonstrate that and that should be an eye opener for all the people because yes. you know we are giving them opportunities to come and defend and show us actually he didn't say that in the books or in the references that we are you know using um since they are not going to come um it has become obviously clear that they are not unable they are not able to they are totally unable to defend their prophet and that should be the decisiveness of this stream inshallah even if they don't come into other streams the presentation that you are making inshallah will be historically important for people uh, from now on in the social media so that they can see where the qadianis have been totally misleading people and this has been uncovered dismantled debunked in this stream in dawa wise inshallah taala so brother imtiaz i would like to request you to continue with your examples and and, and as brother adnan if, as well if, if okay if, i just want to i just want to confirm can you see my screen right now no okay because i am trying to share my presentation because last time people wanted us to put them on the screen okay let's One... let's go let's go step by step uh but that way it has to be on the screen so people can yeah. follow the yeah, argument yeah. We, we will do that we will do that let's go step by step with our evidence to show that mirza ghulam ahmed qadiani was a compulsive liar who lied mm -hmm. repeatedly attributing information to people that doesn't exist what is our point the point is that if mirza is attributing information specifically by mentioning names and books and the information is not there so either mirza is not writing these some ignorant secretary or clerk is writing this in that case mirza still is not a prophet because you lied and attributed these books to mirza and if mirza right. himself is writing if mirza himself is writing then mirza is an outright liar okay in both cases it's a dilemma you can't get out of it okay so first example we have given is ibn kathir tafsir of ibn kathir the quote the attribution is non existent does this matter to the ahmadis the question is does it matter to you guys 
Does it matter to you guys that you, you, the person you claim to be a prophet lied, deliberately lied, knowing well that this information doesn't exist, or he made it up on the spot just to, just to you know, get away from the pressure of people questioning him? Why were his followers leaving to Christianity after he lost the debate with Abdullah Atam? Okay, and we don't care about Abdullah Atam. Abdullah Atam was as much of a disbeliever as Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani was, right, to us. Okay, because Mirza's debate with him uh, was was no big deal, just like the Qadianis make. Yeah, if it, if it, if it was a big deal, his own companions would not have apostatized. Apostatized. So now the question is. That if Mirza wrote this, that in Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, it is written that many truthful companions of Prophet Muhammad apostatized from Islam. Where is that information? It is not in Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. So Mirza made it up. Mirza fabricated the information. In that case, he's a liar. Do you want to share the screen in Kesbe? Yes, can you see it down? No, we can't. So if, Actually, if, I'm not uh, sure that... Oh, oh yeah, I can, if, I can see you, a dark screen. You if can't you see, see any Ahmadi, Hashim Bhai, if you see any Ahmadi in the back chat, let them in. Even if they're not missionaries, let them in. I mean, we uh, want to speak to non, non-missionary non Ahmadis as well. They're welcome. You know, they may be, they may be sincere people uh, who want to ask questions. Are there any Ahmadis who want to ask questions from us? Come forward. We will, so, we will, we will address your questions. If there are Ahmadis watching right now, there are decent, sincere Ahmadis who are simply not aware of this stuff. Come forward and question us. Are we making this up? Are we just pulling out things from nowhere? Or are we, are we truthful? Now tell us, you Ahmadis, tell us, what case do you have against us on the Day of Judgment when we have solid reasons to reject Mirza and his claim, his bogus false claim to prophethood? based upon his own blunders, his own personality, his own writings. Before we get into all the complicated debates and dialogues you want to have with us, defend the guy okay. made up things. So let us concentrate okay. on the screen now we are sharing. Okay. Is it on the screen now, Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can see it as well. Yeah. Okay. Inshallah, let's first present some of the quotations. So, as we all know, Quran is very clear when it comes to lying. I just gave one example. Otherwise, we all know that the curse of Allah is upon the liars. Okay, Quran is very clear. But obviously, for the Ahmadiyya community, no, Mirza Sahib Arda Hujja. Okay, Razi, so the first quotation is from the Ruhani Khazain, volume 23, page 231. What is the quotation? ظاہر ہے کہ جب ایک بات میں کوئی جھوٹا ثابت ہو جائے تو پھر دوسری باتوں میں بھی اس پر اعتبار نہیں رہتا اٹ از اوبیس دیٹ اف ون از پروون لائر ان ون آف ہز اسٹیٹمنٹ دین ہی کین نائدر بی ٹرسٹیڈ ان ہز ادر اسٹیٹمنٹ اٹ سم تھنگ ویری امپورٹینٹ مرزا صاحب از گیونگ اس ا کرائٹیرین لک ایٹ دا نیکسٹ کوٹیشن روحانی خزائن والیوم 17 پیج 56 Wait, wait, let, me clarify. Let, me, let, let me clarify this one first. So here Mirza Sahib, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani is writing that if you have shown to be a liar once, then you lose your trust. Correct? Is that a correct rendition into the English yeah. language? If you, are, if you have shown to be a liar once, then you lose your credibility and your trust. You cannot be trusted. Okay, now. Uh, and the quote is there on the screen. We're not making this up. This is what Mirza himself said. Please continue. And the second quotation, he says, Jhoot bolna murtad hone se kam nahi. Wali, uh, Rohani Khazain, volume 17 and page 56. Lying is not less than becoming an apostate. Wow. Okay. So now lying, look at the, is, yeah. so lying, lying is basically tantamount to apostasy. Okay, lying. Oh, next is, one, like yeah. Apostle. Next one, I next one, I apologize from everybody. It's a very strange language, but I have to go quote to quote. Wo kanjar jo walad zina kehlaate hain, 
وہ بھی جھوٹ بولتے ہوئے شرماتے ہیں ہو سیٹ دس مرزا صاحب روحانی خزائن سیکنڈ والیوم پیج 386 and uh, applied to a male it is basically someone who is basically uh, an immoral person to put it in simple terms kanjar and uh, sorry what was the next word waladut waladu zina a child of adultery right is that is that what the quote is sorry i can't see it he say he says that wo kanjar jo waladu zina kehlate hain wo bhi jhoot bolte hue sharmate hain Okay, so he's saying those... You want to maximize in- the screen, Imtiaz Bhai? Just maximize the screen. Okay. okay. I, I've, I've, I've got it. I've got it. I've got okay. it, guys. Is it okay now? Okay. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's saying he's saying in this writing, Rohani Khazain, uh, volume 2, page 386, Mirza writes, Wo kanjar jo walad uzzina kehlate hain, Wo bhi jhoot bolte ho sharmate hain. Those immoral persons who are known as bastard children, who are known as bastard children literally translating uh, even they are ashamed of lying so even an immoral person or a bastard child is ashamed of lying okay clear that's very clear no brother and sister why why we mention these things please first of all a disclaimer we are not saying anything negative adnan bhai avallai i'm sorry that i put you on the spot to translate this because literally i do not have in my limited vocabulary the word for kanjar okay so that's why i need your help anyways and uh, now brother mirza sahib said in these quotations number 1 obviously according to quran there is a curse of allah upon the liar that everybody knows this and according to mirza sahib lying renders a person untrustworthy and lying is apostasy and lying is like is lying is basically not even even the bastard people even they don't lie they have a shame that even they don't lie now we are going to present our cases inshallah let's begin one by one so the first one as you can see on the screen it is a uh, ruhani khazain as you can see it's exactly from the book so volume 14 page 394 ayyam sulha so what he is saying here is that magar hazrat isa aur hazrat musa مکتبوں میں بیٹھے تھے اور حضرت عیسیٰ نے ایک یہودی استاد سے تمام توریت پڑھی تھی وٹ ہی سینگ از دا پرافٹ موزز اور موسا علیہ السلام اینڈ پرافٹ جیزز اور عیسیٰ علیہ السلام دے اسٹڈیڈ ان مدرسہ وچ یو کین کال ان دا ماڈرن ٹرم ان سیمنریز اوکے اینڈ دین سیز اے پرافٹ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام اسٹڈیڈ دا کمپلیٹ تھورا انڈر اے جوئش اسکالر اوکے ناؤ نوٹ دا پوائنٹ First of all, obviously, every, even, even a Muslim with a common knowledge, he knows this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran that Allah is the one who is going to teach Torah to Isa alayhi salam. وَيُعَلِّمُ هُمُ الْكِتَابَ And then say, وَالتَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنجِيرِ is part of that verse, okay? So now Allah is telling us, please pay attention, Allah is telling us that he is the one who's going to teach Torah to Isa alayhi salam. On the contrary, look what Mirza Sahib has said, that Isa alayhi salam studied Torah under a Jewish scholar, and he made the same allegation in the first part against Musa alayhi salam as well. Now, before Adnan Mai takes it, I just want to mention one last point. Now, somebody may be thinking that, oh, Mirza Sahib was quoting from such and such book, Dear Ahmadiyya community, please listen. I have quoted a hadith at the, at the bottom of this slide. And the hadith says that it is sufficient for a person to be considered a liar that he narrates everything he hears. I would say that even if Mirza Sahib has read this thing somewhere, it was his duty to defend Sayyiduna Isa and not to narrate all of that. Now, 
obviously if there is no authentic evidence that Isa al-Islam studied Torah under a Jewish scholar. And how can there be evidence anyways when Quran has taught us already Allah was going to teach Torah to Isa al-Islam. Now, Ahmadiyya community always says that Quran is the hakam. Now, Quran is telling us Allah has taught Torah to Isa al-Islam. Mirza Sahib is saying that Isa al-Islam studied complete Torah under a Jewish scholar. Who you are going to trust? Right. Can can we um, very powerful, very powerful point indeed, right? Um, so here there is a clear contradiction. I mean, the, Mirza was riddled with contradictions when it comes to the Quran and Sunnah, right? Firstly, he ignored Mirza ignored ignored clear cut reports from. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, about Isa salam and him descending near the end of times. So what Mirza did, he handpicked, I think we've lost him by there. What Mirza did, he handpicked basically um, many reports, many reports from uh, the the Daif weak reports. He handpicked those and made a case upon them. And completely ignored, agreed upon Sahih Ahadith about Isa a.s. The Prophet categorically stated that Isa ibn Maryam will descend near the end times and he will do certain things, X, Y, and Z, whatever the Prophet said in his reports. They ignore that. They completely ignore. They ignore all the a hadith about the finality of prophethood. For example, when the prophet said, there's no prophet after me, or if there was a prophet after me, it would it would have been Omar, or it would have been, you know, for example, Ibrahim, his son who passed away. Okay. Or it, uh, he said, Ali, you know, there is no prophet after me. You're like to me, like Harun was to Musa, but there is no prophet after me. So many reports from the Prophet ﷺ. Okay. So Mirza was riddled with contradictions when it comes to not only with the Quran and Sunnah, but even himself. At times he was loggerheads with, with his own writings. He has written one thing and down the line he starts to cancel it. So I want to go back to Imtiaz Bhai. I want to go back to the Hadith references we have. Okay. Those are very important. Okay, clearly the, the, the Qadiani missionaries are completely uh, not present today. I'm pretty sure they have been banned by the Jamaat, the elders. Probably the elders warned them, don't you dare go to these guys because they will now, obviously, they have taken off their gloves and they're going to go for the, for the, you know, as they say, the, the jugular vein. Yeah, they're going to go for the absolute annihilation spiritually or intellectually speaking, right? Because Qadianis tend to spin these words. You know, when we use words like this in a dialogue, they always try to give it a physical meaning. And when it comes to Mirza's physical prophecies, they become metaphorical. So uh, our words... Uh, uh, just inshallah, one... Uh, sorry to interrupt you, non -bai. Just inshallah, one thing I want to mention because uh, apparently people are saying that there is no link to join. So I believe inshallah, link has been sent again. So now the point... Okay, are these... Are these before, 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 guys, come before, on. Before, before, we move on, before we move Inti, on to the Inti next Azbai, point... The, link, the yeah. link was there. That's the reason all these people are joining. Now, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, you know, that this is the, you know, excuse. No excuse, no to excuses today. So uh, now, basically, uh, inshallah, Adnan Bhai, as you said, inshallah, I'm going to bring the hadith fabrication as well. But let's take people back to what we started in this topic. Mirza Sahib said, if a person is proven liar in one of his statement, he is untrustworthy. We have presented one statement of Mirza Sahib in which he is declaring that Sayyidina Isa salam studied complete Torah under a Jewish scholar. That is a lie. That is an allegation. That is something against the Quran because Quran has or Quran is the muhayman about everything. 
Quran has made it very clear Allah has taught Torah to Isa alayhi salam. Now, if Mirza Sahib has proven liar in this statement, the matter has been closed according to his own criteria. So let's look at the premise. Premise A, if somebody is proven a liar in one of his statements, he is untrustworthy and he is apostate according to Mirza Sahib. And then premise B, Mirza Sahib, we have given this particular example when he said that Isa salam studied complete Torah under a Jewish scholar. He is lying in this statement. So the conclusion according to Mirza Sahib's own criteria is logically conclusion follows is that he according to his own criteria is untrustworthy and according to his own criteria he has committed apostasy. Right, and uh, uh, Brother Mithyaz, can I can I just give a quick comment? The, the only reason Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is saying this is because he admitted that he had worldly teachers. So, so, yeah. Everything fits in in the context, isn't it? I mean, e even the incident of Hudaybiyah, the reason why he had to invent Ibn Kathir's quote in there because of his own own circumstantial uh, you know, things that happened. So, you, know, you know, the problem, Mansoor Bhai, you know, the issue yeah. is at that time, it wasn't easy for people to access books. People couldn't just simply walk up to a library and pull out Tafsir Ibn Kathir and check it. Okay? It wasn't easy for people to do that. So Mirza could easily make up these things and he expected people to believe these things. Okay? You know, it wasn't easy to, to get a Nuskha of Sahih al-Bukhari uh, uh, in the 19th century. Okay? My ancestors had a library of uh, all these old prints from the 19th century. I still possess them. I have them in my library. And, uh, you know, they had to go a long way to get these books sometimes. It wasn't easy to acquire books at that time. Books were very expensive, first of all. They were very expensive. Okay. Secondly, they were only available to scholars and a very limited amount of people. So Mirza could easily make up these quotes, these claims, and get away with them because people wouldn't be able to uh, uh, confirm or check. Now that everything has been printed, there is no way, there is no way if an Ahmadi was to embark on a quest of checking everything in Mirza's book and remain, a, uh, remain an Ahmadi. It is impossible. I don't understand. I don't see why a sincere Ahmadi who is to embark on this journey to check out every single statement Mirza made in his books, uh, to check the authenticity and the, and the correctness uh, of the attributions. So any person who comes out looking for these uh, these attributions and authenticity would not remain an Ahmadi. This is a challenge, if you're sincere. But if you're like a missionary who's getting paid a lot of money, who, who, who simply has no other uh, source of income, uh, and I'm not saying I'm not saying this is entirely their motivation. I'm not saying that. I'm not making that claim. It is possible that they may genuinely uh, believe that you know what they're doing is a good thing. Okay, but come on, guys. Everyone has a conscience. Everyone has a conscience. Wallahi, my conscience is very clear. I have no doubt that Mirza was a liar. I have no doubt because I've seen black and white lies. And I can't see how... Uh, so, so let's, let's share some of those lies uh, a bit more. So, inshallah... Why, can, I, can, I, can I just mention shall I, one thing before I move on next point, inshallah? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, listen to this point very carefully. As I've already alluded to this point, you might have noticed one thing. Whenever any of the Muslim, you know, they want to go to the books of Mirza Sahib, Immediately, the Murabiyun, the clerics, they want to go to Quran and Sunnah. And once we are not, you know, towing their line, they give them, a oh, look, they are running away from Quran and Sunnah. That's not true. Let's get the facts right. The problem is, we are having a person with a claim, Mirza Sahib, okay? And he is giving us the criterion, okay? We are judging him or his truth according to his own criterion. And last thing I want to mention is this, because uh, Bashir Bhai mentioned that because Mirza Sahib were taught by different teachers, that's why he has to come up with this idea, because he wanted to give the complete resemblance between the first Messiah and the second Messiah. I know that. Now look at this one. Look at the beauty in this one. You know, he, inshallah, reference is my responsibility. Mirza Sahib has given two statements. One statement is he has no teachers. 
because why you know why you know why because he wants to give the impression that because i am the second coming of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i am kind of ummi as well unlettered prophet okay now in other of his statement he has given the names of his teachers my dear ahmadiyya think about this he is giving you two statements in one statement he is claiming that i am not taught under any teachers okay in the second statement he is giving you the names of his teachers and references are my responsibility inshallah i will give you now what is it which one is it you know that's the problem anything you want to discuss everything has so jumbled and complex that you you, you touch upon one thing you went on 10 10 10 tangents yeah before you go into the next example I mean, I'm telling you those that Ahmadi missionaries that were watching. I know you're watching. I can clearly see you. You are watching our stream, and yet, for some reason, which is known to you and me, that you're not willing to come and, and you're not not willing to, you're not able to come and join this stream. Listen. Because your murabbis have told you not to come to this stream. Yes, Let your murabbis okay. join this stream. No, Let no, your murabbis be invited. Mansur bhai, their silence speaks louder than their words. Yes. Their silence speaks thousands, thousands of words. Okay, they don't need to be here. They know. And all the Ahmadis watching right now, all the Ahmadis watching right now, this is the reality. This is the reality. Every time Mirza was challenged when he was alive, he ran away. Okay, he did not come to face uh, any of these Muslim scholars who challenged him to debates. Okay, including Pir Mehrali Shah and Molana Amratsari. Okay, both of these they challenged him to debates. Okay, we know the history. We have been reading, Alhamdulillah. And look, this is not a new thing. These uh, missionaries uh, and uh, the prophet they follow have been doing. They just don't have answers. And if they don't have answers, listen. You know what they, the game they have been playing? I just now that it's a conversation between us. Let's talk about this phenomenon. Okay, but then, okay. by can we establish the evidence first? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we can continue because yeah. the, otherwise yeah. the stream Definitely. will go on and on. The evidence. Let's go yeah. to the evidence so that we can actually talk with substance rather than us just talking in yeah. the air. Yeah. Just bring up the hadith. The, can can, okay. can we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, now we are going to move on to those examples. And by the way, we are selecting few examples because otherwise we have dozens of examples. Okay. Now, now we are going to move on to those particular cases where Mirza Sahib not only has lied, but unfortunately lied upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Adnan Bai has reminded us of that hadith. That warning many a time that whoever lies upon our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam deliberately, it is as though as this person is preparing his destination in Jahannam. Okay, look how severe the matter is. Now we are going to present the first case study in which we believe he is lying. If any murabbi want to defend, this is your chance. Okay, let me share the screen, inshallah. I mean, not that we haven't demonstrated all the lies before, um, but is this it is going to be. Screen, yeah, inshallah, it's a blank it's screen at the screen moment. Now. But bring your. Yeah. Uh, so we want to. We want to consolidate with evidence again and again, so that people can see clearly in the last few streams as we've done cumulatively enough examples to demonstrate that he is indeed an imposter, a false prophet, a charlatan, because someone who has been demonstrated over and over again, I mean, this is not new. I mean, this is in the social media times we are bringing to you because we are ex having an exchange with the Qadianis. Our scholars in the past have done that. It's not a new thing that this is being done. This has been already demonstrated. So people know it. But for some reason, Qadiani Jamaat or Ahmadi Jamaats, they are, you know, because of, wow, 30% and 6 point, whatever, all this, you know, they're having all this, you know, economic um, resources to pump within their, you know, you know, missionary activities. And that's why they're, they're saying, okay, we're now growing. 
But actually what it is, as you can see, these are all deception and trickery. So let me see if we can... Um, this will go down in history. This in will go down. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you... Um, you uh, yeah. <laughs> is, can you see... Uh... No, you need to bring back... Okay, bring back to your original... Uh, well, try while, you guys, while you guys are looking into it, uh, I just want to keep saying these things that they have been yeah. saying that we are running away from uh, Akida. We're not discussing the death of Isa alayhi salam or alleged death of Isa alayhi salam and the finality of prophethood. Uh, and we're going to Mirza and you're, you're behaving just like Christians when they come to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, they are attacking him. So we, we, we tell them we defend the Prophet. We have been defending the Prophet for the last 20 years. I, I, I mean, at least myself, Brother Mansoor, since the 90s, Brother Hashim, since the 2000s, okay? We've been at it for such a long time. If you watch our speakers' corner debates, okay, what are we doing? We're defending the Prophet. Every time they raise a question, we address it head on, head on. We don't tell them, oh, let's go and debate something else. Let's talk, start, let's talk about Trinity. They have a question about the Prophet's life and his credibility. We say, no, 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 you know what? Let's talk about the Trinity. Let's talk about the Trinity. How would, how would that sound? These guys, the reason why we're talking about Mirza is because Mirza is indefensible. That's why you guys are missing. That's why you guys are not here today. Your Murabis told you, don't you dare go because now they have found, they've realized what we have, what we possess. Okay, there you go. Got the screen back there's now, Alhamdulillah. One. There's another one. There you go. Okay, now, Alhamdulillah. Uh, this is basically... Uh, it is from the life of Mirza Sahib himself. And this is called the Review of Religion. And this is from September 1907, volume 9, page 349. And this is the original scan from that particular magazine. Okay. I will read, inshallah, in both Urdu and English. So let's begin with the English because this is the actual quotation. Our Holy Prophet, upon whom be peace and the blessings of God, also directed that when the plague made its, uh, its appearance in any town, the people living at the infected place should immediately evacuate it and that otherwise they would be fighting with God. So in a nutshell, in Urdu is saying, Ah Hazrat, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ne farmaya, کہ جب کسی شہر میں وبا نازل ہو تو اس شہر کے لوگوں کو چاہیے کہ بلا توقف اس شہر کو چھوڑ دے ورنہ خدا تعالیٰ سے لڑنے والے ٹھہرائے جائیں گے انشاءاللہ there is a context behind which I will come in a minute but for now we want Adnan by انشاءاللہ to explain for us this حدیث he quoted and we want the Ahmadis to tell us this حدیث and bring the حدیث okay so here, Mirza attributed information to the Prophet Sallallahu saying that the Prophet said, if there is a plague in a place, if you leave it, uh, then you are fighting against God. Okay? So, uh, the question is, okay, we know about the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said that if you are in a town, then don't leave it. Or if you are... Um, uh, in a place of plague, don't leave it. And if you are away from it, don't go to it. Okay? So, the part, uh, the part you are talking about, uh, in Dazbai. Yeah. The part where he says that you are fighting Allah. What, what's the Urdu word? Sorry. He says, Varna khuda ta'ala se khuda ta'ala So, this is the information which Mirza is attributing the, to the Prophet Where is it? Where is it? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man And the Prophet said, وسلم, anyone who attributes lies to me, or lies on me, or lies about me, let him take his place in hellfire. Okay? So that's why, that's why attributing information to the Prophet ﷺ, which he never said, Okay, is lying on the prophet, and when you do it deliberately, when you do it deliberately, 
like Mirza did in the hadith about Kishan and Kanahiya. Okay, that we will come to as well in a second. Okay, if you do it deliberately, then you are a person of Jahannam. Come on, guys, all the Ahmadi brothers and sisters listening and watching. Okay, this information, this part is not from the Prophet. Okay, so Mirza is attributing this particular hadith. That the Prophet said people should leave the town of plague. Correct, guys? Is that what you understand from this? Yes? Yes. Yes. On the contrary, what we have from the Prophet is what in the Azwai? Jo hadith hai, jo asal hadith hai, Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa ki. Yes. The original teaching of the Prophet, what is it? As we all know, the original teachings in our deen are that if you are in a place of plague already, do not leave that place. But if you are not there, don't go there. Okay? okay. So these are the original instructions. Now, here's the point, non by very interesting wait, wait, point. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. Can Hashim please find that original hadith and post it? Hashim I will bring from the Mirza's book himself. I'll bring it. Okay, okay. Mirza wrote about it himself. Okay. Yes, Good. yes, yes. That's, that's the reason. This was my next point. Brothers okay. and sisters, listen very carefully. In this particular case, I'm going to present my point that this is a deliberately fabrication of hadith. You know why? Please listen my reasons very carefully. I'm going to bring on the screen, inshallah, very soon, after, in, in, in a couple of minutes, Mirza Sahib knew the actual teaching. And he has quoted the actual teaching. Okay, now, in this wait, particular wait. Inshallah, I, I bring, I bring, I bring. In okay. this particular case, in this particular case, why he changed it? Listen, everybody very carefully. The British government, they actually issue some instructions. Before you get to why, you can explain the why, one second. Before you get to why, we know for a fact that this is a lie. We have no doubt that this is a lie. Because not only that, it directly contradicts the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu it actually attributes a lie to him. It actually attributes a, uh, attributes a lie to him. Before we get into why and the context of why Mirza made this up, first thing we have to establish it. Is it there? Did the Prophet I bring it. Uh, I basically bring it the, 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 that he knew the hadith. Yes. Okay. So Mirza knew the actual hadith where the Prophet said, if when a, when a plague strikes you, if you are in a town, don't leave it. And if you are outside, don't go to it. Here Mirza in direct contradiction to that hadith of the Prophet, okay, says or attributes this information to the Prophet Sallallahu that if there is a plague in a town, then you have to leave it without delay. Otherwise, you are fighting Allah. Otherwise, you are against Allah. Okay. So. And he claims, he claims that Rasulullah Islam said this. Yes. Prophet yeah, Islam said this. Uh, he basically claiming exactly the opposite of what Rasulullah Islam said. Firstly saying yeah. Rasulullah Islam said this when he didn't. So he lied against the Prophet Islam. And also exactly. he lied that Prophet Islam said this when he said the opposite. So two lies in here. Yes. Absolutely. So basically what he's trying to do is, unfortunately, Allah forbid, okay, he's trying to make the Prophet look like uh, Audhu Billah, some Audhu Billah a liar. It's on he's the screen, to... Imtiaz Bai, the hadith. I bring it, inshallah, I bring it. Just give one second. I just want to bring the evidence that he knew the actual hadith. Sure, sure. Go ahead. You're going to put it up on the screen. Yes, inshallah. Now yeah, you, you can talk, inshallah. I can bring it. You can so, talk. So, so, so Imtiaz Bai, is looking for a quote from Mirza where Mirza himself acknowledges that no, the court is ready. I can't just actually, I'm struggling to share this. The court is yeah, ready. Yeah. I don't that's know. What I mean. yeah. That's what I mean. You're trying to put it up while you're trying to put it up on the screen. Okay. Mirza basically acknowledges in his writings that the hadith exists. This hadith where the Prophet said, when there is a plague, don't leave a town or if you're outside, don't go to it. Okay. 
and it's coming now, it's being loaded. Okay, this is the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which you can see on sunnah.com. Okay, the hadith is very, very uh, clear. Here. Let me read it. Okay, okay. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iza sami'tum bitta'oon bi ardin fala tadkhuluha wa iza waka'a bi ardin wa antum biha fala takhruju minha Allahu Akbar So hey, the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is and I will translate word by word Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet said إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ بِالتَّعُونَ بِأَرْضٍ If you hear about a plague in a land, فَلَا تَدْخُلُوهَا Do not enter it. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ بِأَرْضٍ And if it happens in a land, وَأَنْتُمْ بِهَا فَلَا تَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا And you are in it, don't exit from it. Don't leave it. Okay? And these are the exact words of the Prophet ﷺ, okay, as I translated them, right? So this is in basically Kitab al-Tib and Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 5728. Hadith 5728, the Hadith is there. So this is what the Prophet ﷺ taught. Not what Mirza attributed to the Prophet saying, the Prophet Muhammad said that if a plague hits your place or your town or your city, you leave it without delay. He is actually teaching something exactly opposite the Prophet ﷺ taught and attributing it to him. Attributing it to him and saying if you don't leave without delay, then you're fighting Allah. That you're against Allah. Basically, you're a disbeliever. You're a disbeliever. Okay? So now this is a clear-cut lie Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani wrote attributing to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Where are the missionaries? Where are the murabbis now? Okay? Where are your games now? Where are your wafflings and you're running around the question? You know, you know why you're not here today? You know more than anyone else. You're not here today because you know there are no answers to these questions. How are you going to respond to this? Where's the hadith? Where is the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said this? I want to see it. Okay. So, uh, have you found that quote where Mirza actually acknowledges it? I have, I, I, uh, Mansoor Bhai, I have sent the file to you. Please, I'm struggling. I, I don't know how to use the share screen because I'm using a different laptop. So I'm struggling with that one. So please, uh, Mansoor Bhai, put this no. file, inshallah, on the screen and inshallah, people can see it. Okay, and and when Mansoor Bhai is doing that, let me talk at the same time so I can save people's time. Okay, brother, sister, listen very carefully. This is called Majmua Ishtiharat, volume 3, page 4, 6, 7. And this is the old edition. Listen what he said. Chunke ye amar mamnu hai ke taun zada log apne dihat ko chhod kar dusri jaga jaye. Isliye apni jamaat ke in tamam logo ko jo taun zada ilaka mein hai mana karta hu ke wo apne ilake se nikal kar kadiyan ya dusri jaga jane ka har giz kasat na kare aur dusro ko bhi roke aur apne makamat se har giz na hile. In English language he said. As it is prohibited that people impacted by plague leave their towns and go to another place. So if uh, so, I forbid the people of my Jamaat who are impacted by plague to leave their town to go to Qadiyan or to any other place. Don't leave your residences and stop others as well. And I have given you the reference. He is saying in the beginning, it is prohibited. This is my evidence. He knew that in, in Al-Islam, it is prohibited. So you can clearly see. And in the second quotation, which we just quoted, what he was saying, that the Prophet has said that when someone is a person in the city, he wants the people of the city to leave the city. Please note, 
directly attributing to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what he is saying the complete opposite of the hadith and the complete opposite of what he already have said and what is that that if there is a plague in any place immediately leave that place and if you don't leave that place it is as though as you are fighting against Allah and his messenger Very interesting. SubhanAllah. You know, how now, how brother, clear can you be? Yeah. Mansoor Bhai, I want you to please respond on this one. How? I mean, what would you say on this one? I mean, how clear can you be? I mean, so it, it really demonstrates that this man, this individual, has no shame in attributing to something Rasulullah which he didn't say. I'm quite saying so. There must be a, some some motive behind saying this, and this is where you are going to say there is a context behind why he said this. Yes. Because every every liar, every imposter, whenever he brings about something, there's a motive behind things. We know this, so perhaps we can learn something about this motive behind why he's bringing this. Okay, Mansoor boy. Basically, I have the I have the original scan from the resources of the Jamaat regarding this magazine. The context is the British government, they want people to leave their homes and to live in the open field in the tents. Now, we are not discussing is it good or bad. It's not our point. This was the instruction given by the British government. Now, Mirza Sahib has manufactured the hadith that can support what the British government wanted people to do. That is the context. If any Ahmadi cleric wants to challenge this, please bring it on. Exactly. But the, the, the big elephant in the room is he invented a lie against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he's doing that again and again and again. You know, and that really shows that, you know, he's just taking this like a mickey, uh, you know, just thinking that no one's going to catch his lies. Same thing that we, how we point out to the Christian missionaries I mean, now the Bible is accessible to everyone. You can't just simply, you know, deceive people saying, oh, the Bible said this or that, when we can go directly and, and, and see what indeed it says. Likewise, you have, alhamdulillah, gone into the writings of Mirza Qadian, and you have shown that this is how he has been deceiving and lying the people. But now the lying is being exposed. So there is no justification for any Ahmadis. To continue yes. to believe in a liar because someone who self-admittedly claims that he is a prophet and anyone who lies cannot be a prophet, you know, you have to take his own criteria and leave him. And, and for, you know, you know, you know Mansoor Bhai, if you can display the first page of this file, I can read something very important, the first page of this file. So please, brothers, sisters, look at this page. He's first of all, Quran has given us in surah number four. Verse 82. The verse goes like that. Then do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from any other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. So Quran is giving again. We are bringing the, dear Ahmadiyya community. Please note this point. Ahmadiyya cleric, they say, bring the Quran. Today, inshallah, the Quran is coming as the judge between us and them. Quran has given us a criterion that if a speech has contradiction in it, it cannot be from God. Did Mirza Sahib accept it? Listen what he said. Ruhani Khazain, volume number 10, page number 143. He said, Kisi Sachiyar, Sachiyar means truthful. Kisi Sachiyar, Akal Mand, or Saf Dil Insan ke Kalam mein har gist na kis nahi hota. हाँ अगर कोई पागल या मजनून या ऐसा मुनाफिक हो कि खुशामत के तौर पे हाँ में हाँ मिला देता हो तो इसका कलाम बेशक मुतनाकिस होता है व्हाट ही सेड देर कैन नेवर बी कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन इन द स्पीच ऑफ अ ट्रूथफुल रेशनल एंड क्लीन हार्टेड पर्सन हाउ एवर द स्पीच ऑफ अ क्रेजी मैड मैन अ हिपोक्रेट हु सेस टू अदर्स जस्ट एज अ फ्लैटरी his speech can undoubtedly be contradictory. Okay, look what criteria is given. Look at next one. Jute ke kalam mein tanakus zaroor hota hai. Ruhani Khazain, volume 21, page 275. What he said? 
speech of a liar necessarily contradicts necessarily contained contradiction he is giving you criteria allah is giving you a sign brother ahmadiya okay now then he says that is shakhs ki halat ek makhbootul hawas insaan ki halat hai ki ek khula tanakuz apne kalam mein rakhta hai this is ruhani khazain volume number 22 page 191 what he said in this quotation he said that he is like an insane person whose speech contain explicit contradiction now look look at all of these criterion okay and now we have given you in just so far only one case study there are more coming he is given quran gave us a criteria mirza sahib accepted the criteria what was the criteria there can never be the contradiction in the truthful speech okay and we have shown you for now one example of clear contradiction number 1 number 2 in this contradiction he is lying upon prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and number 3 we have given you circumstantial evidence that this is a deliberately manufacturing a hadith why we have quoted you he knew the original teaching only to make the british government happy the colonizers happy he manufactured the hadith is it the character of a prophet absolutely not absolutely not and and you so know what so let's continue with the other examples inshallah so that you know people can benefit from this because not every um you know muslim and no, i'm not talking about the ahmadis are aware of this so this will be inshallah an eye opener to all the muslims there when an ahmadi comes along trying to preach at them so they will be quite clear and saying, may, you know, maybe i'd not be want to comment on this one i think i'd not be want to comment on this one maybe yeah while yes. you're trying to find the other one uh, adnan man go ahead yes yes i mean look what what we're doing is we are putting up this evidence so that no one can deny it okay uh brother bashir has been doing it for for years upon years he's got the blog mashallah he's been putting up a lot of evidence on the blog uh, he's got the scans the original pages and now that the topic has opened up globally uh, due to our uh, interactions in the last month it is clear that a lot more uh, of these things are coming out and ahmadiya community is being made aware of this stuff you know i am very sure most ahmadi youth had no idea that this information exists or these contradictions exist or these false attributions to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam exist okay we are not just a bunch of bigots or bunch of molwis who have just blind hatred against the ahmadis we don't hate you we keep saying we don't hate you we just don't like the fact that you are following a cult or a liar okay this is no different to the nation of islam elaja muhammad and uh, you know david koresh that guy in in waco in the us that was a big like incident uh, brother uh, bashir can possibly better comment on that incident you know what happened to those people they were following a false prophet he ended up killing all of them okay uh, that that's a classic example there are and ahmadiyya you know is no different it's no different okay now when we point out these things we're not hating on you we're just simply trying to highlight this stuff so that you can see it you know to make up one hadith in the name of the prophet deliberately to make one hadith just make it up in the name of the prophet is a big crime it is and a now inshallah that yeah do that. the second one by second example is coming now before i read the example dear ahmadiyya community please listen one point carefully again we are going to establish number 1 he manufactured the hadith and number 2 he manufactured deliberately because he had a claim he has a position and he exactly manufactured the hadith to fit to that claim listen very carefully it is again on the screen already and this one is uh, uh, the, the 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 reference i'm going to give you inshallah first the, so you can check it out as well so it is ruhani khazain volume 17 page 404 listen very carefully hadithon mein saaf taur pe bataya gaya hai ke masih e maud ki takfir hogi number 1 aur ulama e waqt isko kafir thehrayenge aur number 2 number 3 aur kahenge 
کہ یہ کیسا مسیح ہے اس نے تو ہمارے دین کی بےکنی کر دی بائی دا وے دس ریفرنس واز روحانی خزائن والیم سیونٹین پیج ٹو ون تھری نیکسٹ ریفرنس از لیکن ضرور تھا کہ قرآن و حدیث کی وہ پیشن گوئیاں پوری ہوتی جن میں لکھا تھا کہ مسیح مؤد جب ظاہر ہوگا تو اسلامی علماء کے ہاتھ سے دکھ اٹھائے گا وہ اس کو کافر قرار دیں گے اس کے قتل کے فتوے جاری کیے جائیں گے اس کی سخت توہین کی جائے گی اس کو دار اسلام سے خارج اور دین کا تباہ کرنے والا خیال کیا جائے گا سو ان دیز ٹو کوٹیشن بائی دا وے دیز کوٹیشن آر فاؤنڈ ایوری ویئر ان دا بکس آف مرزا صاحب ناؤ پلیز لسن دس پوائنٹ ویری کیئرفلی وٹ ایور واز ہیپننگ ٹو مرزا صاحب آفٹر ہز کلیم ہی ایگزیکٹلی attributed that to hadith what he said number one he said it is explicitly prophesied in the hadith and quran number one that the islamic scholars they will mentally tortured and ridicule no no the let, me, let, me, let me let me let me let me do it word by word one second okay uh, uh, okay in the asbai this is what it says the book the first reference is from tohfa golarawiya page 74 Okay, in Rouhani Kazain, it is in volume 17, page 213. I hope the references are very clear so people know that we are not just making this up. Here Mirza states, Hadithon mein saaf tor per ye bhi patlaya gaya hai. It is clearly stated in many hadith ke Masih Maud ki bhi takfir hogi. that the promised messiah will be declared a kafir aur ulama e waqt isko kafir thehrayenge and the scholars of the time will declare him a, a disbeliever or a kafir aur kahenge ki ye kya masi hai and they will say that what kind of masi is this isne to hamare deen ki behkani kar di hai he has completely distorted or manipulated our faith okay This is the word-by-word word translation of this quote. So Mirza here is claiming that in many reports from the Prophet, Hadithon mein saaf tor par ye bat, bhi batlaya gaya hai. So he's claiming information that it is in the Hadith literature from the Prophet. When he says Hadithon mein, he's basically saying the Prophet has foretold or has warned that when the promised Messiah comes, he will be declared Hadithon. a kafir a disbeliever and the scholars of the time will declare him a disbeliever and they will say that this messiah what kind of messiah is this that he has completely distorted our faith this is tohfa golarawiya page 74 and the second just want, and yeah. can just say one thing here dear ahmadiyya community please note one very important point okay the point is this that whatever was happening to mirza sahib he exactly fabricated the hadith according to what was happening to him now if there are such a hadith bring it on yeah so and basically if there, are, if, if there are and if there are none the matter is closed he was yeah. lying upon prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so, why it is the deliberate lying because you can clearly see the circumstantial evidence that he was producing something that will benefit him Let, let's let's break it down imtiaz bhai okay what imtiaz bhai is saying is that these attributions by mirza are circumstantial what he's saying is that these attributions are circumstantial whatever his circumstances were uh, he would just forge information to uh, respond to his circumstances like he did with the plague reference he just made up a hadith in the name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophet said when then there is a plague leave the town immediately or you're fighting allah he just made this up because this was circumstantial here also what imtiaz by saying is that these attributions are circumstantial let's break this first quote down the first attribution it has a number of parts and we're going to see that if this information is found in any of the uh, hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he clearly states 
हदीसों में साफ तौर पर भी बतलाया गया है हदीसों में साफ तौर पर यह भी बतलाया गया है दैट इट इज इन द हदीस ऑफ द प्रोफेट सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ओके दैट नंबर 1 द प्रॉमिस मसाया विल बी डिक्लेयर्ड अ डिसबिलीवर वेयर आर दीस हदीस वेयर आर दीस रिपोर्ट्स फ्रॉम द प्रोफेट नंबर 1 क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 पॉइंट नंबर 2 the scholars of the time will declare him a disbeliever where are these hadith or where is this particular point in any of the hadith okay then these scholars will say that what kind of messiah is this that he has distorted our faith where is this information in any of the hadith literature any of the hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so three points number one the promised messiah will be declared a disbeliever non existent number 2 that the ulama of the time will declare him to be a disbeliever non existent number 3 that these ulama will say that what kind of messiah is this that he has distorted the faith non existent in the hadith literature prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not teach any such things and not my number 4 and not my number 4 the scholars yeah. islamic scholars will declare that kill him oh uh, no that's the next quote that's the next yeah, quote yeah. Well, no, okay. we haven't. I'm just dealing with Tohfa Golarviya. Okay. Tohfa okay. Golarviya, page seventy-four, or Rohani Khazain, volume seventeen, page two one three. That's the quote I'm dealing with right now. Okay. We have broken it down. We have just okay. broken it down that this is an outright lie by Mirza. Mirza Golam Ahmed Kadiani. You want it? You want you? You know, Kadiani missionaries on Twitter are saying, "May Allah guide you to the truth." May Allah guide you to see light. May Allah guide you to see Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani as a prophet. You want us to believe this man? You want us to believe this man who's making up uh, attributions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he went along? Hadithon me saaf tor par ye batlaya gaya hai. Literally, let me translate again. It is clearly stated in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadithon, plural, many. it is clearly stated in many of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he gives three points in this particular attribution there is not one hadith with this information not one not one you want to advise okay? now my please you know one one thing very important my dear the reason i am again and again addressing particularly to the ahmadiyya community why because this is common knowledge in the muslims but because our ahmadiyya community they have been deprived of this common knowledge and listen this point very carefully this was a strategical move that instead of using isa ibn maryam the term was coined masih e maud our muslim community is not waiting for a, for a promised messiah no we are waiting for the isa ibn maryam Jesus is the son of Mary to come back okay it's, we are not waiting for the jewish people are waiting for the promise messiah exactly the... that is very that is very important point this is called the academics dear brother that it is the jewish community because even the christians are not waiting because they have accepted the isa al islam was the christ and muslim no, accepted the promise messiah the promise yeah, messiah even though the muslim come. and the christian they have different understanding but we both agree on one thing that isa ibn maryam he was the promised messiah given in their books it is only allah, the jewish people who are waiting allah calls him that in the quran in tiaz bhai allah calls him a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa qala al masih ya bani israil u'budu allah rabbi wa rabbakum innahu man yushrik billah فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار. This is Quran سورة المائدة where Allah says the Messiah وقال المسيح يا بني إسرائيل. So Allah is calling Isa عليه السلام the Messiah. So the Jews were awaiting a Messiah, the promised Messiah that was Isa عليه السلام. So the Christians accepted that and the Muslims accept that. Okay. the jews are still waiting for the promised messiah because they don't believe jesus to be a promised messiah they don't believe jesus to be a prophet of god okay so mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani picked up this jewish 
expectation and he basically threw it at Muslims because he wanted to claim to be a prophet. Clearly, he wanted to be a prophet of God. Okay, so coming back to this question of making of false information, you know what? You know why this this particular uh, quote from Tuhfa Golarawiya is a problem because he gives a specific reference. Haditho me, saaf batlaya gaya hai. If he had said that it was taught or it was said. It would be a different thing. It would be a different thing. Okay. But when he says, Hadith means the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. the words of the Prophet, generally speaking. Okay. Hadith means the information that comes directly from the Prophet. So where is it? Where is it? None of those points are found in the Hadith literature. Moving on to the next point very quickly. Okay. Then the next quote is from Arbaeen. Arbaeen. Yeah. Arbaeen number three. Yeah. Page 17. 17. Yeah. Okay. And Rouhani Khazain, volume 17. Volume 17, page 404. 404. What does it say? What does it say? I'm going to read now. لیکن ضرور تھا کہ قرآن حدیث کی وہ پیشن گوئیاں پوری ہوتی ہیں. But it was important or it was necessary that those prophecies in the Quran and Hadith be fulfilled. جن میں لکھا تھا جن میں لکھا تھا کہ مسیح معود جب ظاہر ہوگا تو اسلامی علماء کے ہاتھ سے دکھ اٹھائے گا. In which those prophecies that are reported from the Quran and Hadith in which it was written that the promised Messiah will be hurt by the Islamic scholars. Wo isko kafir karar denge aur iske katal ke fatwe diye jayenge. They will declare him to be a disbeliever and they will give fatwas or rulings uh, to kill him. Or iski sakht toheen ki jayegi. And he will be humiliated or disrespected. Or isko daira Islam se kharij or deen ka tabah karne wala khayal kiya jayega. And he will be declared to be uh, outside of Islam and he will be considered someone who destroyed uh, the religion. Okay, the reference is Arbaeen, number 3, page 17, Rouhani Khazain, volume 17, page 404. Now, do you know why these missionaries are not here today? Now, do you, now you realize, now you realize why these missionaries are not attending this stream today. This is why. What are they going to say to this? What responses will have? I think they probably got some intelligence <laughs> that don't don't turn up to this particular stream because you're going to be completely intellectually wiped out. Intellectually. Yeah, Abhanbhai, there's someone yeah. uh, in the back chat. Yeah. He's an Ahmadi, but yeah. he doesn't want to discuss and defend anything. He's just willing to discuss something else and another stream and so on. So I've been having a chat with him. And yeah. subhanAllah, instead of you know manning up in, in you know having the courage to come and, and discuss, he wants to discuss some other peripheral issues. So, so clearly him. he knows this is this is all true. What we're saying is true, clearly. Exactly. Because there's no defense. How how are they yeah. going to defend by Adnan yeah. I want to point out something very important. Again, I am especially addressing my beloved Ahmadiyya community. Please listen this point very carefully. This is how these clerics and Murabiyun, they are coming you down that, oh, all of that was already prophesied about the Messiah, that he will be, you know, given the mental torture, he will be dead. But guess what? All of these are lies. In, in other words, they are lying to you in order to satisfy you that Mirza okay. Ghulam Ahmad Sahib was the true Messiah. Please note this point. They are lying to you for 150 years almost. Okay. Please wake up Ahmadiyya community. Yes. And you know what? Here in the second quote as well, what does he do? He attributes this information with absolute shamelessness to the Quran and Hadith. He says, Okay, that the Quran and Hadith has these prophecies. What prophecies? Jin mein likha tha ke Masih Maud jab zahir hoga, 
तो इस्लामी उलमा इसको इस्लामी उलमा के हाथ से दुख उठाएगा दैट वेन द प्रोमिस मसाया अपेयर्स द इस्लामिक विल हर्ट हिम दे विल डिक्लेयर हिम टू बी ए डिसबिलीवर and they will give fatwa against him of qatl or of of being killed and they will disrespect him severely they will declare him outside of islam and he will be seen or he will be considered someone who destroyed the deen okay none of this information o oh, ahmadi community o oh, qadiani brothers and sisters in humanity may allah guide you may allah open your eyes and hearts none of this information is neither in the quran nor in the hadith none of this is there produce it produce and it and adan bhai one thing i want to really highlight here yeah. instead of the ahmadiya clerics sitting in their own homes and doing <clears throat> five hour stream to explain this point this is the opportunity okay be man enough come here and defend here so this is there's, there's, there's no um, mohammed and adnan yeah yeah could interrupt So this particular Ahmadi on the back chat is very insistent. So I'm going to give him an opportunity, two minutes, to address this ex- specific example that we have put on the screen. I am not going to give opportunity to discuss anything else. So Reza, you're speaking on the back chat. No one's listening because no one can he- hear it. Only when we bring you on the panel, then we can hear you. So I'm going to bring you on the panel, and you will have. Two minutes to respond to this example too. No waffling, no indirect talking about anything else, no other discussion, feedback, comments on other this stream. Only on this very point. So now I'm joining you. So let me just. So here. Assalamu alaikum. Let me remove. Malikum. Wassalamu ala manita wal huda raza. Assalamu alaikum. Then by Imtiaz by. I know I, I forget your name. Uh, Amity fact check. What's your name? I'm sorry. I we can go back and forth. Bashir, Bashir. Bashir, how are you? I'm sorry I don't have a fitted on today. Okay. So, thank you for letting me on. A uh, few clarifications. I am an Amity Muslim. I am a Sunni. I am a convert from a Sunni household. I was raised in a Sunni upbringing. I am literally your target audience, right? Yeah. So go ahead and answer the question. Thank okay. you very much. So let's. I, so I've been. So Alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity, Adnan Pai and Imtiaz Pai, to watch your streams with Razi and with Tahir, and I've I've watched all the parts on both sides to give you a objective perspective, right? Yeah. So but what I, we're I, asking I, today, sorry to interrupt. Please, please, please. I please. No, 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 no. Me. Thank you for the sorry time. to interrupt. I'm a Muslim. I'm, no worries. I'm being pretty respectful, so please. I am asking you directly to answer you're, the you're question. You're, you're censoring me. Today. I'll yeah. make my yeah. point, and okay. then I'll go. Well, let me, I don't want but, to hear your but, point. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Have, no, no, I'm not by. I'm sorry. Oh, no. He's no, no, in the back chat. I am not going no, to allow. Bring him, bring him no, back. I will. I will. I will. With one condition. Today's stream is for the Ahmadis to respond, to respond to the questions that are posing. And, to and, defend and, and Surbai, trust me i'm going to i'm going to make him answer the question bring him on yeah yeah but adnan bai if he keeps on waffling talks about he anything else i mean he's speaking he while he's he in the back chat i will remove him yes no i, I, I can't me... tolerate any wafflers today or any other streams in the future inshallah i, agree. I will bring I agree. him back he needs Man, to Surbai, respond Surbai, to Surbai, the questions Surbai. Also, before he comes, inshallah, very quickly, inshallah, no. in thirty seconds. Now, may just thirty seconds, please. Okay, my point is, brothers, go and watch the stream they did on their official channel, and see that were they allowing people to go off topic? They were clearly saying that this is today's topic. This is the question. Address this one. Use the same standard, brother. Have respect. Yes. yes. Let so, him on. Ad- Adnan, let him on. I will let him on, but he's my humble request. Yes. I will not tolerate any off-topic discussion. I don't want it, to hear no, any no off-topic. I Let don't want to know. I don't hear me out. Um, 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 uh, there is nothing done by. Yes. I don't yes. want to hear his commentaries of the past. He won't. How his observations are in the last few sessions. None of that. I don't want. I'm not interested in hearing any of that. Neither are any of the brothers and sisters who are watching. Okay. We are going to give him the opportunity to directly engage with the questions of today. two examples if he is able to welcome ahlan wa sahlan if not i am sorry not today so i'm bringing him back again yes 
Raza, 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 wait. Raza, I'm wait. I have 30 seconds, Raza, so let me Raza, just wait. make my point. Can I, can I, you can I, can minutes, you hear me? You spent, no, no, hold on. You, you can hear no, no, me, Raza, right? No, no, four Raza, minutes censoring Raza, can you hear me for a second? Raza, can you hear me for a second? Raza, can you hear me for a second? Raza, you look like a decent guy. Can I speak to you? I am a decent guy. Okay, let me have a conversation with you. Raza, I would like to, I would like to ask you a question. Raza, you just claimed that you left Sunni Islam for Qadiania, right? Now, I, I was would, born, would you like, I was born Raza, in, I Raza, was born Raza, in conversation, in conversation, upbringing. one second, one second. Would you like more people to join? You would. I know you would. I know you would. Can you now answer our sincere questions? Mirza attributed information to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is he gone? No, no, no. I put the screen on. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hi, hi. I'm here. I'm here. So, 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 so Raza, 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 we can talk about the sky is blue. There are beautiful birds in the world. There are mountains. There are rivers. There are there is wildlife in Africa. No, no, no. Uh, we're going to talk about your streams. Quiet we're not rhinos. Talk about one second, else. Raza, Raza, talk about Raza, Raza quiet, streams. quiet, quiet. Raza, quiet for a second, please. Sensor. You're a decent Sensor. guy. Let's not let's not have a fighting match. Let's so let me have my minute, bro. Wait, you will, you will, Raza, Raza, Raza. Wait for a second. We can I bet have you all won't even give me my minute. I, 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 I bet Raza, you won't give Raza. me my minute. Okay, this go video, ahead, and then I want my minute. Raza, what's the point, Raza? What's the point of of going on like this when there's no point of doing this? Let's let's happy. see. Let's let's let. We are giving you an opportunity to defend your prophet. He, okay, okay. okay. He made up information. In the name of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are asking you, Raza, have the decency, which I hope you do, to either admit that such information doesn't exist. He made a mistake. Okay. He was not accurate in attributing this information or produce it. Which one are you going to do? I'm going to respond to you, Adnan Bhai, because I'm a big fan of yours. As an Amity Muslim, I've watched your streams. And I want to give you some feedback because I'm a Sunni Muslim, Amity convert. I am your that. target audience. Okay. We can do that another time. I just, just ask you a you question. Can, you can just give me 30 <laughs> seconds and then I'll, inshallah, you guys can continue to do your stream. It's almost no, if you respect time here on the me, East Coast. <laughs> Raza, so if, if you, you give me 30 me, seconds, I'll, I'll make my point as an Amity Muslim and then I'll let you guys carry on. No, wait, wait. Raza, the problem is, Raza. I've, I've complimented you. I've given you peace Thank and greetings. Thank you so much. Uh, Allah so how about you give me 30 you. seconds? Allah and you get a perspective from the amity Raza, watching your stream. Raza, seriously. Otherwise, have... if you're directing the conversation, it's not a conversation. It's censorship okay. and you're putting no, words Raza, in look. Okay, okay. Anand, is it... let's be clear. You I don't want, want to want hear the perspective of an amity Muslim. I want this you, you want. You don't um... want a perspective of an amity Muslim. Okay, you, you, look, you clearly Raza, don't. If, I make if you, you on want the perspective, screen... I'll give it to you. But we're, we're Anand, also, let's be clear. Raza, our let me our speak. mosques around the world are open Raza, to you and me, your friends for a face-to-face -face conversation anytime. Raza, so if we met on the street, let's meet let at my mosque. Let me speak, mosque. Raza, so that anywhere. we can have a fruitful conversation, Raza. This is not a conversation. Let's have a fruitful conversation. Sorry. Raza, I'm going to answer the question. I've, I've just removed him. He, he's a waffler. So Adnan, by I, I told you. Uh, no, From look, the chat. I want everyone to see. I want everyone to see. Look how how much, I mean, I wanted people to see this. Not that I wanted this outcome. I don't want this outcome. I don't like it. Okay, when we have to throw people out like this. But look, try to understand, Ahmadi brothers and sisters watching right now, try to understand, this is the reality. This is the reality. Never will they address questions directly. They will dance around. around. They will talk about sky. They will talk about mountains. They will talk about rivers. They talk about hair on your head. They will talk about anything. They will talk about, but they will not address the question directly. I asked him a direct question. Either Mirza attributed this question to the Prophet falsely, or you produce it. And he's not he's not addressing it. Mansur Bai, allow him another chance for 10 seconds. If I've kicked him out from the back Is chat. Gone? No, no, Is I have kicked him out from the back chat. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I cannot tolerate this kind of waffling. I mentioned to you from before. This is not here. Not in Dawa wise anymore. Let, let Mansoor me, Bhai, uh, Mansoor Bhai, can me, I just ask you? Uh, Mansoor yeah. Bhai, uh, yeah. inshallah, as people already know, instead of just going on and on on the Hadith fabrication, which means, as you know, we have the complete file, it's already with you, inshallah, we will be keep quoting more Hadith, but for now, can we just uh, open up the file uh, which I send you on is contradiction, 
let the channel let the people see the, no, the no. other file the other file are, are we are we moving on from hadith are we moving on from no, no 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 the, the, the same topic the same topic but a different perspective the other file my mansoor by the other file which which the, one, the, one, I, the one i put uh, the one you put before and if it's if, called, if uh, any ahmadi if any ahmadi wants to come in to talk to us and address the point directly you're most welcome brothers and sisters in humanity we have nothing but sympathy and compassion you know if we if you were to meet us on the street you would you would find us to be very nice people every single person here seriously i'm telling you are nice people we are very polite people we are very gentle people but we just don't like bs you know to 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 put it out in abbreviations we Is don't that like the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. from from the beginning from the beginning please okay so my brothers and sisters this was just like a case against mirza sahib in the light of his own writing and i have quoted you one example when he gave two completely contradictory statements on the issue of plague in one statement he said don't leave that place in the other one he said immediately leave that place there was clear contradiction we have given you the perspective as well that why he made the information up now i want to give you a second example as well please uh, 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 the, the third page will show by third page okay look at this example he says in ruhani khazain volume 3 page 353 ye to masih hai ki apne watan galilee jaakar fauth ho gaya and then next uh, again ruhani khazain volume 8 page 296 lut to ye hai ki hazrat isa alaihi salam ki bilad e sham mein qabar maujood hai what he said in english language this is the messiah who passed away in his hometown galilee then he said that it is interesting that the grave of isa ibn maryam alaihi salam and this time he used the word isa so you cannot play the game of cmo or said okay isa ibn maryam's grave is in syria now look at statement number b ruhani khazain volume 19 page 16 aur tum yakinan samjho ke isa ibn maryam fauth ho gaya hai aur kashmir sri nagar mahalla khaniyar mein iski qabar hai what he said and have certainty that isa ibn maryam alaihi salam has passed away and his grave is in kashmir shrinagar in mahalla in the vicinity of khaniyar okay now obviously everybody can see these are two clearly contradictory statement number 1 number 2 guess what not one of them both of them are lies for sure now look he gave us a criteria and quran gives us a criteria the uh, the speech of a truthful person must not contain contradiction there is a quranic criteria i want you people to see is it contradiction or is it not what would you say anan bhai you want to comment absolutely so here shall we translate first or sh- you know i i did already if you, if you want to i did already actually okay so it is clear that there are contradictions right and you know one of the basic criteria in islam the the verse of the quran clearly states that if something is not from allah it would have many contradictions in it okay allah says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim afala yatadabbarun alquran walau kana min indi ghayri allah la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira do you not ponder upon the quran that if it was from another source than allah then there would be many contradictions in it many discrepancies in it and this is what we find in the writings of mirza riddled with contradictions riddled with contradictions i want brother uh, bashir to come in and say something he's been silent for a very long time i really want him to participate in this stream so 
what's your take on what, what has been presented so far, Bagha Bashir? Why, I mean, if you see this as an impartial Ahmadi, okay, if someone who is a normal masjid going Ahmadi, who doesn't know much about the writings, who doesn't know much about the writings of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, uh, how would such a person feel? Well, uh, they they would go through his writings and find the the all the contradictions. I mean, the contradictions on prophethood are the biggest ones. You know, he he contradicted himself for twenty years. In like, there's like hundreds of references where where it, or, you know, are there multiple editors here that have have did, did uh, have like differing beliefs? You know, is that what it is? Is there an internal problem? Uh, Nuruddin says no. Uh, um, Isa Aslam has a father, Astaghfirullah, and Mobi Abdul Karim says no. Uh, 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 insects and hermaphrodites just create themselves, and now we're getting two different. Uh, so that's what I think it is. It, it's clear that Mirza Ghulam didn't write anything. It was his team and their internal wranglings, and that played out in the split. So uh, that's exactly what this is, brother. And one more thing, the Portuguese made up stories too about Jesus, about St. Thomas coming to India. They even built a church uh, on the west coast of India. Uh, it's absurd. It, it never happened. Um, but these are the types of, but they substantiated their co uh, a colonization of India through this. They said since St. Thomas came here and we have a connection with him, we deserve to be here. So this is what we're, we're seeing play out, brother. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, uh, any Ahmadi who is sincere, who is interested in finding the truth, if you're not interested, there's no point of even listening to the stream and watching us talk, okay? But if you are interested in truth, just at least, at least go and check these references. At least go and check out what the case is. What are we trying to convey, okay? The, the Murabis and these missionaries have an audacity to go to Muslims knowing all of this. How can you do that? Do you not have a conscience? Do you not even think? Afala ta'kilun, as the Quran says. Afala yatafakkarun. Afala yandurun. The Quran repeatedly reminds us to use our aql. And Allah gives signs, you know. Allah is not going to come down himself personally to grab your hand, take you by hand and take you to a Sunni masjid or, or, a, or a mainstream Muslim masjid. Allah will show you signs. And here Allah is showing you signs through us, through people like us. We are sitting here late night trying to convey this message to you guys. This is for you, the Ahmadi community. Muslims already believe in Allah and his messenger. Okay, they are already Muslims. We are reaching out to you for you to understand and realize that this guy, this person, okay, if he wrote all of this, he is a grand liar. He's a grand fabricator. He's a grand manipulator, deceiver. You name it. Okay, he condemns himself. He condemns himself. He repeatedly said that if someone has lied once, it's not trustworthy, cannot be trusted. Okay, and then he said, Kanjar or Waladu Zina Kelane Wale Bi Jood Bolte Sharmainge. That people, even if even those who are bastards, will not lie. I mean, sorry, ex ex excuse my my language. I have to really use this language for, for, for to, 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 to present the actual meaning of his words. He said, even they will be ashamed of lying. And he was lying without shame against the Prophet of Allah. Against the Quran. Okay. Here in this example as well, you can see that there are there are clear contradictions. There are clear contradictions. So if there's by summarize again, inshallah, and we can move on to the next example, inshallah. Uh, uh Mansoor Bhai, can you please go on the top of on the very first page of this file? Is it uh yeah. yes, this one, this one. So my dear brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya. Let's wrap up this point. Please listen. Mirza Sahib himself gave you a criteria. What was the criteria? He said, Jute ke kalam mein tanaku zarur hota hai. Ruhani Khazain, volume 20. Uh, let me open my file. Ruhani Khazain, uh, volume number. Yes, uh, yes. Volume number 21. 
page number 275 what he said speech of a liar necessarily contains contradictions right now in one statement he said that the grave of isa ibn maryam is in syria and then the next statement he said it is in kashmir shrinagar you can all understand brother these are two factually contradicting statement about one subject matter right first of all both of them are a lie none of them is true but at the same time both of them are contradictory now listen very the argument is premise a mirza sahib said that speech of a liar necessarily contains contradiction premise b speech of mirza sahib contains contradiction the the logical conclusion is mirza sahib was a liar now please tell us what else we can say we let you think about this and last point before inshallah we move on very important point please text message to your murabbis your clerics that do not sit in your in your rooms in your own studios be a man come here face and let go back and forth so people can see what is the truth you know you know what they're going to say tomorrow oh adnan rashid didn't come to our stream therefore we boycotted the stream this is going to be the excuse okay that's going to be the excuse well you know what no problem let people see we are still going on with our education the purpose is education okay and you know they're going to now what they're going to do is they're going to make long streams upon streams long winded streams marathons waffling and uh, an avalanche of metaphors to do away with these allegations so they're going to take clips from our stream and they're going to sit in their comfortable uh you know space uh, in the comfort zone and they're going to address these questions without being um questioned you know uh brother vashir are you a bruce lee fan of course uh mike tyson more but i'll, I'll take bruce actually lee. actually adnan bhai adnan bhai before we go to inshallah bruce lee and mike tyson let me let me give people inshallah one more example of wait, wait, his wait 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 look i i don't i don't want to hold back the joke okay we can come to the example okay and and there was this movie i used to watch as a kid and and to the dragon okay i think this was bruce lee's last movie there's a scene there's a fight scene in that in that movie where uh, his uh, his opponent bruce lee's opponent his name is ohara okay he comes and he punches a board to scare to scare bruce lee he punches a board <laughs> to scare bruce lee and and bruce lee responds he states boards don't hit back boards <laughs> don't hit back so these guys they're going to go on a long stream okay and, and they want us to join the streams we're not going to do that we're not going to do we're not going to come and listen to your half an hour speeches and then you give us like 3 minutes or 4 minutes and 5 minutes to respond to in half an hour speech or five speeches for that matter we're not going to do that okay we didn't do that to you when you came to our stream we gave you 2 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes 2 minutes so that is fair it's a fair conversation i have got a lot of things to say brother imtiaz has got a lot of things brother mansoor is a scholar okay hashim is a is a battle hardened debater you know mashallah these guys are all qualified debaters and and islamic preachers they have a lot to say but all of us we did the decent thing we gave them 2 minutes and then we spoke for 2 minutes these guys they deliver long speeches and they want us to listen to their the long wind long winded waffling and uh, and basically... by and not by i want to point out something very important regarding their behavior they are adopting in yeah. the last stream how much time we gave to razillah almost 3 hour and 15 minutes okay exactly. and in this exactly. and in this time he was given the opportunity to share his screen to make his point are we still not giving them the time my dear yeah. brother sister please be fair be fair please yeah yeah, yeah. and now inshallah yeah. the last example of is inshallah is but it it is the last example of this stream but not the last in his books be clear on this one okay so he said the statement number a please pay attention he said he said that 
मेरे दावे के इनकार की वजह से कोई शख्स काफिर या दज्जाल नहीं हो सकता दिस इज कॉल रूहानी खजाइन वॉल्यूम फिफ्टीन पेज फोर थ्री टू वट इज एड नो वन इज कंसिडर्ड अ डिसबिलीवर a kafir or an anti christ because of because of rejection of my claim this is is one statement now look at statement number b it is ruhani khazain volume 22 page 185 and he says dusra ye kufr he is calling about somebody that this is a second kufr he is doing dusra ye kufr ke mastan masih maud ko nahi manta here he is saying that not accepting the promised messiah is kufr one more reference before i finish again volume 22 of the khazain page 167 har ek shakhs jisko meri daawat pahunchi hai aur isne mujhe qabool nahi kiya wo musliman nahi hai what is it says second this this belief uh, sorry every such person who received my daawa my message and he did not accept me such a person is not a muslim and obviously he is declaring them the kafir now you can clearly see that now he is giving you two statements which are completely contradictory to each other one is that if you reject my claim it will not make you kafir a statement b is that if anybody rejects my dawa he is not a muslim obviously he is a kafir now which one is it which one is it and secondly everybody especially the ahmadiyya community note this point down in your notebooks ahmadiyya clerics give this impression that the muslims they call the ah kufar etc one day i'm going to bring to you many references this was the this was mirza gulam ahmad himself how much ex you know declaring kufar and what not and in this quotation he is declaring the mass excommunication the mass kufr anybody who is not accepting his dawa is not a muslim okay so who is doing the kufr of other people please understand this understand the tactics of the missionaries adnan bhai over to you Ab- absolutely so again there are clear contradictions again clear this man you know clearly saying in one place that rejecting me does not constitute kufr clear uh brother bashir is that what it means yeah, right? yeah well, it, it's it's a bit more complicated he he said that before he claimed prophethood right That's the key point here all of a sudden okay. he claims prophethood in 1901 and now his attitude uh, he contradicts everything else so this book was actually published in 1902 it's a uh, tiryakul kalu but it was written in 1899 i think he wrote the last two sentences in 1902 so that became a big issue and and let's not forget mr gallman said 1907 in a, in um uh hakikat the way he anyone who believes that isa alaihi salam hasn't died yet is committing shirk so he's he's accusing and as we know allah you know allah forgives every sin except shirk so and and you <laughs> know what adnan bhai yeah. one point uh, uh, one very important point my brother is in, in ahmadiyya please notice this one missionary tactic whenever they begin their stream their programs they always say oh they give us two minute blah 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 I request all of you, be fair. Watch their recent stream. How they were forcing people only to stay on topic number one and to answer whatever question they were particularly asking. They were forcing people just to stay on that one. And after a person will speak for two minutes, then four of them will speak for half an hour. And what what I'm trying to say is that they do not have the answers for what the questions we are raising. now they are creating a false narrative they want to cloud the whole situation by these false narratives why so you ahmadiyya community they want you to stay blinded please understand their tactics dropping name and saying all of these things they have no weight we want them to respond to what we asking them just one That's point true. of observation here very quickly um, um uh, my dear respected asatis are here you see we have talked enough enough about mannerisms and how to conduct the streams and whether you're giving time or not i think this has become a red herring a straw man i mean it is irrelevant anymore we are giving them opportunity to defend 
because the examples are there on the screen, examples are there in our streams in which Mirza Saab is deliberately lying, deliberately forging statements in the mouth of the Prophet Wasallam, attributing things which are not in the books of our tafsir and so on and so forth. So we have given you the substance. All you need to do is demonstrate that this is not correct. In fact, Mirza Saab is actually telling the truth, and that makes him a true prophet, not a liar, not a fabricator, not a forger, not an imposter, not a charlatan. This is the discussion, not about I have two minutes and you have six minutes. None of that is relevant anymore. If you come here, you're more than welcome to defend, and you'll be given opportunity to defend. But if you come here, just like the example I had earlier, you started praising Adnan Bai and want to waffle around something else, you will have zero seconds in this stream opportunity. It only takes me to go and find and kick you out. That's all that's going to happen. We are but, giving you fair opportunity to defend your false prophet. Yeah, okay, yeah. true prophet to you, false to everyone else. We, we if, don't you're want... not going to, if you're not going to do that, then the world is learning. The world is coming to see clearly and without any you know, um, confusion that the clarity is the clarity that he is an imposter. Mirza Gulam is a fabricator, a liar, a Dajjal, because that's what a Dajjal is, someone who is going to claim about something which is not. So if you really want to defend your prophet, you don't need to do that and shout in your stream, in your channels, come here. And discuss with us. We not want to go. We, we don't have to go to your channels, because this is an opportunity provided in our channels. Like you've been coming here for the last four streams. Suddenly, you are not coming anymore. We know why, because you you have been exposed. Your cult has been exposed. Your prophet has been exposed. Kadianism is finished. You are finished. You are finished. You are done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know what? These streams will go down in history. They will be watched by posterity. They will be watched by generations to come. And they will take notes and they will take the quotes away. And the allegations we are raising are very serious allegations. Okay. Uh, if, if I was an Ahmadi, I would have two choices in front of me today. Either I refuse this truth, black and white truth. Okay. Or basically realize that i've been wrong all my life okay and i i need to make a change i need to make a change the elderly it's very difficult to change them the older lot you know the or uh, the the old school the elderly generation they are already set in their ways they're comfortable with their uh, ahmadiyya but the youngsters the educated youngsters in the western world in particular okay you guys know better you guys, not you're not from the villages, okay? You're not, you're not, uh, you know, you don't have this Asian, Indian, Pakistani sense of loyalty that whether you're right or wrong, we're going to back you. It shouldn't be like that, okay? The Prophet Sallallahu said what? Unsur akhaka, daliman, o madluman. The Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith, help your brother, whether he is an oppressor or the oppressed, or the oppressed. The Sahaba, you know, they were not a bunch of blind followers who just followed anything. You know, they asked the Prophet questions. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know that how to help our brother if he's oppressed. We know what that means. But how do we help the oppressor? The Prophet said, by stopping him. By stopping him. You help him by stopping him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, Sahaba, they followed the Prophet diligently. They loved him, but they followed him with understanding. When they did not understand, they asked questions. Okay? The Ahmadiyya, you need to ask questions from your Jamaat. That why was Mirza making these things up? Circumstantially, Mirza's message, his revelations were changing with circumstances. He was making up, making up outright black and white lies, information that does not exist to respond to circumstantial um, incidents like what happened with the Hudaybiya question. Ibn Kathir, he did not write anything like it. When he attributed to the Prophet that there is a Prophet who is of black complexion 
from India. His name will be Kahin Kishan Kanahiya. There is no such hadith in the entire hadith literature. The Qadiani missionaries, one of them, Raziullah, even tried to make up a hadith to deceive his followers. He even said, Qal Nabiun. He actually said the words Qal Nabiun and they're not there. And when he was caught, what did he say? Oh, this hadith is authentic uh, through revelation. Mirza, he is Hakam and Adal to us. So he's the one who gave us this hadith. Then we say to them, okay, if, if this is the game you want to play, what about those specific attributions to authors? Fine, you can claim that he received this revelation from Allah and he attributed this information to the Prophet, even though it, even though it doesn't exist. But then he attributes information to Ibn Kathir. It doesn't exist. He attributes, he attributes information to Bukhari. It doesn't exist. He attributes information to Hadith. That Hadithon mein likha hai. Saaf saaf likha hai. Hadithon mein likha hai. Saaf saaf likha hai. Hadith literature contains this information explicitly. It's clearly written therein. But it's not there. It's not there. Okay. There are so many unbelievable... I mean, I uh, brother, you, mentioned, yeah. you mentioned a very interesting point earlier about prophethood. That he had not claimed to be a be a to be a prophet before 1901, specifically speaking, right? Strictly speaking, in it was in 1901 when he declared himself to be a prophet, right? But in his earlier writings, he writes that "Main nabuat ka dawa karne wale par lanat bejta hu." Yes, in his earlier writings, he was he wrote right. These words are there because I've read them myself. That I send, I, I send a curse upon the one who claims to be a prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He ends up fulfilling his own curse. He said and, that he said he said that khatamun nabiyin ke baad nabi kaisa? He said this. Yes. So so look, Ahmadis, come on, guys. You know there is so much. Okay. At least tell your Murabis to stop preaching to Muslims, gullible Muslims. Stop Adnan, why can I? Yeah, Adnan, why can I please? Uh, I may forget this very important. Please, if you allow please. me to. Yeah. So, Adnan, why, uh, now I'm going to especially address to Ahmadiyya community because this is our main objective and main niya that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring them to light of Islam through this effort of the wise channel, inshallah. So, brother, yeah. sister, now. Because uh, the last point Adnan Bhai was mentioning about the, uh, the belief of finality of prophethood of Muhammad uh, <clears throat> Now, look at this one. Can you please send a text message to all the clerics and murabiyun that give us a statement in the form of a statement from the books of Mirza Sahib that what was his belief? On the subject of finality of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or, or in other words, what was his stance on the coming of another prophet after Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam? There's a there's a reason in my mind why I'm saying this. Let them bring a statement that this is our belief, okay? And then let me let me tell you in advance, whatever they will bring. They will be disproved from the books of Mirza Saib himself. And this disproval, this disproval will, will prove you two things. Two things. Number one, either they have not read all the books of Mirza Sahib or they are lying to you deliberately. Now, why I am not telling you right now that what was the belief of Mirza Saib himself on Fatmun Nabuwa? There's a reason behind that. Because if whatever I will tell you now, they're going to manufacture something in a very deceptive way. So let them bring something and then let me, inshallah, dissect that and destroy that forever and ever. Okay? This was about the Khatmul Nabuwa's disbelief. Now, second point. Dear Ahmadiyya, can you send a text message to all the clerics and Murabiyun? Because they are dropping names. Please understand this technique of name dropping of the books and Fasirun. Ask them that give us one Mufassir, one prominent Mufassir 
from Islamic tradition who they can consider as trustworthy. And afterwards, we'll give you the fasir from, from that particular fasir. Why I'm saying this? Alhamdulillah, we can access all the tafasir. I want to make the life easy for the Ahmadiyya community. Let them pick one prominent one. Let them interpret the ayahs from this one particular one. And then I will let you see that they do not have any usul. They do not accept any mufassir. They are only cherry picking whatever suits to their motive. So please ask them. And by the way, don't forget. Mirza Sahib has accepted some of the Mufassirun as the Mujaddid of their time. Okay. Ask them that give us one of the Mujaddid Mufassir as well. Let's take him and let's take his tafsir. So ask them this question. Okay. And the next one is Dear Ahmadiyya, they have spent nearly one hour to respond to our objections regarding the reference of Ibn Kathir, regarding the Ridda, the apostasy after Hudaybiyah. Please ask them this question, that this Hudaybiyah reference, you need to address five things in one go, in one thing. Number one, it has to be Ibn Kathir. Number two, there has to be many. Number three, they have to be the truthful people. Number four, they have to be become apostate. And number five, it has to be the event of Hudaybiyah. If you are missing any one of them, we don't care. It's all red hearing. We are discussing this reference. Come on, this reference. And inshallah, last point, as I said before, that in these streams, we are going to be short and sweet in our responses. Okay? If you are, inshallah, interested to their responses point to point in an intellectual way, which can address every single thing they are lying to you, please, inshallah, as I said before, join the platform Dialogue with Intiaz. Inshallah, I will be creating the content that will be, inshallah, satisfying this aspect as well. Because from now onward, you will see, inshallah, that this platform of Dawa Wise, it will be giving you short and sweet responses. But if anybody interested in the detailed intellectual point to point, inshallah, you can join mm -hmm. us there. So we are going to bring this uh, stream to a close, inshallah. Now, I don't think we uh, will take any more uh, guests and so on. It's been quite late and we have given ample opportunity for them to come and defend. And of course, they will not. And I think they will not come again anymore. Um, I am willing to be proven wrong. Um, but I don't think they will come here anymore because they have seen how the evidence is, is so obvious and clear and they speak for themselves. So instead, what they will do is try to, on their streams or on their social media, try to do a damage control. But the job has been done, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We have demonstrated how the Ahmadi cult is only a false ideology, a religion sprout and based on the truth of Islam. And Islam is free from them. If they, they want to claim themselves to be a Muslim, let them return. You are muted, uh, Brother Bashir. Let them return to Islam um, all wholeheartedly so that they save themselves from the fire of Jahannam. So we want all the Ahmadis to reconsider seriously. You know, if you really want salvation in the hereafter, which is punishment free from hellfire, to save yourself from hell, hellfire, you need to do this one thing. You need to come away from accepting this false prophet. If you have already accepted him a false prophet, you need to repent to Allah straight away with all sincerity and come back. And Allah will forgive you because this was something that you may have been born into or something that you have been misled to believe in this particular dogmatic ideology that seems so appealing because love for everyone hate for none i mean seems like appealing and not realizing that the one who is the founder of this religion mirza gulam ahmad of qadian is an imposter is a fake prophet who has used religion who has used islam for his own advantage to please his colonial masters so we invite all of you back to islam and i don't think i need to make anything any longer the evidence the, the clarity of proof has been there with you in the last five streams. May Allah guide you to Islam, the true Islam that we are 
asking you to come to not the Islam of the cultish religion that people make in here or there in the name of Islam. So I'm going to go. Um, I'm not sure that none by. Uh, is yeah, I think Mansoor because uh, we told the Muslims will be inviting them at the end. So I'm just going to quickly invite them if that's okay with you. Just very quickly, maybe inshallah, because it's I mean this. Yeah. Yeah. So the Muslims, uh, you guys are welcome to join the panel now. We have put up the link. So those who wanted to speak to us, uh, now is your opportunity, inshallah. Yeah. So and I'm if you to... allow me um, uh, permission to leave, inshallah, um, and uh, yeah, I'll let you continue. But yeah, I'll, sure. I'll just. Asman uh, sorry, yes, I've none left already. Uh, he's, he's not in the back chat or in the stream. I'm not sure. Okay. okay, so yeah. guys who are joining, please. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa uh, Next stream, inshallah. Uh, those guys who are who want to join the panel for the Q and A from the Muslims, you need to verify by switching on your cameras quickly. So those with the cameras on will be given the preference. Uh, otherwise, you can only ask questions in the private chat. So. Yeah, we got uh, Dr. Izhar, obviously. Mashallah, he's been waiting. <laughs> he's been awake today until until late. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Saab. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me back. Yes, I think it's important to be up for these things because I was expecting some Ahmadis to come and engage with us. It is unfortunate that they didn't. I would yes. just like to make uh, one point about uh, the prophecies during my, I, I went on a bit uh, during my uh, talk. Mm -hmm. um, the Muhammadi Begum prophecy, I researched in extreme detail. And I have just four very brief questions to my Ahmadi brothers and sisters. The first one is this. In Islam, does a wali who is the parent or guardian of a, um, of a girl who's not yet an adult. And remember the first prophecy in retrospect was made, the 1892 uh, Aina Kamalate Islam mention of the prophecy says that four years ago I made a prophecy when that girl was eight or nine years old, okay? Ye, this is very important, Imtiaz Bhai must have read this as well. I've done extensive, I can write a book about Mohammadi Begum. That's my first question. Does in Islam a wali have a right to refuse a proposal of marriage? If yes, then the whole proposal, once it was refused, should have been the end of the matter. Number two, the Ahmadis say that Sultan Muhammad, and Sultan Muhammad is in the Siratul Mahdi that Nusrat Jahan told Mr. Bashir Ahmad, uh, who wrote uh, Siratul Mahdi, that the son, Sultan was asked by Mirza Ghulam Ahmad to divorce his wife, who was related to Muhammadi Begum, uh, unless they gave her the girl. And Sultan Muhammad didn't do that. He arranged the wedding of that girl. Uh, so, so this is confusing. Both are Sultans. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad's son, Sultan Ahmad, arranged Muhammad Sultan, Sultan Muhammad's wedding with her. Okay? So Ahmadis say that Sultan Muhammad didn't die, he was supposed to die according to the prophecy, because he repented. My question is, a Muslim man who marries a Muslim woman, what does he have to repent for? And if he had indeed repented, Mirza Sahab says that he, re he repented after he got married in 1892. If he did indeed repent for anything, why did Mirza Saab in 1905 in Al Hakam say, and it's all there, that Mera this track should girl ke will still come uh, into it's my nikah? And the last question I have is Ahmadis have singularly failed to show any evidence that Ahmad Beg wrote any blasphemous article in a magazine they call was Cheshmai Marafat. I have yet to see that. My dedicated Ahmadi relative spent six months looking for that article and failed. There is not a single reference to that. So my dear Ahmadi brothers and sisters, if you don't want to go into esoteric ideological issues, just look at Mohammadi Begum. If Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was alive today and Mohammadi Begum was, uh, this case happened now, and if he was in Britain, like Mr. Masroor is in Britain, 
he would have been done and uh, indicted for stalking and harassment of a, of a young girl. Please think. It's is Arbai uh, is Arbai just to is Arbai just to support the same point you mentioned? Maybe I just want to add one point on this one that why this prophecy of Muhammad Begum is so important because according to the pen of Mirza Said himself, we have given all the references. He said that this particular nikah, this marriage, he made it a criterion a to verify yeah. the truthfulness and falsehood of his claim. And guess what? And then he said that I am only saying this after Allah has taught me. In other words, according to Mirza Sahib, Allah is giving him to tell people, Allah, 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 Allah is giving him to tell people a criterion that how people can know if he is a liar or truthful. And the criterion was his marriage with Muhammad Begum. And we all know it did not happen. Okay, the case is closed. This one thing, as Izhar Bai said, this one thing, it can solve the problem for any Ahmadi brother sister. Absolutely, absolutely. Jazakallah for letting me back in. This was all I had to say. There's so many other things to say, but maybe some other time. I can also show you contradictions. Hazrat Isa, you mentioned three burial places. He has also mentioned three different ages at the time of his death. And in one, <laughs> he actually makes Paul live longer uh, than, uh, than Isa. So he gets all these dates. My view is that he wrote too much. And in those days, there was no computer. So he couldn't cross check what he had written before. Either that or maybe, maybe other people helped him. He had ghost writers. So is Arbai, <laughs> is Arbai before you leave, before, because you mentioned this thing about the different time span of Isa I want to tell the audience something very interesting. Mirza Mahmood Sahib, okay, he gave, he basically, because as you know, their claim was that Sayyidina Isa salam, he died at the age of 120 years, okay, and then they gave us a criteria. They said that the next prophet has the half of the age of the previous prophet. And yes. why is they said this? Why is they said this? Because they are claiming the Isa salam, has age of 120 and that is why our Nabi Salam has age of 60 plus, right? Absolutely. If that logic is true, listen my point carefully. If this logic is true, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad must die at the age of 30 years. Exactly. There are Think too many contraindications. His math wasn't that great. He even <laughs> said that the Holy Prophet Salam had more than 12 sons or something like that. You know, he got the numbers wrong. for 11. That. 11. 11 sons so you know how yeah, can this a is, prophet you know no this? that's that's i'm i'm so grateful that you raised that point yeah i'm so <laughs> grateful that i completely forgot about that that he actually attributed uh how many daughters to the prophet 12 or 11 daughters 11 uh, even daughters even daughters even yes, if you yes. go back to those even daughters he he, he attributed some crazy number i don't remember the exact number because then these missionaries are gonna oh no the number is not correct they will just but the, number of, the, but the number of sun is correct 11. yes yeah. yeah. okay so the question is now again and and you know what he he uh, if i remember correctly this was a reference to the life of the prophet he was Salaam. trying to make a point about the life of the prophet Salaam, and, he, and then he gave a reference that he had so many sons right but no history in the entire history of Islam, none of the Sira books attribute this number of sons to the Prophet. And you know what I can imagine these missionaries doing? Oh, he was talking about Ashram Bashra, okay, uh, as, as his sons. I mean, I can imagine, wallahi, I can imagine them coming by with something so stupid and so, so crazy like this, yeah. But Mirza was specifically talking about the sons. Right. So there are so many blunders, so many mistakes and lies and fabrications. It's unbelievable. His writings are riddled with this stuff. OK. And I don't know why, uh, you know, people I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no culture of writing, reading his books within the Jamaat. If that was the case, people would have seen these contradictions. They would have seen these contradictions and they would have realized that. Hold on a second. This is a sham. You know, this is all made up. And and Izarba, you made a very interesting point earlier. You said that they were ghost writers. You know, I have no doubt that it was a group of people 
who were trying to help him write these revelations, these revelations down, because it is impossible for a normal human being to, to have so many contradictions in his writing. Okay. And I believe these people, these people who were helping him write all this stuff, okay, uh, they, they basically, he was doomed because of them. Okay. He and, shot himself in the foot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because look, 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 what happens? I'll give you an example. I'll give you one classic example. A point I recently raised. What was the point? That Mirza writes in his, uh, his writings, one of his writings, that there are many reports about, okay, um, about Al-Mahdi or uh, the Khalifa near the end of times. There are reports in Sahih al-Bukhari near the end of times, Khulafa near the end times, right? In particular, that report where the words are found, Hada Khalifatullah al-Mahdi. He claims that in Bukhari, in Sahih al-Bukhari, this report is there. In this report, it is stated, a voice, on, a voice will come from the heavens, Hada Khalifatullah al-Mahdi. Okay? And then, how did the missionaries respond to this? They said, oh, this was a mistake. This was um, a misattribution. This was a misattribution because the hadith is there in another collection. But I responded to them that this cannot be a misattribution. You know why? Because he actually goes on to explain what Bukhari is. He explains Sahih al-Bukhari, what it is and what the virtues and the strengths are. And then he yeah. goes on to attribute these words to Sahil Bukhari. So they yeah. come back with another response. They say, oh, in, a, in another place, Hazrat Masih Maud, okay, has written that there are no reports in Muslim, Sahih Muslim and Bukhari about Mahdi. So this basically means that he contradicted himself directly. Yeah. Yeah. In one place, he's attributing a hadith about Mahdi in Bukhari. In another place, he's saying, there is no hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari about Mahdi, right? So there are two options here. Either Mirza has lost his mind, okay? Or he's just making up information as he, go along, as he goes along. Or there are multiple people writing in the name of Mirza. Some learned, some not so learned. Some ignorant, some not so ignorant, right? In, in both cases, he's not a prophet. He can't he, be a prophet. He, can't, he yeah. himself has also said, interestingly, Ahmadis try to bend over backwards trying to explain that more prophets can come. But Mirza Saab said he's the last prophet. He calls yeah. himself the last Khalifa, he uses the word. And yeah. he says that the whole universe has 6,000 years and I'm at the head, uh, I'm towards the end of that 6,000 years. It's all bunkum. It really does not stack up. Is our boy? Is our boy? Is our boy? This was this was the very reason I mentioned earlier that Ahmadiyya community should ask the murabbis that to tell us what was the belief of Mirza Sahib regarding coming of any prophet after Mirza Sahib himself. What did he say? Once people Mirza come to come, know, he said, I'm what, the last. One, yeah, no, no, not just this one, many angles. There are many, and inshallah, once we discuss this one, there are dozens of angles in which he conveyed this message. I am the last one. I'll give you one example. He said that if you make a circle, okay, the, the, the end of the circle, it finish where it begins. So he is the end of that circle. After circle has been closed, how can you add anything in that? And there are many other things he mentioned. And this is the reason and why I said this. All of this rhetoric of Quranic ayat that, you know, it, uh, Allah can choose new prophet. All of that is red herring. That's a false narrative which the clerics are creating. Why? So people can stay distracted from the books of Mirza Sahib. My dear okay. Ahmadiyya, let me give you the instructions of Mirza Sahib himself. He said that read my books, Bashir, by how many times? Three how times. many times? Three times, three times. Brothers, I'm inviting you to obey the Prophet. Okay, he said, if you don't read my books at least three times, he's not convinced about your Iman. This is your Prophet is telling us. And, 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 and isn't it in the second edition, in the first edition, 
वो सही नहीं है बाद में क्या है कि थोड़ा सा उसमें शुभा है लेकिन एक नहीं, उस... मैं कहना चाहता हूँ सॉरी अबाउट दिस माई एम दी डॉक्टर फ्रेंड्स एंड दिस स्पेशली फॉर डॉक्टर ताहिर नासिर हु इज एन एनिस्थेटिस्ट ओके ही इज अ गैस मैन एंड एनिस्थेटिस्ट मिर्जा साहब इन्वेंटेड अ क्वैक मेडिसिन फॉर द प्लेक उसका yes. नाम uh, उसमें एंड इट वॉज मैन्युफैक्चर्ड in kadian and it was sold the british authorities said prove that this drug doesn't work and they banned him from selling it not only that the lancet which is one of the highest journals when i got my first paper published in the lancet i was over the moon to get a paper in the lancet is a big deal the lancet actually published that there is this strange man in kadian who claims to be a messiah he's invented this drug that doesn't work who he says can cure the plague if he is your prophet he had a name for it he, he even he, gives the marham 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 isa marham isa he even gives the recipe of that drug i challenge tahir nasir and other there's an amdia medical association they should prepare that drug and see even if in vitro it can kill the pasturella pestis bacterium phir kehte hain ki ek phal hai there's a fruit in africa on a tree that becomes a bird and then a dead squirrel can be made alive by putting cow dung over it and beating it with a stick now these are not jokes these are actual writings of mirza sahib and this all stuff of it doesn't stack up he will be making the hindus envious now yeah hey can i can, 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 uh, uh, can I just give a clarification uh, i'm sorry to cut you so the, the name of the the anti plague medicine was uh of tiryaki elahi and it was not the tiryaki You're right. Okay. okay. The yeah. Marhami Isa was something he invented. He lied and said uh, Abu Sina, the famous, uh, I'm saying his name wrong, uh, Ibn Sina, Ibn had, Sina. Had, had created the Marham of the Apostles, not the Marhami Isa. And in fact, they had to, to, to put a footnote in the book saying, "Yeah, this doesn't exist," even though Mirza says it existed. Okay. And the third I one. I actually, 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 I have seen an advertisement of Marham Isa. Yeah, it's in the published. Uh, I got it. Yeah, from I have yeah, seen that advertisement on Bara Misa. Yeah, and so, one last thing. One last thing. So, so my research continues, and uh, I, um, I remember finding that article in the Lancet. I was over the moon, but and I found it in, in like some college archives because I can search di different libraries. But one last thing, uh, uh, Doctor Zard mentioned something about Mirza said in fruit a bird can get. born in in a fruit he was trying to explain the fig wasp and i actually i just figured this out the other day fig wasp they uh, uh uh drop their eggs inside a fig in in africa and so they they are born within the fig so mirza is trying to th th this is the hermaphrodite theory he was alluding to and all these things he's talking about so yeah that's my only note well sorry to about this it's quite late so hopefully it's beyond the watershed time and children are asleep he has even written nauzubilla that a woman can self impregnate herself with sperm once she has a ecstasy i'm not going to use the word we all know what he meant by that now come on you don't explain miracles scientifically that's the whole idea of a miracle if you believe in a miracle you don't explain it under current laws it's a bit like <coughs> molecular physics in molecular is bhai, physics is our bhai he use a term he basically use a term for the miracle amle turb Amle tur mean, amle tur mean mesmerism. I am quoting you his books. He said he, he basically calls the miracles of the prophet just like mesmerism. Some amle tur, is it accepting the miracle? Think about this, brother. And there's more. There's numerology. He he's also a believer of numerology. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. the names, the letters of my name, uh, yeah. Arabic numerals, add up to the 13th century or the 14th century. and therefore i am the promised messiah you know he bent over backwards trying to fit things around it's like putting a square peg in a hole you can't mirza sahib mirza mirza sahib has made a mirza sahib so i'm going to bring in mirza sahib mirza sahib has made a mathematical error by the way inshallah i'll bring it very soon he's made a mathematical error to prove the point of uh, the, the mujaddid in every century he made a mathematical error that. in there I know that. Well, thank you very much, and good night, and thank you all. Doctor Azhar, our pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Always enjoy your conversations. Take care. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. 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 Waala
Right, uh, Brother Muhammad, can you hear us? Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I was just uh, about to. Uh, I'm from. I'm calling from Canada. I'm a Sunni Muslim. I've been following all your streams. I'm really excited to be on here. I wanted to talk to Brother Adnan, um, Brother Imtiaz. Uh, the last, the few points that you just uh, discussed in the end uh, with the last uh, guest, those were the points I was going to make. Um, the self impregnation thing that he just mentioned. Um, so I, I was in grade 10 when I asked this question to Amr Rabbi, and he tried to prove it to me that um, virgin birth is not a big deal. It's, it has happened in other cases as well. And he showed me a really old uh, news article. And that's when I asked him the question that even if self-impregnation is possible, birth of a male child is not possible because females only have um, XX chromosomes. They don't have the XY combination. And he had no answer to this. So this whole thing, self-impregnation, trying to prove that the virgin birth, it's, it's not a miracle. It's very common than we think. It's just all baseless. Absolutely. Do you actually believe in any miracles at all? Okay. Secondly, a uh, second question was uh, regarding the Muhammadi Begum, um, the, the passion gui, the prophecy. Um, my question is that we all understand that he um, prophesied the deaths of um, her father and her husband, okay, as a punishment because they were um, they were saying uh, blasphemous words, whatever the allegation is. So my question is that, okay, their deaths can be looked upon as um, a punishment, but how does one's marriage to a prophet? Is, is part of a punishment. How is that a punishment? No, he, he wasn't saying that she will be punished by marrying him. He was basically saying that uh, because uh, the marriage did not happen with him, as a result, her father and her husband will die. Okay? Her father died because he was an old man, so it was inevitable for him to die because he was uh, elderly. Uh, the husband lived on until 1948. He didn't die. And then Mirza had to put up like some extraordinary spins to his own prophecy and uh, give vague twists uh, repeatedly uh, so that he can, uh, you know, save himself from the embarrassment. Okay. So this Muhammadi Begum case was an absolute disaster for him. Okay. And, you know, he went around the world uh, trying to make it happen. Okay, he threatened almost every single family member of Muhammad Begum. He, he threatened her aunt. He threatened her father. He threatened uh, uh, her cousin, which was the wife of his son. Um, I forgot his name, Sultan Muhammad. His son's name was Sultan Muhammad, right? Who was uh, married to the cousin of Muhammad Begum. Um, and he threatened her with divorce. He told his son, if you don't divorce her, I will disown you for my property and I will make a public declaration that you're no longer my son. So this was a prophet who received a revelation from Allah, allegedly, telling him that you will get married to this woman. Now that he could see signs of this not happening, he decided to play Allah himself. Basically, he took things into his own hands. He did not wait for Allah to make this happen. He took things into his own hands. It's like Rasulullah basically making a prophecy, okay, and then go around the world trying to make it happen. How, how does that sound? So Mirza was basically, you know, uh, you, trying to use any, uh, you know, immoral tactics and methods to make it happen. And wallahi, this story in itself, Tells uh, tells a lot about his character and the kind of person he was. He he's threatening almost everyone. He's writing letters and he's trying to use carrot and stick approach. So sometimes sometimes he's trying to appease uh, Ahmed Beg, uh, and other times Ahmed Beg is the father of Muhammad Begum. Okay, he's trying to appease her, and other times he's trying to use threats. And this is a very very uh, you know. To, to, to put it to put it in polite terms, 
this was a very immoral and uh, you know in in uh, indecent man very immoral and indecent man okay so uh, it still didn't happen alhamdulillah allah humiliated him allah proved him to be a liar to his own followers you know for us for the muslims generally speaking in india they were laughing at him they were laughing at him okay it's only his close followers from his own city his own town who who had fallen for his charms i don't know what those charms were they fell for his charms and uh, they ended up becoming this community we know today as the the ahmadi community and many of them are sincere simple people who don't know better unfortunately they have been brainwashed from childhood into thinking that this guy is a true prophet of allah therefore don't even think of doubting him don't even think of questioning him uh, just like we the muslims are taught about muhammad oh. rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are taught from, taught from childhood to respect the prophet of islam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam likewise ahmadi kids youngsters are taught to respect <coughs> mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani from childhood so they build this uh, kind of impression in the minds of these gullible youngsters and children that uh, you know this man mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani is a prophet of god they build they, they basically they build a halo around his head making him look noble and uh, sacred so that's why a lot of these ahmadi youngsters they they find it very difficult to question him so this yeah. is where our dawa comes in this is where people like bashir uh you know their work is is so important so instrumental in waking the ahmadis up the youngsters let them see okay this is why we're doing Absolutely. these streams okay this yeah, is a new experience yeah. But yeah. but, but, but no, just one one point to add there. He was yeah. trying to bribe him so bad. He was mixing uh, the Muslim mode prophecy in with the Muhammadi Begum prophecy, and he was like, "Hey, look, I don't care about all these other kids, these other women I have. If you become my my wife, I'll give you the promised son, and your son will get get the shine or get the be in charge and etc." So he will yeah. be the Muslim mode. He will be the Muslim old, right? He'll be the Muslim yes. old, and and you know, yes. so we tell these Amis, you guys are better off accepting me. I got the same name, and I just say, come to Islam. I don't even say, even say accept me. I say accept Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Come to Islam. It's so. it's it's very unfortunate that all these people from the Punjab, uh, from his town, and around his town, people ended up believing in him because they didn't know better. Unfortunately, they didn't have the knowledge to see through his uh, his. Um, His gymnastics. His gymnastics. Well, the Messiah didn't thing. know. The Messiah didn't know that the 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 world was going to revolutionize and there was going to be internet in the future generations. Okay, and then there will be easy access to knowledge and everybody can see everything. So it's it's now it's it's becoming harder and harder to keep them um in dark. The... You know, you know, one of the things that people didn't know about was the 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 crimes of the colonial government of India. okay yeah. and this yeah. guy was obsessed with the colonial officials he was obsessed yeah. with them his writings he's praising them he's writing books he's pay, paying lavish tributes to the colonial government of india is is trying to literally lick their boots he's licking their boots at uh, at the first opportunity every time was the opportunity and they and they they don't even they don't even care about him they don't see him as a major player right he was just uh, just a thing of the side okay but if you read his writings which i have been posting some of them i've been posting on my twitter the scans the actual scans from his works from his writings where he's paying lavish tributes to the colonial government of india and the reason why he was praising queen victoria was to appease the the local colonial government of india which was extremely oppressive very racist very very discriminatory against muslims okay and and i'm not saying this adnan rashid is not saying this this is a uh, completely supported by modern academic works on colonial india okay many authors popular authors and otherwise have written on this okay let's go and read the works of a white man called william dalrymple William Dalrymple has written books on India okay in in particular for example some of the books where he actually exposes 
the role of the Indian colonial officers, not Indian, sorry, uh, the, the, the East India Company British colonial officers in India, what they were doing, right? So he has written a book titled The Last Mughal. And in this book, he documents the history of the, the, the Indian mutiny, so to say, or the war of independence of India in 1857. Then he goes on to document uh, the history of, uh, you know, how um, the, the, the British colonial establishment in India had uh, tried to destroy Afghanistan. In this book, uh, he authored titled uh, uh, Return of a King. In this, he documents the history of Afghanistan in the 19th century, in particular, uh, the first Afghan war. Okay, I'm talking about William Dalrymple is the author. Then he authored another book re recently titled The Anarchy. Okay, in this book, he documents the history of the East India Company. Okay, anyone who reads these books with an objective mind and then make uh, a connection with the writings of Mirza. Mirza is basically praising this particular establishment. So, you know what do these mission what these missionaries do? You know what they do? They play this game. So, when you mention these things, they say, "Why are you living in London? Why are you living in Britain? Yeah. What, what are you doing in Britain?" So, it's either they go dumb deliberately, they deliberately become completely dumb. And, you know, like, they become like as if they're completely ignorant. They don't know what they're talking about. Or they deliberately play these games to deceive so people. Say, we, we got us living time. in London, us living in London, or me living in Britain today, Adnan Rashid, how does that make colonial establishment of India any better? Yep, yep. How how do how do we go back on, and change that history? Uh, Sorry, I would ask the, I would ask the same question. Uh, Brother Muhammad, thank you for your time. Uh, there are a lot Absolutely. of people waiting. Just, just one. Back. Can I can I make one last point, please? No, no, brother. We we got to go because he gave you, given you enough time. Inshallah, next time, yeah. Thank you. Okay, inshallah, in next stream, no problem. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, and thank you so much. It's just that there are a lot of people waiting at the back, and you have to give them all a chance. Right, so we've got a former Ahmadi here, uh, truth be told. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, brothers. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Can you hear me all right? I just want to make it real quick. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. I just quickly want to say one thing from the get go. Um, I wish these streams would have been available when I was doing my own research because it would have made my journey so much easier, alhamdulillah. But you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and alhamdulillah, yeah, He blessed me with guidance anyway. So I'm um, very pleased and I really appreciate the hard work that you're all doing, especially week in and week out, seven hour stream. It can't be easy. So Jazakallah Khairan for that. Um if what I wanted to start with is um just some of my own experiences and my observations regarding the Ahmadiyya movement and how they go about things. And I think the the very obvious thing that people don't really realize is that in my opinion, this is a religion based on circular reasoning, which we all know is a logical fallacy. Because everything that they believe is true because Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said it. And because Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is a prophet, that's why they believe it. So from the get-go, their foundations are on, on very shaky grounds. And it makes it difficult to to accept it as truth, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and, and you know what? We know this. We know this, that Mirza to them is a man with halo around his head. He is noble. He's a prophet. And he's a true prophet to them, to the majority Absolutely. of the Ahmadis. And this is what we're trying to show them, that this is not true. You know why? Because Mirza has made, made up information. Mirza has attributed things falsely to authors by naming them, by attributing things to books where things don't exist. So we're not getting into long long-winded debates with them. That's why we don't like to have these long-winded debates where they can actually deceive people and go into these long tangents. And as Brother Intiaz mentioned earlier, that they start naming these big books and big authors, trying to give this impression as if they are scholars of Islam. Okay, they know these big names, big books. Okay, and we know this, 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 this. So the Ahmadi crowd, gullible Ahmadi crowd thinks, oh, you know what? These guys are murabbis, are missionaries, are very learned, okay? 
So that's why we are bringing them to these specific points that actually prove that Mirza was a liar. He was a that's fabricator. True. Okay. So yeah. that's why we don't get into that uh, long discussion. Was he a prophet? Was he not a prophet? We are, we're telling them he cannot be a prophet because he was a liar. Okay. Anamba, you know, fact, yes. Yeah, please. Anamba, please um, go ahead. Majority of the Ahmadi laymen, they don't know any of the classical scholars. They don't know their works. They've never heard of them because when you go to the gatherings or the, you know, the jalsas, which I've been to, they don't mention any of those people because they know when this Ahmadi start looking into those people that they completely contradict their beliefs. So there's no point yes. in mentioning them. Yes. So that when I speak to my family, they don't know who Ibn Kathir is. They've never heard of Ibn Taymiyyah. They don't know about Imam Ghazali. And I feel... I feel sad for them because they're missing out. Neither do they know the true Ahmadiyya beliefs, nor do they understand the true Islamic beliefs. So it's very hard for them. And I think the reason why they hold on to the beliefs so much is because they're told day in, day out, that they have the golden ticket. You know, similar to how Christians believe. Yes. That they are yes. saved because of their belief. Yes. There is a similar kind of mentality. On the discouraged uh, uh, from reading books. And yes, yes, and, and you, you know, and you know why they know they know that that's why they keep the masses ignorant. They keep their followers ignorant because the moment they start reading history, they start reading the crimes of colonial India, like for example, yes. let's say, right, and then they see Mirza praising colonial establishment in India, right? This doesn't make sense. It's like, can you imagine Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam? Okay, uh, you know, becoming a tool for the pharaoh and his establishment. Instead of going back to Egypt to free the Banu Israel, Musa al-Islam actually joins the establishment of the pharaoh and tells the Israelites, get lost. These guys, they have given you freedom to work. They have made you into slaves. They give you food to eat. Okay, you've been living for the last 400 years under their rule. So shut up and get on with the business, right? Imagine if Musa al-Islam did that to the Israelites, okay? But Musa al-Islam, to the contrary, he stands up to the Pharaoh he, because he was a true prophet of Allah. And amazingly, you know what? This is a point I wanted to raise tonight. It, this is a very important point, okay? What does Allah say in Surah Baqarah about the killing of Banu Israel by, by the Pharaoh? What does Allah say? Does anyone know the verses? Allah says that they were killing the male children, they were killing their men and keeping the women alive. And in this, there was a huge trial for Banu Israel. Do you get the point? In Surah Baqarah, Allah specifically mentions that the Pharaoh was killing the males of Banu Israel and keeping the females alive. And this, and in this, there was a huge trial for them. Okay, so what does Allah mention? That the Pharaoh, and you know what? Pharaoh did not kill more than few hundred thousand Israelites to be safe. But you know, the British colonial establishment in India and 19th century Indian, uh, the Raj in India or the British Raj in India is not modern Britain. This is why these Qadianis, they play this game. They try to make it a point of, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, you're an extremist because you're talking about British uh, uh, crimes. We're not talking about Britain today. We're talking about a historic reality. The historic reality is that the, the, the Indian colonial establishment, colonial establishment, the British colonial establishment in India committed a genocide of a hundred million people between 1880 to 1920. I posted the Al Jazeera link authored by two scholars on my Twitter. I keep posting it so that people realize this is the very time when Mirza was active. From 1880 to 1908, this was the most active period as an author in Mirza's life. And this is the time when he's praising them. So if Pharaoh is guilty of oppression and, and kufr for killing few hundred thousand Israelites, how about the 
the the colonial establishment killing a hundred million people within forty years. Okay, and Mirza praising them lavishly, lavishly calling them a bl blessing of God. And That's right. Ma making it a point of religion for his followers to obey unconditionally, to obey the colonial establishment at that time unconditionally. This was point four of his bait. This was point four of his pledge of allegiance. When he would take pledge of allegiance from his followers, point four, you know what it was? Unconditional obedience of the colonial government of India. I think the, the Ahmadiyya state. The Firaun, yes. yes. Yeah. Please. The, the Ahmadiyya state, there's a few things they need to really sit down and reflect upon. Number one yeah. is, what is your criteria for a prophet? Because obviously, Alhamdulillah, we have the perfect example of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. And if you compare his letters to the kings of Persia or Rome at the time, and, and Najashi, obviously, compared to what Mirza Ulam Ahmed wrote about yeah. the Queen Victoria. And I think the book, I'm sure Bashir, Brother Bashir will know, is called Tofai uh, Gethiriya, where he basically yeah. just, it, it's it's a small booklet where he just praises Queen Victoria. And I'm thinking, how can it be? How can I suppose to follow a prophet who has another human who is a disbeliever on top of him? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I think the one thing that really, you know, when your brothers were asking the previous ex Ahmadis, how, what was the reason that made you think like this is it? You know, that, that flipped the switch. And I think for me, it was a couple of things. But the number one thing was the hadith where the Prophet said that the best of generation is minor generation, and then the one after that, and then the one after that, and then the one after that. And I started thinking to myself, well, yeah, logically, it makes sense that those people must have understood Islam to, to, in the most pure form and in the best way. So all you have to do as Ahmadis, if you want to prove your point of view right, you just have to show me that those people believe what you believe in today. And if you can do that, then Bismillah, we have no argument. But if you can't do that, then you need to start reflecting and start thinking, well, why do we believe something? that the earliest Muslim, including the Prophet Islam, didn't believe. And it really, that's the bottom line of it. And there's nothing else to say at that point. Right, brother. Jazakallah khair. No problem. Just, uh, just a quick one. Jazakallah khair, everybody. Thank you very much for your hard work. I really appreciate it. Um, Adnan bhai, obviously, as usual, I watch all your videos on Speaker's Corner. I will come, inshallah. I have been once, but none of you were there, so I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> That's the color of Allah. What, was it do? on a Sunday? Yeah, it was on a Sunday, but I don't know. Maybe the weather was bad or whatever. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, it was good anyway. Or maybe you went so, too early. Maybe, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 you have to come after 2 p.m. Yeah. Oh, inshallah, no problem. Next time. Yeah. And, and that goes for all Qadiani missionaries who, who want to trap me and humiliate me and, uh, <laughs> and embarrass me. Uh, the time to find me is 2 p.m. onwards. When I am in the country, okay? You want to humiliate me, embarrass me, trap me, and show my lies and my hypocrisy and all that, my inconsistencies, all the things you have been mentioning on your streams and otherwise. To Time to find me is 2 p.m. onwards. Come and find me and uh, I'll buy your coffee while you humiliate me and trap me and embarrass me. Okay? I look forward to that. All right, guys. Uh, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Thank you very much for coming. Hashim Bhai, uh, yes. I will, Inshallah, going to limit it to seven hours. So, Inshallah, we can have a bit of rest as well. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take you ijazah. I'm going to have to take ijazah because I have a commitment I have to go to, even though I haven't slept all night. So, I'm going to leave the stream right now. You guys have done an absolutely amazing job. Thank you so much for your patience. Bashir, you in particular, may Allah bless you. You've been sitting quietly for the last, I mean, mostly quietly <laughs> for the last, the last six, sure seven hours. Yeah. Brother Imtiaz, Allah bless you, man. Allah bless you, Allah. Allah truly loves you because, you know, Allah has used you for this. And uh, things happen for a reason. You know, we found you like a hidden diamond. And <laughs> here you are. So so you have to continue with this work. Hashim, thank you. Mansur Bhai, thank you. Izhar, 
Brother Izhar, if you're still watching, may Allah bless you. We love you for the sake of Allah. And all the brothers and sisters who've been joining us and sharing their thoughts and ideas. May Allah bless you all. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Continue, please. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Ameen sahib. Take care, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Um, so Ashim, inshallah, if we can just make inshallah seven hour, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. So we only got like uh, we are not taking any more new guests. Uh, so we just wanted to put the banner up. But uh, yeah, until I think this just last few callers, and uh, I can take. So just the truth. It's another former Ahmed, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you need to speak up. Salam, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, so I just want to touch on a few points. Uh, a lot of the uh, the brothers here did a really good job touching on a lot of the points from the former MD perspective. Uh, one is just, uh, you have to be, you know, I'm speaking to MDs and questioning MDs right now, is you really have to take ownership of, of your own journey. Um, you know, Murabis will let you stay on falsehood even about the deen, right? As long as, you know, you're not asking them too many questions. Um, so about that, I just want to point out a few resources that any brother or sister can can go uh, look at. I know Brother Mtiaz is right, working on a resource right now, but these are already out there and uh, I found them personally useful. If you're Urdu or Punjabi speakers, if you go to um, YouTube and YouTube, uh, Sheikh Al Islam uh, Molana Ishak, there's a playlist called Qadiani playlist. He dives into a lot of topics, uh, anywhere from one hour videos to, you know, 10 minute videos, and they're all very useful. Um, for English speakers, there's a YouTube channel by the name of Islam after Ahmadiyya. It was made by another ex Amdi brother. And um, he also goes into a lot of very valid, very, you know, insightful points and um, he presents scans and everything. So it's all, you know, organized. Um, for anybody who likes to read, um, there's just a few books. If you Google X and the black X and the blog spot and then go to the book section, there's a bunch over there. But just to highlight, uh, Qadianism, a critical study by Sheikh uh, Abdul Hassan Al Nadwi, uh, Amdiya Exposed by Hamid Nasser and Wakar Ahmed Chima, uh, The fin Finality of Prophethood by Mufti Muhammad Shafi, and Recognizing the Messiah by Nuzal Hanif, who was a, a former ex MD as well. Uh, and her book is really insightful. Um, and then finally, for you know, we've we've heard a lot of stories about the the persecution and the issues that former MDs face. And I just want to highlight that's not limited to just you know anybody's or just regular people. Even Murabis who leave face the same issues. There's a book by um, uh, Hassan Ode, who was a um, uh, Arab and the Murabi, uh, uh, and the book is called Amadia Believes uh, and Experiences. It's available on Google and on uh, Amadia Fact Check blog. Uh, that one is very insightful because it just goes through his entire journey of how he was born, brought up MD, how he became a Murabi, why he left, how he left, and how he was treated after he left, all the way from, you know, like regular people to, to the head of the, the, the movement at that time. Uh, so, yeah, so I just wanted to point people to these resources, uh, just okay, so just can begin the Islam after Ahmadiyya journey with a lot of the brothers. I'm sure all these books are mentioned in Ahmadiyya Fact Check blog, I believe. Yeah, so, it's recorded, so I hope anybody can just go back and uh, search through the search I through think that. that'll be the quicker option. <laughs> just yeah. go to one place, uh, mashallah, the resources are there. He's got a database, I think, on his... Yeah, uh, yeah. some of the books, I'm not sure if they're there, but the Hassan Ode book, which is an important one, is, is on is on the website, yeah. yeah. So, uh, just quickly, what made you leave Ahmadiyya? I mean, there's like a million and one reasons to leave. Uh, for me, give us, personally, give us your best. <laughs> uh, personally, it's just um, comparing Islam and Ahmadiyya, right? Just um, the extent of which, you know, like you're reading and, you know, you're reading this hadith. Oh, okay, this part isn't real. It's a metaphor. Okay, no problem. Oh, okay, this part's also a metaphor. Okay, no problem, right? How deep can you go into this is a metaphor? No, that that's not what he meant. I'm like, you know, Andes really should respect their prophet more and uh, take his words, you know, with, you know, more seriousness and not be too too quick to just say oh that's not what he meant or he was confused right this is a person you're considering a prophet so uh for me just the the comparison between the two and how con clear concise and to the point islam is and how well, alhamdulillah round about a, and this and their explanation really uh drove the yeah, yeah. there seems to be a consistent pattern here so most of the people who left ahmadiyat is because of the research you have done and obviously the Hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course. But the thing is, do not stay in your echo chambers, you know, try to come yeah. out of that. Try to research because now in the age of information, 
Wallahi, when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have no excuse. Because in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. Okay, so make yeah. sure you go out there, do your research. You know, most of the Ahmadis today, you know, live in, uh, especially in the Western uh, countries. Uh, internet is everywhere, even in India, even in Pakistan, you know. You get, I think the, the internet over there is much cheaper than over here as well. Yeah. So everyone's got internet on their phones. There's no excuse anymore. Yeah, no? and definitely read Please, read your read your own books. Uh, a lot of them are in English, and when you're reading them, just be sure to you know be sincere because you know I like to say like Christians have answers to every question, but doesn't mean the answers are good, right? Yeah. They'll give you something. Doesn't mean it's you know valuable and insightful and and correct. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah they and spend just a lot find... of money. They spend a lot of money. One last thing: we do have a Discord server. Yeah, we do have a Discord server um, for x -Andies. So right now it's serving as sort of a support area where we can support community. A lot of like-minded people who've left the, the movement and sort of, you know, feeling alienation or just uh, need people to talk to. Uh, eventually, we do hope to turn it more into of a resource of where Andes can learn more about Islam and sort of switch into mainstream Islam. And we can help fill in any of the gaps that might be through the, uh, you know, left by, by Andy teachings. Okay. So yeah, inshallah, all the resources you'll be able to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fact. called Islam After Ahmadiyya. If you Google it, uh, there is a subreddit by the same name, and then the links for the server are there as well. Okay, just a lot, yeah. Um, just quickly as a segue, I just wanted to quickly. Somebody just emailed me. And it's probably from a teenager actually, and he's saying I converted to Sunni Islam from Ahmadiyya. Uh, I'm 19 years of age. Uh, I left when I was 18. So his first question is, how will I find a spouse? When I was Ahmadiyya, I had support from the parents in the local community, but now I become isolated and I don't have, uh, I don't know how I established the Sunnah on my own. And the second question is, would it be sinful if I just remain on the Ahmadi database, even though I'm not part of it, to save myself and my family from the social consequences? Uh, I live in a majority Ahmadi um, society, will, um, and it'll be pretty impossible to even walk to a shop if they find out I have left. Uh, any, I don't know, solution for this young man? I can I can speak to the first one maybe, and then leave their second to brother in Diaz. Um, just um, it's not actually an issue; it's actually a solution because now your your pool has gotten a lot bigger. It's not just and the and it's not just you know your your worth isn't how much janda you've paid or how close you are to to the jamaat, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, start going to the mosque, your local mosque. Uh, if, if you mentioned that you can't go to your local mosque, drive a little far out as you know where it's safe to go. Uh, go there and just start spending more time at the mosque. And uh, almost all mosques have these services available uh, to help you find a spouse and to more importantly help you just move on in life surely that's good advice uh brother Bashir? yeah i was gonna say go, go during ramadan to the masjid bro <laughs> that's all you, it's 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 the place to be in ramadan the best food you'll ever have there's different masjids in my area some are bengali some are afghani that they, they have different foods they will accept you and love you you know I'm local, so it's easier for me because everyone knows me. They've seen me around, you know, and et cetera. But join the, the local Muslim community. It's so much fun. It's this huge brotherhood, you know, and we all make mistakes. So we correct each other. So, yeah, that's that's the he, advice. He wasn't talking about the food. He was talking about finding a spouse. <laughs> or was that a hidden message somewhere in there? <laughs> I don't know your metaphoric uh, terms, bro. Ashim bhai, Ashim bhai, with regard to his uh, question that, you know, is he going to be a sinful person if he, his name still stays in the database? This yeah. may be the question of some other people as well. So first of all, when it comes to Iman, okay, Iman has three dimensions, okay? It is basically, Ikrarum bil lisan, wa tasdikum bil qalb, wa amalum bil jawari. This is called Iman. That what you profess with your tongue, what you believe in your heart, what you do in your actions, okay? This will define you, your Muslim identity, okay? That's number one. Number two, merely your name being on that database, once your heart has rejected that, number one. And number two, you have no intention to return to that kufr, okay? And number three, if you think that if your name is removed from that database, that can cause you unnecessarily problems and you know unnecessarily tension in your life then no problem let this name be there 
okay you mainly focus on these two things that what is iman that what you believe what you say what your action is and after that in your heart reject that cult and don't have any intention to return back to it the name thing being there inshallah if it is going to cause your problem let it be there so maybe you can also help if he joins the discord grace oh yes yes Discord group is, uh, platform is very important. Uh, Asham, if you can share that link again, so inshallah people can see. And I really want to uh, make one request again. Uh, we had brother Atisha and we had brother Sahib. So my request to both of you, please send your details to Dava Wise team or you can send to me or to Bashir Bhai. Our emails are given as well. The reason is we are in the process of creating some resources which are going to be directly used by you, brother sisters, okay? We really want to have your input that we don't just think something which is not realistically not true. So please share your contact details so we, you or we can reach out to you and we can, inshallah, create something beneficial as a sadhka is jariya for all of us. And just a quick note for the for the server. Sorry for interrupting. Um, with respect to all the brothers and sisters who are interested, I'm uh, trying to keep it X and the only. Um, uh, so you know, if you're questioning, please join, and you know, we can deal with that on a case by case basis. But I did notice a few um, uh, never and the brothers did try to join. We respect it, and you know, we're we're excited that you're excited. But uh, right now, the scope of the server is just for X and these and questioning and these. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, bro. Just off locker. Uh, inshallah, until next time. Uh, take care. Inshallah. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, brother. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. All right. We got uh, Ali next. Assalamualaikum. Can you both hear me? Wa alaikum salam. Yes, we can. Is I've always wanted to talk to brother Bashir, brother Imtiaz, brother Hashim. I've ran by his left. <clears throat> it's a shame I couldn't say hi to him. I've been watching Brother Bashir's videos for a very long time, uh, even when before Ahmadi is spread like this. And I've always left comments in his videos, so I, I, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to be in the presence of you, brothers. Are and you former Ahmadi? No, 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 I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm from the UK, but uh, Manchester. So what, why, what it is... Why were you I, watching Brother Bashir's videos then? Because they were funny the way he used to uh, like talk about the Ahmadis. He's, he's got some old videos that I, I just stumbled across, my, across the Ahmadi movement a while back. And I, their beliefs, I used to find them funny. And then the first person I came across, across was Brother Bashir. And then I subscribed to him. And then from there, and I just realized these Ahmadis are just going rampant everywhere. Um, like I said, it's a great pleasure to be in your presence. And I just want to say something. The Ahmadis that I've come across where I'm from, they're very minute in numbers. <clears throat> and they've told me that they don't believe in Jesus being alive in heaven. They come back with questions such as, what's he eating there? How is he alive? And so on. So, but if the thing that, so I'm from the UK, Manchester. Manchester okay. Yeah. So there's not many Ahmadis here, but the ones that I have spoken to, they have a problem as in they did. They, they said that Jesus being alive in heaven is, it's like they, they don't concept, they don't gasp the idea. They think it's some, uh, something alienated as in they ask questions, weird questions like what is he eating? How is he alive for a 1,400 plus years? But at the same time, Mirza in his book is saying Musa alayhi islam is alive. So I don't, I don't understand how is Mirza making Musa alayhi islam saying that, oh, he's, he's not dead. This is in Ruhani Kazayan. I've got the reference somewhere. Uh, he's, Musa alayhi islam is alive in heaven and we shouldn't consider him dead. So if they're disregarding Jesus and saying that, oh, he, he, we have a problem with him being alive, so why is he making Musa and Islam alive in heaven? None of this adds up. I know your brother's spending hours and hours, and hours, like all these streams, but I don't see the point. Those people that have a brain, they, they should realize that Cardianism, the, the belief is, is completely wrong. I just don't understand. But you brothers, I commend the fact that you're spending hours upon hours. But the debates that are going on, they're just going around in circles and circles and circles. And I see what you're doing is it is good, but it just gets to the point where uh, the conversation at hand just gets lost. Yeah, so we, the thing is, our conversations, as you have noticed from the last stream, we have kind of streamlined it in such a way where they have to answer the question instead of beat around the bush. 
So the whole idea is for them to respond to the question without, you know, going on a tangent. And they still do it though. They still do yeah, it. That's do the because, because they're trained to do that. The, the missionaries are trained to the, do that. And the non-missionaries are not permitted to come here or they'll be ostracized. So this is the kind of people we're dealing with, dealing with a cult, not a normal religion like Christianity or, or Hinduism even for, for that matter. This is like, where they are, they are minutely controlled in terms of how much money they earn, what percentage they have to give next month, you know, going through direct debit. Can you imagine? Even companies don't do that. No, they don't. They don't. It is a call. It's yeah. like I've got exactly. a... So it's not normal people you're dealing with. No, I get that. And I don't want to take too much of your time. My brother, uh, I've got a really good friend here known as Shoaib. He, he, me and him, we, 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 we talk about this on a regular basis. But the one thing that we, it's, it's blatantly obvious. It's like when we said there's no prophet after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we look at the whole history of Islam till now, there is no one objected that. No one. But yet these Ahmadis have just come out of nowhere and they think all our history is wrong. Yeah, I mean, there were lots of other false prophets who claim to be these prophets and the Mahdi's and so on. Uh, so it's, you know, like like Elijah Muhammad, if you look at yeah. uh, Baha'u'llah, if you look at people like uh, this Mahdi in Sudan, you know, so there are many examples from history where there, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already prophesied this. There'll be like 40 Dajjals or something. Yeah. And, hey. 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 But yeah, Jazakallah for having me. I'm going to go now. And Brother Bashir, it was an honor meeting you. You're like, I'm a great fan of yours. <laughs> but yeah, Jazakallah, brothers, uh, inshallah. Oh, Bashir, say something to your fan, man. You're <laughs> mute. He's your follower. I got uh, love. Brother, I, 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 I do it all for Islam, for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's got the honest style. I was, was going to monetize my YouTube channel. I didn't do it. I did the whole blog for free. Brother, this is hours upon hours. This is the love for the truth. You know, no, sure. that Muslims like us are doing it for free, whereas Ruzzi gets paid. All these guys are getting paid. Yeah, yeah Ruzzi is. He is, he is. I, I think in, in the UK, Brother Hassan, they, they spent three million on their Mulvies in the UK. Yeah. You know, they've got the a lot majority of, of what they collect, the money that they collect goes to them for their bills and their water and their cars and all of this stuff and their travel. So, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, no, I appreciate that. Exactly. Thank time. you very much. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be in the presence of all you three brothers. And uh, keep me in your du'as, and inshallah, uh, hopefully I can speak to you in the future. Laugh is... Inshallah, take care, brothers. Laugh is you too. Right, so we got uh, Brother Gambian here. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers. I'm, I'm lost for words in terms of admiration and praise for your efforts i don't know how long this stream has been nor the previous streams but one thing is very clear versus what you guys are doing and the ahmadiyya missionaries and everyone can see this is your sincerity and your concern for them and this is a dawah effort your intentions especially in this stream it really didn't hit until I heard that sister who was on earlier, the way she was talking and the emotions she was conveying. I truly felt that what this has caused her when she realized the truth and just that em those emotions, I can sincerely see that you guys are trying to help people come out of this and try to guide them towards the truth versus what the Ahmadiyya missionaries are doing. When they come on this stream and their own live stream, there's such arrogance. They speak with such bad argumentation, but they say it in a calm, polite, they, they surround it with this calm, polite attitude, but they say it with confidence and they believe that their arguments that they're making somehow is strong if they say it confidently and politely and give people time to respond. But there's no, there's no, in, you, can, you can't feel that they're inviting you to give dawah in terms of the, they believe the Ahmadiyya Islam is the true Islam, and they're inviting people. They speak with such arrogance. I mean, Tahir came here with his arm up, and he was, you know, bowed mouthing you, and it's, it's, it's just unbelievable that it's they 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 believe that they're sincere, and any non -Muslim, non Ahmadiyya Muslim can see they're not inviting people to believe in what they're believing. They're just providing argumentation, and they're wanting to come on here and to get their channels viewership to get 
And you guys are sacrificing all this time and no monetary benefit is coming to you from this. You guys are being sincere. You guys are wanting to guide them. And I just wanted to point that out and to say thank you guys for doing this. And I hope that the Ahmadiyya Muslims who are seeing this and who are watching these live streams can see the sincerity in you guys wanting to sincerely help them. And you're not doing this just to... You have multiple things you can do and multiple th th topics you guys can cover. But you guys are giving this some time. And inshallah, I believe Allah will reward you guys and provide a lot of uh, Ahmadiyya Muslims guidance to, to, through these things. So just talk about your efforts. I even went to their streams, the previous stream that they had, and just, just to see, just to try to understand the psyche of these missionaries and what the state is just from this. And I asked them just two questions. Wallahi, they, uh, they said to Adnan, you guys believe in some mir uh, miracle. Uh, you guys believe in some, some fantasy where Isa is up in the heavens, not eating and he's aging. He must be hum however old. Oh, Allah does not do this. Every man shall taste death. He has to die. They, they say that because there was the, the plague, Mizza didn't die in the plague. The, you know, Allah said if anybody lied in the name of Allah, he'll, 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 you know, take their jugular vein, he'll murder him. The fact that Mizza wasn't murdered, he's a good, he's a true prophet. I clearly pointed out in Surah Al Qaf, there's the sleepers of the cave who Allah preserved for 309 years, who didn't Kahf. eat. Surah Surah Al Qaf. Kahf. Kahf. I apologize. <laughs> Okay. They, they 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 clearly didn't eat. Allah preserved them in time, and their response was, "Oh, Allah didn't raise them into the heavens, so that doesn't support your argument." <laughs> and the point you, you, guys, you guys mentioned it, and with Elijah Muhammad, how many people in speakers' corner do you do you see on a daily basis claim to be prophets? Exactly, and Elijah Muhammad lived until the nineties. You know, I like, told brother. Uh, uh, yeah. Brother, can I just want to because uh, I just when you said that you went on their stream, I actually wanted to address this point. My uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, I, I have one request to all of you. You know, I know that uh, you go to their stream with, mashallah, good intention to convey the truth. But what happens is because you, they, they guys, those guys are very deceptive. So what they do is they will trap you in their deception. And then they will use those clips to show to their people that look how strong our arguments are and how, you know, people cannot respond to these arguments. So if you have sound knowledge and good intention, then why not? It's up to you. But if you are not familiar with the literature of the Jamaat, if you do not have a good grip. So I would say that going on their streams, it's basically it has more demerits than its merits. So mafsada, the mafsada is bigger than the maslaha. Okay, so I would not advise any of our sisters to go to their streams unnecessarily. It gives them all of this ammunition which they use in the future for their community. It's counterproductive. Exactly. exactly. I'll 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 take heed to that advice. And honestly, I think you guys give them <laughs> too much credit to even go into the prophecies. The mere fact that there is nothing in our literature that points to India or a, a, a second that the Mahdi will be some type of prophet to even entertain the idea of his claim, I think in it of itself personally for me is ridiculous. But the fact that you guys even give them that to even go into analyzing his prophet prophecy claims and showing so much evidence, wallahi, I think you guys, there's nothing else you guys can do. In terms of evidence, I think right now is just repeating it and then trying to get that information out to as many Ahmadiyya Muslims there. But you, in, as Indi Asbai has said, you have destroyed it forever and ever and ever. I, yeah, this is going to be forever, you know, the online content. You, as the, Once it's on the internet, it stays there, as you know. You've <laughs> in that stream, all they were talking about was Adnan and Indi As. Like, you guys have traumatized them. They, 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 I don't, I don't think you, they, they, they even. Thinking they'll about getting, it, they will be getting ilham after ilham. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't want to take too much time, brothers. Ilham I... is a dream for those who don't. Know. <laughs> you guys, you guys, they're having nightmares. Oh, yeah. You guys motivate. But... You know? I, 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 I take a lot of. I have a lot of respect for your what you do, because I know 
spend this time doing so much, so many other things, but you guys sacrifice this for the deen of Allah. May Allah protect you all and may He reward you immensely. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi All the du'as for you, brother as well. Yeah, Islam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, firstly, I would like to, you know, congratulate the entire Dawa Vice team for, you know, such successful streams. And uh, especially Brother Imtiaz, I think he, he was uh, probably the best at uh, refuting all these, uh, you know, Ahmadi claims. Uh, uh, just a couple of points I, I wanted to highlight. Uh, one was that, uh, uh, you know, uh, one thing which isn't highlighted is Ahmadi has never been a mainstream religion, right? Uh, I think this point hasn't been highlighted. If Allah was to send a you know message to entire community the entire world then that message has to be mainstream allah ne ek paigham punchana tha to wo puri duniya mein phailana tha ahmadiyya to pura phaila hi nahi duniya mein so it never became mainstream to hamara jo asal islam hai hamesha mainstream raha hai aur dusra point yahi ke you know uh, as brother imtiaz mentioned that uh, they never uh, keep things simple and short they always uh, get into these unnecessary details. Uh, you know, whenever a group turns into unnecessary details, it means they're hiding something. It, it, they're trying to hide something. I mean, uh, I recall, you know, Brother Imtiaz was making that prophecy of, you know, Muhammad Begum, so clearly quoting it. And, uh, you know, Brother Razi was like, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's discuss Asul, let's discuss Asul. And I, I, I think Asul is used to make details more clear. And they are using a soul to, to make things more confu confusing. I think that yeah. that is very contradictory. It's, it's similar to Christians, Ambi right? They hide behind yeah. ambiguity. And this is yeah, the... and similar to Christians. Yeah, Brother Hashim, yeah. similar to Christians. I mean, when you ask them about Trinity, it, it gets so confusing. They get into so much unnecessary details that they end up creating hundreds of heresies, right? <laughs> yeah, because, you <laughs> know, if, when, when you invent a lie, in order to make sure that that lie stays relevant, you have to invent more yeah. lies to cover it up. Yeah, yeah. At the end, it becomes like uh, like a cobweb, you know, like a web of the mm. spider, where they tangle themselves in. And this Absolutely. is, you see this throughout anything that is bottle, anything that is falsehood. This is mm. the key thing that you'll notice, that they have yeah. to keep inventing lies to cover up the lies mm. that they made earlier. Yeah, and but yeah, I think your Islam, point about the mainstream is, is quite important, actually. Yeah, they, yeah and they mainstream will remain Islam, a fringe uh, group and they will stay there. Yeah. But, yeah, mainstream Islam is very simple. La Nabi Yabadi. La... This narrative has continued. Last point, and I will not take a lot of time. Last point I want to mention is that we should still show compassion towards them. We should still show compassion to, towards them. Uh, as Allah told to Rasul Pak, don't shun them away. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, we should try to make them feel that uh, our version of Islam, the true Islam is so attractive right, that they turn back towards the true Islam, right? So compassion, uh, uh, we should still bring it, bring it here because, you know, the Western powers, they use these fringe groups, they use these minority groups, they fund them, they even sometimes weaponize them and they turn them toward against us, against the mainstream. Uh, and uh, I think if you remember Iraq war and Afghanistan war, they have, you know, they use these groups against us. So we should deal with them with compassion, integrate them with, with the entire society and, you know, administratively deal with them in a nice way. Yeah, and with that, I, I think, uh, Aslam Alaikum. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Pakistan, Lahore, Pakistan. <laughs> okay, no problem. Take care, inshallah. As 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 right, uh, I just got a couple of more people now. Mohsen, you want to keep your camera on? It's up to you. Go next. Okay, I guess so. Assalamu alaikum uh, Another, I would say, Mujahid's great job done. Another one uh, in the bag. And uh, I'll just get to the point. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, two points. Just the first one I would like to discuss. Uh, I'll just take a minute. The thing is uh, that, uh, see, uh, Islam is, uh, is, is, you know, our overall the tasir, the nature or theme of Islam is clarity, 
so that you cannot uh, so that the day of judgment you cannot deny allah the hujja has to be maintained and the hujja can be maintained uh, has to be maintained for the for the philosopher also and also for the common man so clarity is the tasir of islam theme of islam so this waffling with the qadianis that you know discuss isa and uh, then they can go the nitty gritties of the arabic of the quran and etc so brother imtiaz uh, on the previous team he came with a very good idea that just you know because razi and all these people they claim that you know uh, sahaba were were with us they have our beliefs uh, the mufassirun have our beliefs imam bukhari is our x y z go and uh, keep on. even even taimiya a person like ibn taimiya who is a bit uh, you know he is like he is a bit more strict is also on their side so just catch any uh, catch any amati and we can just ask them that please tell us which sahab uh, which sahaba uh, believed in the death of isa and that isa will be bought, bought back in another human being and that human being itself will also be the uh, the second coming of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that he and that isa died in india all these aqidas in in the early 200 years of islam bring conclusive evidence okay that this was if if this is the belief they hold now then definitely the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also preached this belief it's simple as that mohsin bhai it's, just to just just to second your point as you yes. know that mirza sahib initially appeared as a mujaddid as a revival yes. for the 14th century now but yes. listen this point very is very important point here it means that he is accepting they have been mujaddidun before him as well right for yes. the first yes. 13th century guess what they cannot point out a single mujaddid from yes. the 13th century who agrees with them yeah. like mujaddid cannot uh, agree according, according to they according to their understanding the whole yes. point allah is basically sending these mujaddidun so they can revive the religion so for yes. the past 13th century what job they did yes exactly so like if they can't find a mujaddid let alone they can find a sahabi exactly like, exactly so and last point i think so there is this this one you know like we keep on back, you know going going on them uh, i think so uh, we should also accept the fact that there are some mistakes from our side also and uh, you know the thing is uh, our side mistake is that the sunni muslim it's about high time that they should stop you know the common sunni muslim that should stop complaining about our leaders and xyz and we as the common man you know through such figures as you the dawa people who are you know representing us and all, we should like congregate in whatever way like we can discuss the nitty gritties but congregate towards a point where you know uh, the thing is they use our disunity as a reason to justify their their existence that look at these people you know they just just jointed they are you know they don't represent islam xyz they go on that tangent and they use that as a legitimacy more often even the shias use it the ismailis can use it that look at the the majority sunni muslim so it's has high time that we also you know uh, all of us uh, associate ourselves with the renaissance of, of of islam which has been in the process of 200 150 years it's it's, it's slowly going towards because uh, you know go say 30 40 years back how our interactions with the christians were now no no christian dare would uh, would want to debate us because we are so competent in their material so this renaissance is going so i would associate every good hearted sunni muslim to associate themselves with this renaissance because allah's deen is going to come is going to you know you are you are zero sunni kulli that is going to take over now it's it's your good fortune that you associate yourself with this or not so one way or the other it has to happen it's good that we you know in this flow of this river we also uh, participate mohsin bhai just inshallah one comment on this point because yes they do raise this point quite often oh you know muslims are divided 72 sect blah 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 let yeah, me yeah. just mention two things very very important two things on to, 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 just to respond to this point first of all there is this unity amongst their own people as well we know that yes. the lahori jamaat and then the qadiani jamaat number one okay number 2 is that people should think about this our this unity okay us being not uniting it will not make mirza sahib a truthful person 
People yes, yes, think, sir. Oh, there, there, is, there is no connection between these two. Once again, it is an other false narrative, an other mm. cloud which has been produced among the truth. Now, obviously, as, as you said, Mohsin Bhai, definitely, Muslims, they have to be united, okay? There is no doubt about that. We must be united upon the truth. Nobody can deny this. But all I'm trying to highlight is that they are creating a false narrative by yes. using all of these things, and there is no truth in that. Yes. Uh, one final thing to uh, Bashir Bhai uh, that uh, I uh, one 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 conversation you had uh, on noon uh, with uh, Murabbi Ji. I you know I, I, sometimes I uh, like. When you released it, I was like, watch it twice or thrice. It was pretty funny, and I think you should have him more often, you know, on your streams. Uh, you know, you with him make good content. Inshallah, inshallah, brother, inshallah. All right, all right. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Take care. Most of Allah for coming. Allah. All right. Yeah, we are not taking any more guests, guys. So please join next time. Uh, we are closing now. It's been over seven hours. I uh, really appreciate the patience, all the brothers and sisters who have been with us since the start or even joined us in the middle. Um, keep us in your doors, inshallah. And uh, do let us know through email. Our email is uh, at gmail.com if you have any suggestions uh, or any comment, basically, with regards to these past five streams we did on Katyanism. Uh, or any other streams that we have done in, in the past. So, Bashir Bhai uh, and Imtiaz Bhai, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time, your patience, your dedication to this work of Da'wah. May Allah reward you. May Allah accept from all of us. And may Allah keep us uh, from. Oh, mashallah, lovely cat there, Bashir Bhai. Mashallah. <laughs> uh, so, Hashim Bhai, inshallah, is it okay if our brother Bashir and myself just make a final comment, inshallah, before we finish? Yeah, yeah. okay? Okay, Bhai, please you go first. Bhai. Yeah, so my my final comment is uh leaving Qadianism is easy. Coming to Islam, Allah has to guide you. And if you're not guided by Allah, there there could be some issues there. So that's my only point. Figuring out no prophet after Muhammad, all these arguments, very easy to figure out they're all false. Figuring out where to go is the challenge. So so that's where we come in, you connect with us, and we'll, inshallah, show the proper uh, way to Islam. So, yeah. So make sure you all, you all uh, go and follow Bashir Bhai's uh, blog. It's called Ahmadiyya at factcheckblog.com. Uh, one advice, Brother Ahmed, uh, Brother Bashir, make your URLs short, which are easier to remember, inshallah, maybe for future. Uh, go ahead, Imtiaz Bhai. I know you you started a new channel, didn't you? Uh, yes, actually, uh, inshallah, I will mention that. Inshallah, once I say that, uh, if you can just display that on the inshallah screen so people can, inshallah, have a look at that one. Yeah. So, Ashim Bhai, uh, it so is my final comment, inshallah, ground. before Ashim Bhai brings the channel. So, brothers and sisters in Ahmadiyya, this is your brother from this panel. And I am representing the feelings, inshallah, and the good emotion and well-wishing of the entire, inshallah, panel. We all think this way because all the believers, according to Hadith, the hearts of all the believers are like one heart. So, alhamdulillah, we all have love, compassion, empathy for you. So, this Dawa Wise panel, it only wants good for Ahmadiyya community, alhamdulillah. So, here is my final thoughts, inshallah. I'm not sure that if we will be, you know, proceeding with our streams or not, let's see, inshallah. But number one, my dear Ahmadiyya community, please break these shackles. I said before, first, first and foremost, make sincere, genuine dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That may Allah open your heart, your mind, and may Allah give you the strength to break these shackles. Because dua is the weapon of a believer. Never ever underestimate the power of dua. So begin your journey of breaking this shackle with dua. As in, in a practical sense, as all of us have mentioned this thing, go and visit mainstream Sunni masajid. In your vicinity, please go there. Nobody is going to check your ID. Wallahi, once you will go into this masajid, talk to the elders, talk to the imam, you will feel this joy because this false narrative of mullah this, this, is, this is a very typical term, by the way. Mullah, this term is coined 
to instill the hatred of Muslim scholars in the heart of the Ahmadiyya generation. So please, nobody hates you. When our scholars, when they, when they are, when they are harsh in their reputation, they are not talking about the common Ahmadis. I'm telling you 100% the truth in this one. They are actually addressing those deceptive murabbis and clerics. They are refuting them. Okay, with regard to the common Ahmadiyya, my understanding is that many of our people, uh, many even many of our mashayik, maybe they are not genuinely aware of your, you know, your your suffering and your hardship. So please d break this false narrative of bulna. Nobody hates you. Go visit the masajid. Become the part of mainstream. So this is advice for you. And the next point is very quickly because you know, like uh, this this is something very important. Razi mentioned this point quite often that he wants to have a usuli discussion, a principle discussion, even though, believe me or not, in our panel, we were not uh, fully agree and convinced that we should have this topic with them because they do not have any usul. What are they going to discuss? But still to give them an opportunity, we gave them the opportunity. And what was the gist of the usul? Just in one minute. The usul was that, uh, that, that the prophets can make errors of interpretation. Ijtihadi galti. Khata ijtihadi. Okay? But the complete usul Mirza Sahib mentioned was, if they make this mistake, Allah corrects them. And this did not happen in the case of Mirza Sahib. Okay? So they are not telling you the complete usul. That's the problem. They are, And you can watch their stream with Razi. You will not find a single time Razi mentioning the complete usul. I was the one to point out towards the end that he is not mentioning the complete usul. So please, if you have the complete, even if you even if you get the usul, you agree with that. But, but when you apply the complete usul, then they cannot defend the failed prophecies of Mirza Sahib. And this is the true. This is a fact. And last point, as the brother uh, Hashim has already mentioned on the screen, that inshallah for the future, for an academic refutation of any of their questions, their doubts, inshallah. We'll use this platform, the dialogue with Imtiyaz, inshallah. We'll use this platform for academic refutation, point to point for their objection and their doubt. With regard to whenever, it may happen next week, it may happen 10 years after this. If Allah gives us life, whenever this Murabiyun, they will come, we'll face them on Dawa Wise channel. This will be the playing field, okay? It's not going to be anywhere else. If you have the strength of your argument, Please come and respond to our question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our beloved Ahmadiyya community after knowing your hardships. Wallahi, our hearts are now attached with you and we are making sincere dua for you, but you have to do something for your own self as well. May Allah allow you to break these shackles and to be under the shade of true Islam. That is the mainstream Sunni Islam. Jazakumullah khair. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah Fiqh. So, Brother Imtiaz's channel is uh, displayed on the screen. I've also pinned it in the private chat. And it's also in the, the description of this particular stream. So, inshallah, please just subscribe to this channel. Uh, so, those people who want to get in touch with you through email or something, or I don't know. Maybe you can put it uh, in inshallah, your... Uh, uh, I will, inshallah, mention, send you my email, inshallah, now in the private chat. And maybe you can, inshallah, mention that in the description as well if they want to be in touch with me. Okay, I'll put it in the description, inshallah. And maybe you can put it on your about section on your channel. Yeah. Maybe that's a good place to put it as well. Inshallah, I'll put it there, inshallah, as well. Yeah. So I have already, inshallah, uh, yes. Yeah. Inshallah, it's already gone in the private chat. If you want to, inshallah, pin it somewhere, you can do it, inshallah. I have just messaged it now. Okay, so if those people who want to get in touch through email uh, with Brother Intias, you can use the Gmail address that's on the screen, inshallah. And uh, yeah. Other than that, I think it's over seven hours again. <laughs> we can't reduce even without the Kadianis coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters. Keep us in your doors. And until next time, uh, bid you farewell. And Jazakallah khair. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.